Well, off we okay. go regardless. Public. Yo, that thumbnail is making me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you have no context for this show, it's amusing. Like, what? It's like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> In your head, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> In your head, try and think of a scenario that brought this into a the yeah. show. Like, what the fuck is this? I prompt you won't guess. You'd never guess in a thousand years. No. If you haven't seen the show. <laughs> it really. Ever since you said she looks like Gollum, I can't unsee it. It's like a temporary it's, Gollum. <laughs> What's interesting too is that this was set up earlier in the, uh, the like someone, you know, receiving that kind of a thing that made him do that. Um, you mean when the orc was stabbed in the foot? Yeah, yeah it was set up. Good times. Yeah, it's a theme. Second time. Um, big late. I don't know what you mean. Though, so, considering we likely are kind of, kind of late. Why don't we just get started immediately? I'm not even going to do intros. I'm just yep. going to hey, you know us, okay? You know who we are. I am... Frit, no. No, no, no. The other one. Again, <sighs> you, your name is mixed up. Jeez. God damn. I'm, I'm Shad. Oh. No! Damn it. I'm... It's it's tough. It is tough. Um, Everyone you People use... That's the thing. It, people use it more than I do, so I, I keep forgetting. It shows that, wait, it's not live. Oh, that's Yeah, it says waiting. That's God damn it. Lame. It's not possible. Don't worry, it doesn't really change much of it. <laughs> like, it'll be fine on the re-upload. I was curious why chat was like a couple of messages. I was like, this doesn't really happen. All right, there you go. God damn it. Oh, and I guess, quick update. Uh, I played Scorn, so did Rag, so did Metal. We all had very similar yes, feelings did. about it. We do. We stand united. We're it very, was. we're very, very divided on many things, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, politics, religion, philosophy, cheese, uh, cheese, absolutely. Uh, but on this, on scorn, we are, we stand united. We stand you may just be getting a secret bonus EFAP episode relating to scorn. You might. Oh promises. my goodness. Um, but yes, here we are. And we will likely just kick on with doing the whole, hey, this show, it's a thing. Because we got two rather large episodes to talk about, unfortunate. They just kept releasing them until they called what was a season was released, apparently. I don't know whether to trust that's what actually happened, because the events were so... Uh, you'd, you'd, you'd call, like, the majority of the significant things that happened were all at the end, I guess. Uh... In like episodes six and eight, if one was to call those events significant compared to the others, I suppose. I think not coincidentally, those are probably the two worst episodes as well. Yeah, it's, it's, you start off at the beginning moaning that nothing is happening, and then they make stuff happen, and somehow, somehow that's worse. A lamity so, uh, ensues. If season two is just all them walking around talking and doing nothing else, it would probably be an improvement. <laughs> they might just score a solid two, and they do oh, it. Oh no. <laughs> They, they've said, uh, what was the comments? I think one of the issues that people have is that Tolkien is about big world-altering events, and uh -huh. you just didn't get that in this series, so that's what we need to change. Is it, wow. So, uh, yeah, I might, the fate of the world will be next season. <clears throat> I do like the idea that, like, you know, we're going to take on some criticism. We're not going to listen to any of it, but mm -hmm. we'll make random changes that we feel are important. Oh, they felt things. Things were felt in the making of this series. I've heard Galadriel will be getting us. a bow and arrow in season two, and she's going to feel cool with it. What that? Wow, mm -hmm. more things for her to be very cool with. Yay! I'm it was the one thing that she was well. missing as a character was ranged weaponry. Where is Gareth? The... Where is the boomer? You will be here at an undisclosed time. You know how this works. We'll be here for like 10 billion years, so as long as he's there for one of them. Pretty well do. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's the wizard in the show, and he's just stumbling around. What? What? He can't speak. He's eating snails, raw, crunchy, the I whole hope thing, not, but maybe. shell and all. Um, 
So, yeah, if we're going to get started up, we're, we're going back to episode 7, all the way back. Last you saw us, a big volcano pyroclastic flow annihilated literally everyone and everything. <laughs> uh, unfortunately... You might... Yeah? <laughs> didn't kill unfortunately, the show didn't end there and we got final credits. Yeah, this this right here is Galadriel. Look, she's doing okay. I might be like, what? I got nothing for you. Nobody does. The whole internet doesn't. Nobody understands yeah. this. Everyone is very confused. Can't explain it. Can't rationalize it. You might think that that sort of thing might, you know, vaporize a person. Well, Galadriel's too cool for school. Well, they do make sure to show us that all the buildings got annihilated, but as you are well yeah, aware... Yeah, the buildings, yeah. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I assumed the burning point for, like, wood and stone was a little bit higher than for hair, for example. Incorrect. But... Not elvish, not elvish hair. Elvish <laughs> no, hair is... or indeed human hair, given that all the humans, all the plot-relevant humans are also still That's alive. That's true. Although yeah. horses do get set on fire at a lower temperature. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> horses ran by on fire. But... I was expecting at the start of this just some BS excuse that didn't make any sense, but I expected them to at least have a go. And they don't even... no one talks about it, ever. At least when, when Doomsday, when he set off his mega nuke fleemtisms in the Snyder movie, at least Batman, like, took cover under a rock, even though it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> They, yeah. At least they sort of knew, like, Snyder knew to show that. We have to show him <laughs> taking cover. cover. It's true. You know? Get everyone in the basement or something under the pub. You could have tried. They could have the tried. Pub. They didn't try. They forced us to be in this world where this shit happens. Unfortunate, but hey. Um, it, yeah. Yeah, destroys buildings, turns the roofs to cinders. It covers everything in ash, and there's random fires everywhere. But if you're outside standing and you just take it all to the face, then you're all good, really. What I say is even and weird, the, too, they, is they show us that some people have died from this. Like, how? How? I don't understand. I was like, like, did, a did lot they get hit died. directly by the fucking meteors? <laughs> did, yeah, did I think get... stuff fell on them. Is probably Direct the damage? It can't, yeah, well, it can't be to do with the volcano. It has to be something else, like a different thing that killed them. You find out in the next episode, like, there's only one boat in Numenorians going back. So, presumably, loads of them died to the volcano. Because they oh, couldn't yeah. have died in that tiny little fight. A bunch of them got wiped out by, um... It, it would have been events as a result of the pyroclastic flow. It couldn't have been flow. It couldn't, it couldn't have been the flow itself, because we saw that. It doesn't do... <laughs> they all got buried it in houses. It was weird, is it coats her in, like, ash? Um, yeah. Or Cheeto dust, as I remember as was put very like oh it did that okay flaming hot cheeto <clears throat> dust it, it's not in the air though it doesn't affect anyone's breathing no i was thinking no, i was the, going the back to that my you can't um, see is just uh, purely aesthetic volcano lore from dante's peak with piers brosnan and i'm pretty sure that breathing in volcanic dust is not good for you but no one no one drowns of it which is a bit of a shame i kind of just Im imagined as the you know the big pyroclastic flow was coming towards them all the numenorians turned around and sort of stared at it and they thought Shit, does my character have a name? And all the people without names were terrified because they were fucked. But yeah. everyone who, you know, at least, oh shit, well, at least I've got a name. There's a chance I might survive this. I have no idea what the show wanted me to think, <laughs> like, about any of this in terms oh, of well, the nature of this volcanic eruption. Because well, it I'll just tell you. so defies, like, what you would presume would actually happen. This is what, this is one of your, like, it's, it's that low point without, um, I guess that's what it's trying to be. Like, this is our oh no moment. This is our ah, things aren't done after all. You know, there's still so more to, there's still, still so much more to do. Our victory was robbed from us. Our horses are on fire. Oh my God. It's, it's madness, absolute madness. They had the slow mo and it was, and then they had the weird music things. We had the horse on fire. We had the random wailing. We'll get to that. But we like you could tell it's so transparent with how they wanted this to think and feel. They knew everything to do, you know, to try and make this like the, the oh no kind of moment. It was really funny Why? that there was a fire horse, by the way. I think it was. It's hilarious <laughs> that there was. They put a horse on fire and it just runs past her. It doesn't even. I don't I mean, even know. Is the saddle really on fire? Is that though? the idea? Yeah, because it's only oh, it's... a really specific strip of its back that's burning and not the rest of it. So either like, there's a specific part of a horse which is more flammable than the rest of the horse. 
or it was the saddle. Or there was a guy on top of it drinking wine, and he was like, oh that's, my god, the, drops the wine. Oh, so as it's we know, the Numenorean wine yeah. built on it. Yeah, it's not pressurized, so it won't like explode like if it's in a cask or something. It'll just mm -hmm. burn, you know, vehemently. But maybe the show's aware of the whole fire horse meme, where you say that about films that are good, and they're like, we better put a fire horse in. Won't know it. Otherwise, people might mistake our brilliant show for something less than that. <laughs> it's, well, it's so isn't, casual. Isn't the horse is like, hey, and you're like, oh, wow, that looks, yeah, you okay? <laughs> that looks bad. Poor okay. guy. And then I'm the fine. last episode, fire, don't worry. they went to such effort to show you that when a horse fell over, it was perfectly fine. They don't care about this one at all. Yeah, so that is true. That's true. This one will be fine. We'll see him later. He'll be, okay. be fine. Someone will pat him down. Someone will just take a bucket and. Yeah, um, Galadriel looks all around her, where she is, and there are several dead people. And it's like, oh, I guess they got hit by, know. uh, you know, <laughs> bullets <laughs> from some of the volcano's <laughs> guns that I dodged or something. I don't know. I actually know. assumed they died to the orcs and just got covered in some ash. I didn't know they were meant to be <laughs> killed by the flow. Well, they had the party, remember? They had the party in town and they were having a good time, so they would have taken all the bodies away. Oh, yeah. The show never... They never had that moment of, oh, like, people have died. Like, yeah, we were victorious today, but, like, we're peasants and farmers and stuff, and my lifelong friends, some of them died and horribly from orcs like this. Like, there's no funeral for anybody. There's no, like, <laughs> Just a celebration. Uh, remember, let's remember them. We'll lift up a cup and we'll, you know, no. give them a toast. None Please. of that. They're just having a great time. All's well. Look at that building just to the right. That used to be a house. Look at it now. And it's like meters away from where she was. What happened to it that didn't happen to her? How? What I have a question. My question is, why don't they make houses out of elves? Exactly. Your dead elves if need to be turned they made, into buildings. They're very strong. If they made houses out of elves, not even dead ones, they just stand around and hold hands, you know, and everything, just line up. It's, I mean, there, there you go. Uh, you know, employment problems solved. They're, they're indestructible. So uh, she's wandering around, and she's like, Elendil, Hullbrand, my friendos, and she just chooses to ignore the screams of a woman and a baby. <laughs> uh, that was weird. I don't know why you... That's you'd... strange. <laughs> like, you didn't have What's... to make it that way, but you chose to. So, uh, okay. You'd think in... a baby crying would be something of an alarming thing in the middle of this situation to a point where you'd want to go help, but she... nah, she's busy. She's going to go find Hullbrand. Well, she doesn't I think would highly think of that a good character generally would, uh, yeah. Is she, is she meant to be a good character, though? Like, is, has she done anything which is morally The show good? thinks she's very good, I think. But the reality is no. She's quite selfish, arrogant, and uh, driven entirely by her passion to want to execute things. That seems to be all. She doesn't do. help people. Anyone in trouble, she's just, she, well, she's left loads of people in trouble before as well, so yeah. this isn't new. But we that's are the thing, in a slightly I... strange world where, where in-universe morality and out-universe morality have an inverse correlation to each other, if they have a relationship at all. So it, like, this isn't the first example of it, but it is a very good example of where the show clearly thinks that its main character is a paragon. And in the real world, she would be something slightly below Hitler, but the show's morality determines otherwise. I can believe that um, um... The, the people who made this have no idea how evil she comes across a lot of the time. There is a um that that article that I put in our little chat here on the one way the rings of power outdoes the lord of the rings movies that slate um, thing. <laughs> and what is what it, is that way? I don't know. Uh it's it's a female empowerment mostly. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah. What's interesting is that very very poorly received article and uh, I'll cover it later but this, interestingly, was in the comments. The comments are horrifically negative. Uh, and that was specifically pointed out in the comments as well regarding Galadriel. Um, you make her seem like a really... Remember, when you're writing characters, it's not just what you have them do that characterizes them, it's the things that they don't do. And if you're in a village and you hear babies crying and people you know, calling out for help and you don't help them, and instead you just sort of wander off into the woods... That might impact your character, especially if you've bit. been around for like six trillion years old and you're some general who's commanded armies and warfare is supposedly something that you're just used to. I don't know how much I should think that this is a shock to you. 
Um, whenever I see an elf shocked, I suppose, or super surprised about something, there is that element of me where I'm like, I don't know. Does, should anything surprise you at this point? You've been alive for a thousand fucking years. It's also probably I, I, not a good idea to juxtapose it so quickly because at the same, you know, the, I think the next scene after Gladwell goes around refusing to help anyone except a main character, the next scene has one of the Numenorean soldiers going around doing what Galadriel should have been doing, and they're in roughly equivalent positions as commanders of armies mm. with experience. And she goes around looking for her dead soldiers and trying to help the civilians, while Galadriel's just like, oh, well, I found the kid who's important to the plot, so we're off now, and it's screw so you weird. All. Is he even important to anything? Why? Well, so, I yeah, hope not. I think they're going to make him people listening. in the future. Galadriel just casually bumps into Theo and decides... You and I will go on a private adventure in the woods. And it's like, what? There's people to- there's screaming. There is actively screaming for people who need help. What- what is go I didn't understand that at all. I thought that, like, I'd missed something? Like, is- did she need to protect Theo because he is the- the one or, or something? I, I- I was what? so lost with that. The actual reason is that late- like, he's supposed to be sort of her mirror. So by talking to him, she realizes her own flaws and, oh, I've got to put down the sword and stuff. I've got to let all this go. So literally, they needed the two of them alone so they could have these kind of emotional conversations. Right. That was the end point. They, they didn't even think how they could get there responsibly. They just, this needs to happen. So coincidentally, it's happened. I just remember thinking like, oh, no, several scenes of these two. Like, <laughs> uh, but then again, it's like, you know, what characters do you want to see? It's like, I don't know. Do they really... They really just wander off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. There is yeah. people screaming remember, right, as they're it, walking off. Yeah, it pans over. There are two meters to the right of them is a man screaming on fire, and he's he's yeah, like trying to get right, from yeah. underneath some kind of like. Th it's absolutely unreal that they would show this to us. <laughs> it's really wild. Just me that as well, like, how long has he been burning for? Like, how much time has passed <laughs> since? That? Has he just I been mean, lying he's there crawling around on fire? At this point, <laughs> at least medium. He's probably it's just like, oh, away. You, you going? You go, you going? Okay. Yeah, guys, please, Theo, <laughs> right. please, we grow up together. You know me. Oh no. Oh no, you're taking, the, you're taking the elf bitch with you to the woods. You're not going to the woods, are you? I need help. Please help me. It's so weird though, because we uh, we then pan a little bit right further, about the elves. and we're off to already like the other characters, the other main characters. You got Isildur, his friendo, and the queen, and it's like, wait, so Galadriel was right next to them at one point. But she just wanders off into the woods. They both do. They just fuck Logistically off. Logistically speaking, like, this part is bizarre because you might be thinking, well, wait, how is Isildur here? Where's Elendil? They were together, weren't they? And it's like, that's a great question. Keep that in mind for later. <laughs> because Elendil We reset somewhere between else. episodes. We shuffled the board. You are where you are. Yeah. Uh, that's the way of things, I guess. It is quite literally that. They shove people in places they really shouldn't be. Um, oh, and Guy died. The guy uh, who was like, "Oh man, yeah, guy from the from place." He was one friend of the people. Friendo oh, guy. He had a few yeah. lines of dialogue, and now he's gone. It was really uh, sad. Because he oh, wasn't he yeah, made definitely. for war. He wanted to go and do other things, but now uh -huh. Mount Doom has robbed him of the chance to do that. Don, I'm gonna miss guy. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, oh. uh, one less mouth to feed. Yeah. So the queen is like, guys, come on. There's, there's a bunch of innocent people trapped in this house. And then they're like, ah, oh, help us. We're trapped in this house. Ah. And they're all screaming. And oh, our heroes no. collectively try and get them all out of there. And I guess, in conclusion, all of the innocent people are saved. But Isildur is, the whole house falls on him because a stone, was it part of the stone like chimney displaces? It just fell over or something? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I he fires her out of the door by... He, he's holding a big, massive pillar, and he just pushes it towards her slightly, and she flies out of that door yeah. as if she's been shot by a cannon. And yeah. what are these bodyguards doing, letting the queen go into a burning building when their only job is to protect the but queen? Do you understand? She's very, very selfless. Okay? She's not like Galadriel. She at least cares more with about people than Galadriel does. She gets fucking rewarded for it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens to people who try to save each other. But yeah, so he gets a building fall on him, and everyone's very sad, and we uh, presume dead, which is which is an odd choice. We've talked about this before. We're going to put certain characters in peril. Isildur is one of the ones where you don't really want to bait him for being dead for several episodes. It's like, well, can they kill him? Oh. No. <laughs> well, no, no. Here's what. Well, here's why I ask. If you're Amazon and you just like, can you like kill him? 
They killed Celeborn, right? Well, that's what we are led to believe, is that he is dead. The only reason yeah, I would say hang on is that, well, would you put it past them? It's pretty and that's having watched these two episodes, I wouldn't I'm, put it past them. That's, they could that's have him have another kid and call him a sealed door. It seems like the sort of thing where they just might be like, yeah, we're we're doing our own thing. We're killing a Sildur. It's going to be it's probably going to be some very strong independent woman and she's not going to be like other uh, the other girls, of course, and she's going to get the ring, but she's not going to get like corrupted by it and instead it'll be like an opposite is Sildur story. Um but I I don't know, but I was thinking like they might have fucking killed him. It's the kind of it's... nonsense they would do, but there is a horse-related reason later, which would <laughs> yeah. suggest that they're yeah, not yeah. doing that. I would also oh, go as yeah. far as saying, sure. um, uh, even Caliborn might, they might bring him back. They I imagine they will bring him. Yeah. Well, how can they not bring him back if, you know, they're, they're nicking lines wholesale from the Jackson films, and they're calling forward to the Jackson films all the time. The you fun. can't you can't kill off a character who appears in the films that you're claiming it's are your sort of direct descendants. Because that, the yeah. writers are following their nose. <laughs> That smells shit. Let's go down that was way. Was that was Caliborn one of the three ring bearers uh, for the elves, or was it? No, he's um. So Galadriel has was. one. Gandalf has one, and um, is it uh, is it Legolas's dad has one, or do they move? Maybe Caliborn uh, does get one in the end. I don't know, but he he has to be alive because he he is with Galadriel as the first <laughs> time we see her. He is kind of king yeah, of he's Lothlorien. kind of king there of and alive. Yeah, <laughs> like, he has like issues. lines and everything in the film. He's the king of Lothlorien. Oh, Elrond has the third, is it? Uh, what's the one? Yeah. If they want to go full soap opera, they'll have her fall for Sauron after they find out, and then that's when Caliborn will come back after they're together. Yeah, the like, and then you get the East Enders drumbeat at the end. Yeah. As he comes in at it's... the wedding. Boom, 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 boom. It'd be great. <laughs> Just think of the worst story they could do. It's what they're gonna do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the whole thing falls apart, and we get this quick shot of Muriel getting splashed by some ash in her eyes, and she's like, "Yeah, that'll, that'll play into something a little later." That that's not gonna be able to handle it. It's such a right. It's, it's a you might be thinking thing. everyone would be just covered in ash, a super hot ash, but. Already. Yeah. Well, I if you remember, her dad said, if you go to Middle Earth, all you will find is darkness. Get it? No, because she only sees grey. Oh, that's close enough. The dark grey. So, back if, a, to... if her father knew that that was going to happen, why didn't he just say, like, warn, actually warn her? Well, it's because he's a vegetable, and the because plot can't wouldn't... have him do that yet. They literally would not have a man ordering a woman around that they want to empower. It's not even that. It's just a case of, well, if he'd had one of his weird lucid moments from his apparent Alzheimer's at a convenient moment, then you couldn't have had the plot happen. So he has to be vague and asleep for the bit where it would have been important for him to say something. You imagine and then he will give the revelation to some random chick later on. I imagine gotta he say, said though, to his daughter, though, that you'll head into a house trying to save somebody and then you'll get blinded. Watch out for that. She's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> if you go there, a volcano would erupt and you will almost die. Don't go. And she might have changed her mind, so we wouldn't have had a story. On my, even... on my current tier list of old bedridden kings, he ranks fairly low. <laughs> yes. How long is that list out of interest? <laughs> <laughs> it's currently... It's not a very big list, but he's at the bottom of it right he's now. He's right at the bottom, yeah. Right at the bottom. He is seconded by a considerable margin. <laughs> One in chat said the hills have Harfoots. That's up. Uh, <laughs> the hills have Harfoots. Yeah, the, yeah, the cannibalism. The yeah. So, um, the migration is complete. They have reached the the glade. I think they they said, which has got wonderful orchards in it, and they're just going to be fed forever. Woohoo! Our our team catches up with them. They didn't die. How wonderful! Unfortunately. That's Good. The eruption sent a couple of comets over here and destroyed <laughs> all of the glade. <laughs> the odds. The odds. The fucking odds. How far is the eruption <laughs> spreading? How far away are you from Mordor? Like, I just. How... I like to think of like a heat map of where the pieces of the volcano landed, and they're just like there's just this one big one for where they are, and it's there's nothing else for yeah. absolute miles. Like, yeah, we got unlucky on this one. <laughs> If the debris is getting sent so far that it's reaching all the way out here, 
then all the people who were right next to Mount Doom could literally see it. You're done. It's over. It should be over. When this scene in the show happened, I was reminded of something else that some of you might have, you know, discarded from your memory. But you remember in the first Wonder Woman movie how that village gets hit by the castle's artillery? Oh yeah, the poison, it's right? With the gas. And then and then it shocked us because we're like, wait, wait, that was within cannon range the whole time. And they just spring that on you. It reminded me of that where all of a sudden I'm, I'm calling into question once again, just just basic locate basic space. Where is everyone? Which is a problem that the show has had throughout its entirety, where people are and how they can get places. They're just sort of there. There's no sense of Absolutely. an actual journey for in that any characters need to take. Everything is right next door to everything else. And journeys are effortless and instant. Place and time has been a persistent problem in this show because it this is confirmation, right? Like this has to be, like in terms of a timeline, now we've got a lineup. This has happened yeah. pretty close to what happened with uh, Galadriel and, Numen and the Numenorians and everything. I'm pretty sure if you compare that... the start of the comet with the eruption of the volcano again from the Harfoots compared to the Southlanders, yeah. it wouldn't make any sense at all. Like, I don't see how it could. Because the Southlanders consider... plotline only lasts a couple days, right? While the Harfoots are doing, like, weeks. Exactly. Well, it has to be weeks, right? This migration. Yeah. It's sure. Some people put it out in chat. Like, didn't Tolkien, like, write full-on maps of this? Like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> they show <laughs> maps in this show. <laughs> they actually do. Tolkien went to great lengths to figure these things out. It, it's a good thing to do because you need to know, like, okay, how long does it take to get to from A oh, to B? That, oh, that, that takes this long? Okay, that's important. It's an attention to detail that makes the world feel real and lived in. And it may not uh, seem like it. It makes writing easier. I don't even easier. know if it's detail. It seems so basic. Um, like, you have it, to know yeah, where things say, are. Well, it, 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 detail would be dependent, right? Basic. It could be hyper-detailed. It could be relatively simple. But um, the point being, pretty sure Tolkien the was very detailed, right? He was incredibly detailed. The amount of notes that he made and maps and the, the efforts and lengths he went to. Is I think Lord of the Rings was just stuff. his excuse to make maps. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> He's like, people will think I'm crazy if I just draw these random maps. Oh, I, I, mean, I guess I better write like a story or something for it. Like Paul okay. said, actually sitting down and figuring these things out, place, time, how long it takes to get to places, it just makes it easier to have all these variables. It's easier to juggle everything. Yeah, like you down the line, you'll be thankful line. you have all this information set out because yeah, you, you can answer your questions really time. quickly. Yeah, it's, exactly. really, it's a good shorthand reference point. So if, if you're name dropping places, for example, what you really need to do is give people and, you, and you've not been to those places in narrative yet. You need to give people some kind of key to allow them to interpret it or to have at least a vague sense of where it's placed in the world or who lives there or what relationship it has with the place your protagonists currently are. And so you see that through the, the Fellowship of the Ring, which has, you know, it's a very linear narrative, but it drops in the names and places that become relevant when the when the narrative splits up in the two towers. So you've already heard of Rohan and you've probably already seen the map as well if you've read the books before you actually get to Rohan proper in the two towers. Same thing with, you know, when you split it off to Isengard, you hear mention of Gondor, you know about Gondor, and you know where it is on the map in relation to Mordor. If you've been reading the books or you've watched the film, oh, which nice. again has the maps included, all of this stuff's just really useful for the audience because it actually minimizes the amount of exposition you need to do. And Rings of Power sort of it, it, it sort of understood that in episodes one and two when it was still doing those Indiana Jones map style sequences, but it then shoots itself in the foot because it's given people an idea of place and distance, and then it's promptly gone and forgot about that itself. But the audience, if they're paying attention, will think, well, how many thousands of miles were the Harfords actually walking on their little sing-song journey? And how close are they now to, to what is now Mordor, or will soon be called Mordor? Um, and if they are that close to it that the volcano can hit them, why could they not see the volcanic eruption? Why could they not notice it in the distance? Yeah, no clouds, in, no air. Yeah, in, in Return of the King, you can see Mount Doom from Minas Tirith, which is quite a long way away. And I think the map sequence for the Harfords puts them not too far uh, north of the mountain range, the northern mountain range bordering Mordor. So they should have noticed something before the weird random fiery rocks conveniently went and destroyed their orchard. If you didn't know like what Lord of the Rings was, and this was your first exposure to it, there's no way that you would understand like any sense. It's of all place uphill all. from here. 
That's kind of funny, right. though. Uh, well, if someone was like, I really like this, I'll check out those Peter Jackson films. Whoa! <laughs> this is way better. I was so wrong to like the other thing. The weird thing, well, Lenny Henry I mean, during this part says um, that he's it, well, in his books it's written down that, that those volcanic mountains, they've done this before and they do it when evil rises. So that same volcano has gone up multiple times every time um, evil rises in the first place, and yet none of the Southlanders are even worried about this as volcano. Everyone seems amazed that volcano has even gone on up in the first place, yeah, and it had to be falsely exploded with water rather than just <laughs> normally happen. Natural so do process, all the evil in the past yeah. do the same thing? Is this a plan which has been repeated multiple times? And like, that, that just, it just goes that off line just, for that's so, yeah, so many more questions, because it also calls into question time as well, because he mentions that it was it's his grandfather's grandfather, or his grandfather said hundreds of years ago the story was told that there were mountains in the south that would spit fire, but they go to sleep. They only rise when there's a great evil, which... Again, that that makes you say, well, we were how long, how long were we told in the opening monologue had passed since Morgoth was defeated? Uh, does that actually align with the timeline we're being hinted at because they're trying to give Lenny Henry portentous lines? Um, I don't think that quite lines up either. And then if if the volcanoes periodically did go up, why is well, I know I guess that being a relatively verdant plane makes a bit of sense, but they, they, all they wanted to do was just to give him this portentous line to tie in that narrative however superficially, with the grander events of the story. But in so doing, they just invited loads more questions that they're not actually going to bother answering. It's, um, when he said it, he was like, Volcano, go, evil. It's like, shut the fuck up. You don't know anything. <laughs> like, you're just some... You just, like, assume so much shit. And don't forget, like, he's, he's along with everyone else in terms of ditching everybody. He was happy to join in blaming the tall guy for all their problems. It's like, oh, now it's the volcano, that means there's evil. It's just like, God, I would hate to be a part of these people. It gets so bad, I do wonder... Everything's a sign of everything, like, oh, you, you get tired of it. I, I do wonder whether he just makes stuff up, yeah. because in the bit where he's healing the tree, <laughs> they ask what's going on, and he's like, well, he's just using little words so that the trees understand. I mean, you, you literally just <laughs> BS'd yourself through that, is that how he's the leader? I, I don't know whether it's bad writing or that's his character. We're supposed to figure out that he's just a fucking charlatan, just lies all the time, but there's no way to disprove him, so he's just like, ha ha, I'm a genius. There was never, Three like, paths to find. People are heroes. <laughs> um, just wander around. So then there's this really weird sequence, because they zoom out at one point, and it's like, oh, I see, there's about, I'd say, ten trees, and it looks like four of them, maybe five, have been struck so hard, they're, like, you know, worthless now. And... Everyone here keeps picking fruit off the dead trees and putting it in little baskets. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You can't eat that. And they're like, like oh, yeah, how terrible. Yeah. No, they love our it. Ashen Ash? fruit. Yum. It's just like, what are you, what? Why are you picking, well, you, you leave it on the You burned <laughs> an apple point. to a crisp, right? To the point where it's like flaky with ash. It's it's really good for you, all that. I'm surprised all it, that carbon. it remains as a, a, as like a solid thing when they touch it, just instead of just disintegrating. Yeah, that's off a tree. Are they trying to catch it in the air? Trying to eat it? Well, someone said, well, is it for the seeds? So, the the thing is, there are healthy apples in other parts of this area. But they all seem to... Yeah, like, like some of the characters side. are off grabbing those, but most are just like, oh, look at this ash apple. Let me put it in my collection. Yeah. It's like, what? It's like, it's three little meteors hit. It's like, it seems to be a whole little countryside of just stuff to eat. Yeah, there's still plenty of stuff to eat. It's just weird. And how... How fast have these characters flipped now at this point? Because yeah. I thought he was going to go, oh, he's up there. Has he caused this? Is he bad luck for this? All these apple trees and stuff. He's like, no, maybe he can fix everything. The only thing that's happened between them going, we should take their wheels and leave them, and this, is a wolf happened. That was yeah, it. Yeah, and he did a ground that... pound, which, what does that have to do? Like, that, that has now made them believe, like, maybe he can fix the forest. It's like... <laughs> But no, it's just it makes it makes no sense given that, you know what you want from these little weird folksy people is some kind of internal myth logic, I guess. If they associate as they did the absence of animals and food in the forest, bad things happening in other words, with the stranger they've got amongst them, what's the more realistic or probabilistic outcome in their minds if random asteroids essentially destroy their orchard? Are they going to say? Well, the magic man can fix it, or are they going to say this is further proof that the guy is evil and brings evil with him, and we should probably, you know, cut his legs off and eat him? <laughs> yeah, they don't need those. It's, uh, it's very bizarre. They all seem those. very pro him and want him to solve all their problems now. Their their opinions yep. 
shift like the wind or whatever. Well, no, the wind's more consistent than. So um, <sighs> yeah, they're watching him fiddle around with the tree, and he starts yelling and doing his spell casting shit again. And they they one for one do the exact same shit they did last time, where they got to interrupt him and fuck with him while he's doing his spell, and then they get hurt. And then they're all like, wow, he's kind of evil, huh? And it's like, ugh. God, people. They're just... Even he kind of takes responsibility for it when they're yeah, all staring really at him. Yeah, he looks really sad. Like, I'm like, I'll be like, well, it's not my fault. You walks into the tree. <laughs> yeah, just stay the fuck away from me when I'm yelling about spell casting. He's clearly, like... It was gradually looking like it fix. It was fixing stuff, and then this stupid little girl is like, whoa, and walks right <laughs> up to it. It's also, like, really stupidly inconvenient, too, right? Because it's just like, oh, that one branch is falling down. It's got to get her. Um, and if I can show it here, I'd like to. You have Genius Nori here. Is like, oh, my God, Dilly apparently is her name, which is pretty funny. But Dilly, get back. So when someone is about Mother to have something pickles. fall on them, what do you do? You usually grab them and pull them away, right? But instead, Nori grabs her. You then tackle her forward. Why the fuck did she do that? <laughs> Dilly, get back. Throws her forward. Like, I hate this shit. If I saw her do that to try to say, like, my daughter did that to save my other daughter, I'd be like, why did you try and kill her? Why did you try and kill both of you? What the well, fuck was that? We have, what just, um, here? We have just established that, that the meteors have eliminated their food source in the area. And we know what they're like. So maybe this is one of their ways of, um, you know, surreptitiously creating a banquet. <laughs> Look at the dad's face, by the way. Once the tree branch has fallen. <laughs> I raised that bitch. <laughs> There's Nori causing problems again. Like, literally every day, it seems. Every fucking day. Oh, they take a while he, to react He goes to, to Sardok, and he's like, so, can, can, or Sadok, and he's like, hey, listen, you, that is a spell book, right? You can summon wolves, <laughs> right? Nori's, clear, listen, you're behind the wolf, Nori's been know. a thorn in both of our sides. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, oh my god, what a horrible experience. That was clearly Magic Man's fault, and we all hate him now. It's like, um... Yeah, okay. Like, all you needed to do was not stand underneath the tree as he was doing his crazy super-duper spell. <laughs> I hate this. They, keep again, they have shots from everybody with... looking fearful of him, and it's like, could you not make sense of what just happened? He's fucking around with a tree, and a part of it fell off, and you jumped underneath it, you fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, if I was there, I'd be like, you, you, you realize all of that was you guys' fault, not his, right? He was just he was doing his thing. Can you stop fucking around with him when he's casting spells? Seriously, quit it. It's actually getting annoying. He's probably legitimately frustrated. Like, I just want to cast a goddamn spell. Can you guys quit fucking with my shit? Tree. I'm trying to fix the tree for you. All I ask is just step back. Come on. So, fucking ignore the half a plotline for a little bit. We're off to the the dwarven plotline now, which yeah. no less frustrating, unfortunately. So, Elrond is like, "Hey, hey, we're gonna give you shit tons of everything for five centuries in exchange for access to Mithril." Which, holy shit! Damn, um, that's a crazy good deal. That's Gil Gilgalad. Imagine you're a dwarf. That's like you oh. and the next and the next and the next generation and the next generate in the next generation. It's five hundred years of shit. Gilgalad isn't going to be in uh, a region until next episode. So did they clear this with him? Did, did, this is all elven resources. Is, is Elrond just capable of making this promise? Well, yeah, he's, he's a, a diplomat in this, isn't he? So. You should have the power to negotiate. I just, I don't know, man. That's yeah, like, but is damn. That, that's a lot. Like, 500 years of pure resource provided to basically anything. And of course, you'd be like, well, I mean, it's saving the elven race, isn't it? And it's like, yeah, I know, but still. It's like, that's that's a big promise. You'd probably still, have to, that's a lot of furniture, man. You, you'd think you'd my, have to get Gilgalad's signature on that. My favorite bit yeah, was when he said, we want off, something so. sacred from you, so I'm going to give you something sacred in return. And he just goes, meat, grain, and wood. <laughs> It's not particularly sacred to fair trade. Doesn't seem that well, five hundred years wood, of it is pretty sacred, maybe. <laughs> the trees, though, they, they are elves. Elves are kind of precious about trees, aren't they? So, and they're giving it from the specific forest. So, I would yeah, mind the, you, the show doesn't warm. frame it this way, but they, it's for five. I still just can't get over five hundred years. It's that is no short. Well, that's amount. no time for an elf, and I think it's only one and a half generation. I think dwarves live to about three hundred, or they, well, they live a long time anyway. So it's like one and a half. It's a lot. I, I don't get me wrong. Elves still I assume, I assume in real time, right? Well, not according to the last 
two episodes when the reason he hadn't turned up for 20 years is because he doesn't realize that 20 years is a long time. I don't understand so, how, how a being can this? operate in the same way that Elrond does while also having 20 years go by like quick. I don't understand how that works. He's he's in the moment all the time, isn't he? He's talking just like everybody else. It's not like time is feeding past. Uh, that's like, that's yeah. always been the problem with immortality that you should it should still feel just as long to you. You just have like a longer memory and stuff, but people treat it as if, oh no, I'm just going to sit in this room for a thousand years. If it, nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's how it's <laughs> yeah. also been one of my issues with immortality that I bitch about. It's like, yeah, you live to be a thousand years, but a day is still 24 hours. You're not just going to be like, oh, it's just a day. No, no, it's 24 hours for you too. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know. Maybe defending the show. So that there is an observed real world phenomenon where um, the, the older you are, generally the quicker you perceive time is passing. So when you're a kid, obviously being asked to wait two hours feels a lot longer than if you're 40 and you're asked to wait for two hours. Um, uh, that's, that's reasonably well established as a thing. I, I guess you could extrapolate from that and say, well, if you do live forever, essentially, maybe you do lose track of time. It doesn't work in this show, though, because this show periodically forgets what rules it's operating by. But in the real world, you could draw a link between passage of time or how long you've been alive and how yeah, long you've been alive. I would, um, I would agree with you just only to an extent, though, and, and that doesn't account for, like, older people having their senses uh, dulled over time as well compared to more youthful people, which isn't applicable to elves, right? They they stay... Oh, it seems to be for Calabrimbo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ignore this universe, okay? Because this, this one's weird, but um, sure, fine, because... Cause, um, I just, I'm assuming it's still worth a lot, right? 500 years. Even the dwarves are like, holy fuck, 500 Absolutely. years. Absolutely, that seems like a lot, yeah. In terms of because resource it, access. Well, that's the thing, because it's not just, it's not how long they live, it's how much resource they have to give. And it doesn't matter if the elves are immortal, if the forest, you know, you're still taking 500 years worth of resources. That's that's quite a lot of, of yeah. wood and food and grain. So Well, and they don't even put you, a limit on to... it. The implication is you have access for 500 years, and it's like, can I... Take all of it. <laughs> like... <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, one of the things I found about this is just there's no clarification on that. It seems that Durin's made up his mind. Absolute no. And something that bothers me about this whole scene and the whole episode, this never, ever, ever comes up. But the first thought, because I, I watched this first time around with, with Fringy, and uh, we, we both immediately were like, so, war? It wouldn't, wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. If. if... Get turned down, you're not just going to passively accept that, right? Like, it just seems weird like they, that that was never addressed as an option. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, it it should be like the looming problem. threat of if these negotiations oh, sure. don't work, we might legitimately have to go to war because the dwarves yeah. know how important this is. We've told them, and if they won't negotiate with us, then like, well, it's well, not that they necessarily will take that course of action, but it should be yeah that there is the sense that that is a possibility that this isn't just a matter of yeah, like it, yes or no. There will be consequences for this but, choice. But the elves don't die without this. So they will just, like, leave the, the, the place. Isn't so that what they keep saying, what... though? That the elven race will perish without this? No, yeah, well, but they, essentially if... they just leave Middle-earth. Yeah, they'd have to go back to Valinor, but which, again, is, is sort of questionable because you, it leaves open questions the show, again, hasn't answered, which is, well, why, if they are able, as the show has established, to go back whenever they want to, are they staying here? Like, what is their actual attachment to this place? Why are they really here? And the show hasn't done anything of that. I mean, you can go into the, the books and like, find that stuff, but the show hasn't established any of it. Um, so, you know, they wouldn't necessarily... They would die if they remained in Middle-earth without the Mithril. But the other thing that it hasn't established, sort of, you know, in terms of backfield information is, well, why is King Jiren so very distrustful of them in the first place? Like, you know, he, he specifically asked, you know, what, why would you trust an elf or whatever it is? Right. And, and the, that, that level of suspicion which exists in, in the Peter Jackson films, but because that's sort of implied at a later point in history. This is the point in history when you really should be establishing why they don't like each other, or even if they don't like each other. And the show hasn't done that either. So like, there's a lot of... Yeah, this the is... great thing about the books and the films is that they imply history, whereas this show is actually set in history and isn't even implying the history it's set in. It's just ignoring all of it for a setup. Yeah, this is the time to give us some more context because this is like this is the biggest political event of the dwarven and elven alliance, quote unquote, that there could ever be, and it's just like nah. Pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, and there's a lot of, and this is the other thing, by the way. I think you you are correct that they'll have to go back to Valinor and they won't be able to remain in Middle Earth. But the problem is they keep framing it as though they're going to die. The elves will die. They keep using language like um, 
Uh, you know, it's like the elves shouldn't be able to escape death or cheat death. Like, they should just accept it. And, and you know, Durin's like, what? But I'm just saying, you're like, well... So, the, so the, the dwarves are under the impression that they will die, not that they will move to a different place. It seems like it. From yeah. It seems yeah. to be, yeah, that, that seems to be what and the so this, king says. This is part of where my frustration lies. It's not, it's not that I expect that war should break out. It's that I need these people to discuss it. Durin as a king should be like... We might want to prepare because the elves may not take no for an answer. Like he should know that. He should be like, this is. They might get desperate if this is going to be something that, you know, without it, it will kill them. Yeah, if this is as important that they say it is. And then the elves, well, of course, so it would be nice if there was just one zealous elf that's like, why can't we just take it from those backward idiot people? And then you know, Gilgalad explains something, or someone explains why that would be an absurd decision. Yeah, yeah, to attack, it's suicidal to attack them in their home base. They know the mountains way better than us. It's, it's you know, we can't do it. But there should be that. <laughs> they should. If you, if you wanted to go back into the law stuff, though, they wouldn't really, well, large factions wouldn't even have hesitated. They would have gone to war and killed all the dwarves because they did quite frequently um, over essentially wars over jewels, which are not even as important as this is. Um, which, again, it's, like, it's, it's not that the show is, well, we obviously know it's not trying to recreate that, but it's that. You, you could do your own version of that kind of thing, and you would have so much scope for content going forward over across you know five seasons. You could have this all this political intrigue and build up. You could have you know the complete collapse in relations leading to skirmishes, scuffles, and then war le thereafter. You could you could depict in your own way. It still would piss off purists, but you could depict in your own way the events that lead up to the the collapse in relations. That means that Gimli hates Legolas when they first meet yeah. in the Jackson films. But you're not doing any of that. It is just as you say. They're just that. That's what you would need for all of this to have any kind of sense of life to it. And there isn't any of that. Well, yeah, they're squandering every opportunity yep. to to expand the conflict. Which, when you think about like what's most interesting in stories, it's the conflict, the friction, disagreement, tension, and they're just not seizing those opportunities by having characters with different perspectives get thrown into the mix or just expanding it a little bit more. It's kind of bizarre. Um, I thought it was funny when they they pan over to the, I guess, the first offering from Elrond in these, these packages. I thought that they had Gilgalad's crowd in there. They just tossed it in. They were just like, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> it does look like You can it, have yeah. that too it's if you want. Weird. It's like, hey. <laughs> they didn't tell Gilgalad. He's still <laughs> he's <laughs> on looking for it. You don't see my crown? It's like, we'll make you a new one. It looks like leaves. It's like, everything looks like leaves. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, I suppose you're right. Um, so, yeah, uh, we don't get much elaboration beyond, it seems the king's main thing is that I don't want to endanger dwarven lives. Uh, but Elrond says, like, the deal would be that we have access to your minds, the elves. Like, so we're going to give you all this stuff in exchange you let us work the mithril. Um... And so then I guess Maybe that would to... be a source of further conflict, right? Is like, because if, if, if the dwarves have a process to do this safely, yeah. do they trust the it... elves to do it safely? Or are you going to fuck around and like dig too much and destabilize this area? Because really, there's not that much. Like, do you know what you're doing when we know what we're doing? There's so like, many conversations if, that could if... have happened to better exactly. understand Durin's perspective, but we don't get it. Well, no, because the show doesn't really have characters at all. Like it's it's kind of this. It's kind of incredible. Like there's barely any character in the show at all. And the astonishing like, thing is, the, the closest they the, the the closest they actually get to character is the dwarves. And so, yeah, if the, the dwarves, dwarves have this problem, you can if you haven't seen the show, you can sort of imagine how deracinated the rest of the world is. Well, it's just I I would be surprised. Just based on the way that the characters speak to each other, that like it would be even feasible for the writers to differentiate between them, or like to explain how they would write dialogue for each character and how how their dialogue differs because of who they are and what they value. Because the characters don't really there's there's dot points in the script or like of the of the series outline all of the beats and they know what those beats are, and they just kind of like do them without thinking about like how characters going to inform these decisions or expand the scope of uh of the drama feels yeah, very just really weird bare the, the bones writing the characters are like empty vessels just for whatever the story needs at the time and especially yep. in this episode and the next one the each character is like different people they just randomly change or they had the harfoots and how they changed about the the wizard um but you've got a lendil who changes 
he he comes to a moment at the end of this episode, and then in the next one, he flips entirely back on it and has just changed back to who he was before. And yeah, it's almost like his was pretty stark. Yeah, I, I, uh, it the, seemed, Deezer does the I, same thing for no reason as well. It's it bizarre. Yeah, L. Our main, our arguer, our protagonist does that. These two episodes absolutely that, yeah. fuck with the character stuff. What little we have, and as bad as it is, they still just flip everybody. It, it's, like, it's just a shakeup. It feels like it's, a shakeup. Like new writers kind of, took over almost, who are equally bad, just confused. I don't know. I think I would just like. I don't know that the show treats the characters in the way that the characters. It's almost like um, I'm, I'm struggling to like explain like how the characters feel in this show. But you know how like I mean we're gonna compare it right in House of the Dragon. How you know it's a high fantasy story and whatnot, but the characters feel very real. Real. They feel like well defined individuals with their own uh flaws passions interests goals yeah and before they, they say something i think i know what they're gonna say and then they say it well i'm like oh yeah uh, there you go i know this character that doesn't surprise me at all it's a world that's where the characters are very comprehensible despite living in a world that is very different from the one that we live in it's it, they feel like people the characters in this show don't really feel like people they, they kind of feel like um they're, they're kind of like props, they feel like props you know yeah like they're, they're not they're not particularly they don't seem to me like people who would actually exist even in a world that is fantastical um they seem like they are elements of a story that recognizes that it's like a narrative rather than yeah. Uh, and then, and then of course the problem there is that even even in this context of that narrative the, the decisions that they make don't really service the narrative very well a lot of opportunities for drama are not recognized and squandered um and they still don't make much sense like it's 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 really weak like that's that's just how i feel about the characters in this show it's incredibly weak yeah they, they, there's a criticism that was often made of um writers like say michael crichton who did jurassic park and things like that concept writers i guess you'd call them where they they have they have an idea they have a thing they want to depict they have a world they want to show you and they have point a and point b in mind you could interchange any one of the characters within the world that he's depicting and nothing would actually change because the character's not actually tied with the events on screen they are just there because a story involving humans needs just nominally to have some humans present but you don't actually need those characters. They don't even really have characters. The character isn't the point of the story being told. It's just, it's a grand vista or it's a grand concept being depicted or it's an excuse as Michael Crichton often did to depict his sort of lessons on, on bioethics and things like that. But you know, it doesn't matter that the characters are just purely circumstantial to it. And there's a really, like the Lord of the Rings should be the opposite of that. The, the Lord of the Rings is that there's high concept in it, but it really shouldn't work without its characters given how much of its world yeah. is tied up with the different races of people. But we the don't characters get don't seem of the world that they're in. Hmm. I think I, I I get what you mean. I think what I would say my impression in this show is like if you were to imagine like characters in a fable, you know, like a fable that that has a very specific uh, point that it's trying to hone in on, and how um, like depending on how thorough the fable is, the characterization might not be like that strong. Um, like it's very much in service of the specific point of that fable, mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't really give you much more than that. But the difference between those fables and what we have in this show is one, the length of those stories, um, but also that like the characters are consistently characterized in those stories. Like, if anything, you could say that maybe like if you looked at some fable that it's too simplistic, but like at least they're still acting in a way that is consistent with whatever goals are set out. And in service of whatever story they're trying to tell. The problem here is that, like, you've got a story that... It, the, the story demands certain actions from the characters that just don't exist. Like, that don't manifest at all. Um, so I'm still trying... I guess I'm just trying to figure out exactly what it is that I'm finding so hollow about the characters. But when, maybe that's just it. They're hollow. It's kind of like Star Wars. Uh, modern Star Wars, at least. Where you see this world... And all of the t crazy technology and all of the everything in it. And the people that you would expect to inhabit that is different than what we're portrayed or what we're given. Because the people that were shown are a bunch of idiots. Everyone's stupid. Um, 
And in this show, you have all of these gleaming towers and cities and these massive, incredible, super high fantasy, crazy things. And everyone's written super poorly. So they don't seem like they're actually a part of this world. How did this world come together if it's full of morons? Well, yeah, like it, it just you don't feel like these characters actually reside in the world that they live in. They just don't feel like they're it. It, it, it does not immerse you like it's very i find it very difficult to be immersed in this story oh um, yeah there's very I, little continuity if that was like the juice that can get you connected yeah exactly. so little yeah um because obviously we were saying like these are all like puppets for a greater goal which in this scene is we deny the elves we say no and it's like does that make sense and it's like don't care if we said no no they said no that was the point that's where we're going with the story and you know who gives a shit and to be clear <laughs> about yeah. the, the full argument that's provided, it's the, uh, they're gonna die. And then he's like, do you expect me to just, you know, watch as my friend dies? And the response to that from the king is the wiser people decided long ago that the elves would die and to defy their will could destroy the entire kingdom we have, or even Middle Earth. And it's just like, what the fuck? Do you actually believe what? that? Like, do you, would so you what apply this logic to you guys? To yeah, like, what, yeah. if the Dwarven Kingdom is struck by some blight, are you just gonna be like, well, that's what someone decided well, long ago? Well, I guess some fucking god or something wanted this to happen, so... Right, and, uh, uh, there's a lot of that in this episode, and the next one, about essentially preordained yeah, the Valar deciding things. Yeah, so the wizard does as well. Uh, they set a path for you that your feet have to follow, that you follow the trail. <laughs> yeah, even the bit where, you know... Galadriel's in the middle of an ocean and keeps meeting things. It hints that the Valar are responsible for that. It, it it's throughout the entire series. It's very odd, to be honest. Oh, I, I think yeah. with, with the dwarves. I mean, so I, I don't want this to be taken as giving them too much credit, but I mean, to the extent the writers have recognised this problem at all and done any work to address it at all, this scene with the dwarves is probably the closest you're going to get because at least the bare minimum is done in the sense that it establishes King Durin as being uh, old in a sense, cowardly, very restrictive, and it's done to play up the conflict between him and his slightly more brash and, and ambitious son. And, and you, get, you do get a kind of payoff from that at the end. The thing that's missing, though, is to really anchor his, his wariness in the world he's living in. So it's one thing for him to say, and it's the cheap and boring thing for him to simply say, well, it was preordained thus. Like, if you were to try and say, well, going back a few episodes, you establish that living in mines as the dwarves do they are an innately cautious people in the sense that you know the further down you dig the more dangerous your world becomes these people live in a world that could collapse in on them with the wrong stroke of a mallet for example you can tie that in and then you know if you wanted to do character work you could maybe portray more strongly that king durin is the way he is because he's lived long enough to see ambitions literally cave in around him but it doesn't really do any of that i think i think that's sort of what it's aiming for but it's not actually they framed that properly in that way. Where he explains no. it, this, where he didn't no. say, like, oh, that's that's how such and such, that's how your brother died, or that's how da da da, or do you remember the great cave in of twelve thirty six or <laughs> anything like that? You know, there's, there's none of that. It, we just don't. He's just like I, this. This uh, conflict between Durin and his father is just never. Like I'm, I'm constantly frustrated by it because I get the idea of each side, but the way that mm -hmm. they portray their ideas to one another and speak to one another it's just it's really frustrating one of the issues again is you don't you never know whether it's bad writing or whether they're actually being subtle because in some other places they will spell it out four times in three like four different ways to make sure that this gets nailed home whereas in this there's a there is a line where he's on about sort of tempting the mountain to fall on us and then he even goes the further we go in we go into like shadow and like well mm -hmm. is that meant to be a hint that he knows that the balrog is down there in or is it just a throwaway comment? In which case, he should be bringing it up. He should just be overt about it. There's a fucking creature that lives down there. We've dug too deep already. We're going to risk waking it up, guys. So, no. That would actually make more sense, to be honest with you. But there are cases where leaders are like, I don't want everyone to panic. So, this is a burden that I have to bear. Oh, yeah, but we would get told that as the audience, right? Like, we would, mm. we would have some moment where the king recognizes the Balrog is there, but he's like, oh, but I, you know, I don't want to be telling everybody they'll fucking scream if yeah. they find out that's there. You should do, because at a, if at any point, if it goes, it uh, doesn't even take long, but if the audience knows something that the characters don't, even if it's the character has no way of knowing it, they come across as stupid. 
Um, and I think that's an issue that they have in this show. They keep yeah. telling the audience things, and you're like, well... Yeah, and we all have to just, like, not found out. do this hyper-inference as to what exactly is fueling this, and, and ultimately it's just like, well, I think it might just be what he said. He really does think the elves are gonna die now, and fuck it. They should if they're gonna. Because that's how everything works. It's like, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, and that's D fun. is mad. Even with that, if other characters had shown, like, morals and stuff, then you could think, like, well, this guy's evil. But because everybody acts the same way and no yeah. one cares about anyone and everyone acts evil, you're like, well, it... I don't know whether that's his I character get, or it's yeah. just whether it right things. If everyone's a dumb asshole, what am I supposed to think? Um, yeah, Deez is like, fuck it, he's an idiot. And then he's like, no, maybe he's right. And then Elrond turns up and he's, like, sad. Pure and sad, which have to, I guess, come to terms and with the fact sad. that it's just, it just, yeah, everything just, it's not going to work out. Because we're here. I'm kind of annoyed that the elves kind of gave up on negotiations, too. Like, yeah, okay. there's no round two. There was no, I was like, all right, well, I guess they, that's not something that they wanted. Maybe we could do something else. Maybe we could, I mean, we're building this tower. We just built this tower with, I guess the tower's done now. I don't know. I, that's really quick that they got this whole fucking tower built. And the dwarves were helping with that, I suppose. This is never brought up. Again, that's just done. You'd think that would be like a big, a big uh, sort of, um, what, what was the way, like, um, like two, I can't believe I'm blanking on the word. Um, like the cooperation between two groups. Uh, Symbiosis? Uh, no, it, like a like I don't know whatever, but they 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 did this project together, and it's just sort of done now, and it's forgotten, and we don't bring it up. You don't have dwarves in Linden well, yeah, or, or or Eregion. You'd think that would have had some leverage over the, you know, relationships. Like we just built that thing. Remember that you were paid handsomely, presumably. You know, wasn't presumably. That cool? So wouldn't you really want to just see us dead? I guess the king's like, nope, mm. they forgot about it. No, it's there, fine. There's so much more conversation to be had. To... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like I said, this feels like first draft. It feels like, okay, it's like we got a first draft, we'll come back and we'll iron it out later. We got to build our blueprint for the rest of the season. And then they never went back and ironed out a lot of the details and strengthened the writing. And, um, and to tried to make the characters really unique. Uh, and and they sort of... Uh, they shot themselves as well because one one of the other problems is that you don't really understand how desperate the elves are. The, the show hasn't given us time to do that. And the reason it didn't give us time to do that is because it kept that secret from its main characters up until, what, two episodes ago, I think it was? So, like, Elrond goes under false pretenses to, to meet the dwarves. So the audience yeah. only really learns the extent of the problem really within the last sort of, well, ten minutes of their plotline. And... Now we're expected, uh, sort of building on the problem identified earlier as to whether or not they're going to actually die or can they just fuck off to Valinor again. We also have the issue of well, how desperate are they given we've not had time to see this develop. We don't have any sense of what they themselves might be thinking even off screen, never mind on screen. It's just, and I don't really understand why they did that because keeping it a secret from Elrond I don't really think accomplished anything. Whereas if they told him to go under false pretenses at the beginning, the audience There's gets a much drama. bigger lead into it, and then Elrond has the additional drama which he shares with the audience of deliberately keeping a secret from his friend, and you could accomplish you know, roughly the same character dynamic with that as well, whilst also giving the audience more time to understand the stakes. I don't know if the writers could have told you a lot of the detailed explanation as to Elrond's sort of state of mind, what he's supposed to know, what he's supposed to have been told. Um... Because the, I mean, the the result of that is that it makes him look like you know a dumb asshole like everyone else. Um, when he says no, I came to be a friend. No, I tried to get the mithril. No, I guess they knew about the mithril, but they didn't tell me. I was supposed to learn your secret, I guess, but I didn't know if I was supposed to do that from the start or not. But I guess I was. I don't know if the writers could have told you that. And they set up stakes for the elves because I, I kept. It never felt that like that big a deal for the elves because they could just leave. There's, there is that one line where they said, if we leave, then this entire place falls to darkness. But we've just seen the orcs got defeated, like, very easily in a very little easily, tiny town. Yeah. Until oh, and we've seen man. no other army. There's no other threat. And so it doesn't. it just seems like he's bigged up this kind of evil enemy, which isn't actually there or doing anything. 
They... Yeah, where'd the orcs come from? I thought they all died in the battle. Oh, we've been, yeah. Been uh, in a little hole getting Sauron's been helping them out. We we've replenished our orc supply for this episode. There's there's a lot more orcs now. They could have at least and done Adar's a scene free. What? Yeah, they could have at least done a scene where Adar went back and he had another army somewhere, and it just pans over him. No. So you know there is at yeah. least a threat. Um. So, 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 so people in chat have been saying this, like, so why didn't Gilgalad get, does Gil, okay, so like, what do we know here? Like, the Mithril, if you, you know, actually, we'll get to that in just a sec, because it's treated as a revelation, which kind of blows my mind. Um, Durin's like, oh man, and, and then Elrond says, well, I better inform Gilgalad, who soon enough won't be a king, won't even be in Middle Earth. And Durin's, like, really sad, and I'm just like, yeah, the language he's using really does imply that they're going to be dying. Um, okay, whatever, he seems fine with it. Elrond almost seems like, oh, you said no? Okay, bye. That's just the kind of character he is, I suppose, but, um... I suppose. It's, uh, it's funny, because Durin says goodbye, and then Elrond's like, we don't say goodbye. And, uh, the thing, Durin starts it crying. It goes against it, though. Well, yeah, they're very like, close together. The relationship is very robust and well developed and very believable. So it makes sense that Durin cries and sheds a tear. I was right there with him. I can't believe they were saying goodbye. These these good good friends of time. But Alron's already been in a negotiation where it failed, and he was willing to like get expelled and never ever return to any dwarven kingdom ever, just for a chance to talk to somebody to try and convince them of his argument. And so. <laughs> Like, it's, he isn't a person that would just give up on a negotiation, but they've changed his character again. Yeah, he's, uh, he's kind of just given up on this one. Uh, but yeah, as you're right, like, in the next episode even, he does a bit of defying again. He pulls that out here and there. Maybe he's just like, I don't want to fuck with that king dwarf guy. He's Yeah, it looks like that crown hurts on his head. It probably gives him a lot of pain. He's probably ornery, often. So um, he hands the mithril stone back to Durin. And at first, I nice. think we were like, well, why would you even you don't need to do that? And it's just like, then you think about it deeper, and you're like, why would you hand back the token of friendship? Like, if anyone's to draw any meaning out of that, it comes across as like, well, we're done. Which, by the way, follows from what I believe <laughs> about Elrod. Like, I can't yeah, benefit from you is... anymore, so we're done. I don't need this anymore. Gave back the mithril. Um, so where do they get the mithril for the rings? It's well, that, it's that same it. piece. I was about to say, so it, it he throws it across the table. I think everybody watching this is like, oh, is it going to clear up the leaf of its goo? And it and it does. And then it yeah. literally does. Uh, Durin, it's a the leaf. Durin and Disa are both like, oh my god. And it's like, Elrod, Elrod, come back. You got to see this. And I was just into like, what? Yeah. I thought we knew That's this. That's what everyone expected. Yeah, yeah, I thought this was the whole point. This was the point. What did they tell you? I don't understand. Um, Keller Brimble said he experimented on the Mithril and that it was everything they needed and that even a small, well, a, a certain amount of it can, like, cleanse everything. And then they watch it cleanse. And I, I, don't, I don't understand. You know, can anyone help with this? What, what were they trying to say with that? I don't know. I'm in the same place. <laughs> yeah, they know that's what's going to happen. That The entire um, negotiations were specifically because that's... Like, he must have told them why they wanted the Mithril. He must yeah. have done. Why, soon? And I thought Keller so... would have done this experiment anyway. Like, why would he not try that? Of course you would want to put it next to the goo and see what it does. I guess well, maybe from the dwarf's perspective, it's, it's revelatory to them in the sense that it gives them a visual understanding of something they've only vaguely understood in concept. But... It the still elf should doesn't... have brought that. So the elf should have probably demonstrated that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, proof of concept would be handy. Um, yeah, this is no joke. Uh, we don't just want it because it's a cool thing. We want it because it's literally going to undo the horrible black goo that's spreading across our land. Like, just help us out, yeah? And it makes you wonder, could they do it with just this one piece? Could you just walk around everywhere with this one piece and clear it up? And hey, um, why does it work when the mithril is said to be good and evil put together? Why is it anti-evil? Does that make sense? It, in the next episodes, they actually do prove that they could do it with this one piece. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, which I thought was absolutely bizarre because I thought, like, I, whatever, we'll get there. And also, it makes you wonder what 
what are the properties of uh, the mithril vest that Bilbo and Frodo have? What if you? <laughs> what can it? If you walk around with it and like. Does it get rid around of goo? Legolas? Legolas was constantly having like a euphoric high I guess whenever so. Frodo was <laughs> near him. Didn't know it was the vest. He just thought it was Frodo. Yeah, no <laughs> he thought it was like, you're a cool dude. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought that was so weird because I was like, we already do all of this, but sure. And why yeah. is there even goo in proximity to the one place in this universe where there is lots of mithril anyway? Is is it not an area of effect thing, I assume, if the goo can make it so close to the mithril, but then they have to imbue it with some other quality, which I, I guess would be magic. But it, it doesn't... You can't do this and then also do anything with the mithril vest, I don't think, in the Jackson films. Because, you know, if it contains the light of the Silmarils, it must have effects that the mithril vest in the Jackson films plainly doesn't have. If it's, you know, it's evil is allergic to mithril. And yet the orcs will have no trouble nicking it from Frodo and parading it around and the mouth of Sauron can lift it and flaunt it at Aragorn. So it clearly doesn't have that kind of rebuffing effect. It, it It's just, I think it's just a contrivance is probably the only word. Yeah. For it. Oh. yeah because I just the, thought the, it was a really, really awesome metal that was really good and light it's supposed, and strong. It's supposed well, to have original. the light of the Silmarils in it, apparently. And if it has well, it the light is. of the Silmarils the in it, then... The show not even what those are. No. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what a Silmaril is, other than it's a MacGuffin thingy. It makes it's a thing that people talk good. about sometimes. People like it. Morgoth the, likes the goo it. In, the goo in this, I thought, originally, was supposed to be... It was a physical representation of, essentially, evil spreading across the land. Because they thought they could even get rid of it just by stopping a war, and that was going to clear it up. So... Uh, surely the only way you could get rid of the goo in the first place is by fighting back the evil across the land. I don't understand why some light is going to affect what's meant to be a physical representation of Middle-earth. Well, if you get loads of it together and then throw it up into the sun, it'll explode and spread light all over the world. I think that was the plan. Now they're going to have to do this whole ring plan. You know? Oh, wait. Spoilers. We'll get there. <laughs> Bye -bye. So next up... The show? We go back to good old uh, Galadriel and Theo, who sp are good in old the fucking area couple. they're in. There is just ash, just everywhere. Look, they are in like hell, and it just it doesn't affect their breathing at all. Nope, ash has no effect on breathing, evidently. And the Lord of the oh, Rings, lame. Universe, Don't appreciate Theo wearing. Is it blackface? I guess they both got soot face. <laughs> so yeah. Um, face. But yeah, like, he's like, let's go kill some orcs, yeah, yeah. and she's like, no, idiot, we're outnumbered, we're outforced, and it's just like, no, you're not, you're Galadriel, you could kill, like, a billion orcs. Yeah. Very, very strange. And, um, and yeah, then he's like, why are you so bothered? It's not even your fault. And she's like, don't you know? It actually is. And he's like, <gasps> and then I think they both Ow. try and talk about how it's definitely their fault individually, um, which I thought was funny. Because Theo is probably much more easy to blame in terms of his involvement in all of this, like the retarded fucking hilt and all that stuff. But yeah, we'll come back to that conversation. I now. a part of me just doesn't blame anyone for not knowing about that. That's just so. It's so then absurd, again, yeah. the elves knew about it for hundreds of years. I guess you can stuff, still blame so, Waldrick. Yeah. I, I, you know, I do blame a lot of people. <laughs> actually, I take it back. As dumb as it is, there was clearly all this stuff going on around it. I I'd entirely blame the kid, because he was the one that gave it to Adar. Without that, none of it would have happened. I guess like, so. There is, I'll give him space on the fact that he was everyone watching now. everyone getting tortured or killed, you know? It's yeah, I don't blame him for that. Tough but to there is that element. That. Yeah, I don't, I don't think other characters should blame him, but I think he... Like, it would be an interesting character thing for him to have some r proper introspection on that. Well, like, I hate what yeah, she says like, to I'd... him regarding it, but it's the next scene. Yeah... Wait, he also he couldn't have known he couldn't have known precisely why it I wanted it, but it's, just, it's just intuitive the spooky no. sword makes a volcano explode and create mordor we were all we all knew it that's what swords do we didn't listen yeah. no it's just uh... so uh we meet up with a lendial who's like oh man isn't it sad that everybody's so rough right now because of that volcano oh geez oh man it's like hang on what are you doing here you with this you with your son is confusing. You with your this son is way further away, and now you're over thing. here. Yeah, and you're looking for your like... son. How did this happen? Everyone seems to have this, 
it's this is the scene where we were constantly confused as to why are you here? What happened? I guess you you were all in the village and then you left the village, but different people left the village to go to different places. You didn't check for survivors. You didn't help the wounded. You didn't confirm it yeah, because he would have had to have bumped happened? into the queen. He would have had to have bumped into everyone else when searching for yeah. people. Because they were in the street. He just fucked off. Everyone just sort of left. And they're like, well, I hope all the people survived and they find us in the woods or something. Yeah, and they struggle to tell him, like, oh, your son got hit by a house. And this part infuriates me because it's like, oh, so what did you do about it? And they're like, well, we left. And it's like, so there's a house on yeah. top of him back there. Do you see if he's dead? Like, oh, well, we assumed. And it's like, okay, well, whether or not he's dead, I'm his loving father. I'm getting that body. I'm going to go find him. Fuck you guys. I'm going to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to check. I got I to gotta make sure. But they, I got to know. But he just doesn't. He just doesn't. Even and he should have been like, there in the first place. Spoilers, he fucking leaves Middle Earth. Like, he just, he just, he's like, I'm out of here. It's like, Sorry. you don't even know if your son's okay. He's just like, oh, he was trying to save somebody. Some stuff fell. We didn't see him again. It's like, okay. It's, so no, it's fine, because he actually says in that, that last scene before they leave, he says, it's called, we'll leave a battalion here to go back and see if any of the people we left behind I, are still alive. Man. So. Unbelievable. That's the whole reason he's pissed in the rest of the episodes now is because he's lost his son. It's like, you didn't confirm that, like any normal father who loves his son would. But okay, Elendil, you do you, buddy. Uh, he doesn't take the news well, but I guess why would you? I just, I get frustrated watching him do that shit because I believe that he would race off immediately wherever they said yeah. they saw him. He never would have left can't... the town. No. You get a lot of those moments with all the characters where it's just like, why can't you just be normal? Yeah. The writers need to ask to... themselves, what would I do in this situation, knowing all the things the character is supposed to know? Well, I, I guess I'll leave Middle Earth. I hope my son's okay. I'll leave Middle Earth to come back later. And they could have used... They could have used Muriel as an excuse for him to leave the town because she's the queen. And so he's like torn up, but I, I have to yeah. get her out of here because she's in danger. But that takes precedence. But and rather than that, it's just, oh no, nobody cares. Everyone just leaves everyone. Everyone's out for themselves. They're all evil in this show. I could totally see him be like, you know, not, not necessarily fuck the queen, but I could totally see him being like, uh, you, guy who was helping, you come with me and show me where you last saw him. Queen, you go with my top king's guard or whatever. They say, I gotta go find my son. Then she could be like, I need you, and he's like, uh, my son needs me. You know, that sort of thing? That could, that could have been could have been fun. Yeah, like, is your duty to Numenor or your son? And he's like, my son, crazy bitch. And then he punches her in the fucking throat. Punches her in the <laughs> eyes, because <laughs> they're not useful anyway. And then he fucking T-poses on her. <laughs> so, um... Uh, you could actually work it even into the scene they've made, though, right? Because you have the revelation of her, of her sight loss momentarily. And, you know, all it would really have taken is, I guess, Elendil learns at that moment that the son he was standing next to a few moments ago is, is now no longer with them. So he's like, no, I'm going to go back. And then she says, no, I need you to stay. And then they have that sort of, then you get the reveal of blindness. And then it's his clearly depicted, um, ideally, the devotion to duty that forces him to then consciously leave his son behind. But I don't think we really get that from what I remember of this scene. Yeah. No. Now he just walks off. Uh, when we go back to Theo and Galadriel, and Theo's like, man, it sucks. My mum's probably dead. Elfman's probably dead. Everyone's probably dead, right? Probably. And then Galadriel says, uh, do not fill your mind with guesswork. Uh, it'll make it hollow. Something like this. I'll get the quote exactly. Basically, now. yeah, it's a really... This what, show's full of really bad advice. He says, what cannot be known hollows the mind. Fill it not with guesswork. Uh, this is a woman who spent uh, centuries roaming the earth, <laughs> looking for Sauron, just guessing at his location. Yep. The, the, sure. there's... Or is that the point? She's gone on an arc. She's learned that that was a mistake. Was it? Well, you would have been that later with him. And she would have been able to fight him at all. Uh, as Elrond when, well, puts it in the next episode, I was wrong to doubt you. You were right, like, about everything. No, I mean, I'm, I'm memeing. I don't think that that's what they were going for at all. I think that was just <laughs> meant to be, like, a smart thing that she said, but it's really weird. It's just another weird 
saying. Yeah, it's just weird as fuck. Uh, don't guess about things, ever. And it's like, um... You'd think yeah. that the more wise thing to say here would be, like, don't assume the worst. Like, to yeah, keep your exactly. mind away from darker don't thoughts, yeah. or something like that. You have to have, you have to have hope. You have to, you know, be prepared. You have to something, some actual bit of practical advice that you might be able to use. Like, imagine that you, you know, it's like, oh, we have three directions to go. Which is the least likely to have orcs? And it's like, oh, maybe it was, and she goes, don't guesswork. If you don't know, we'll just leave. <laughs> it's like, what? No, the, that's, that's how we do a lot of things. It's kind of I work with uncertainty. Why would you even say this? It's like so bad. And she says it so confidently. She's imparting this. Age long wisdom. Shut the fuck up. Nobody here can question it. Nope. Which is really sad, but hey. Um, so yeah, they're they're heading to the Numenorian camp. I guess she managed to just find a direction that completely dodged everyone. Because that's where everyone's heading, right? The Numenorian camp. Mm-hmm. There are a huge trail of people that go from where she was to the camp. She's gone where she was with them to the camp. She somehow managed to go a place where no one else is, and she bumps into a huge horde of orcs as well. How? Yeah, she and Theo both went, because he went with her. He didn't go... Theo didn't look for his mother? No. He gave up. He went straight to the woods with the crazy lady. He didn't look for his mother. He didn't look for any of his friends and family of the people he's lived with. He just goes with his right random next to his mom, too. I just don't get how any of this happened. Yeah, it's why. How did this happen? You try to picture it in your mind, a little, a little graph, like, oh, how, like, actually, how did this happen? Then you get the wonderful line where he's like, "How many orcs have you killed?" And she's many. And he goes, "Good." And she goes, "I would not use such words." Oh God! She's like why? Because it darkens the heart to call dark deeds good. You were threatening to torture <laughs> them gleefully to say, in the episode. last. King yeah. episode, Jesus woman. Uh what changed in thirty minutes. Well, a volcanic eruption, I suppose, but <laughs> you know, does that yeah. clear the mind? The orcs does have been exclusively mind, horrendous to Theo and his people. It is like The orcs yeah. seem to be, yeah, it's just like intrinsically unsalvageably evil, and killing them seems to be a just a general good thing all the time in all contexts. That's utterly bizarre. We've not seen that orcs are, like, nuanced. They're always just looking to destroy, burn, and kill, eat. Like, that. that is that's all they do. And this is like, yeah, but killing them... And it's funny, because if you'd said murdering them, maybe there would be something of a, of a question there, but, like, killing them is just exclusively yeah, evil? Like, really? Like you can't murder an orc, in a sense. Like, they're, they're just, you know, in... I know what you mean, yeah. What I'm suggesting is the choice of the word kill, which is what Theo has, she's, she calls that exclusively dark. It's like, how could you possibly think that? I don't know, because the moderated position is you should kill them, but you shouldn't feel happy about it. But again, in the previous episode, the previous episode, I think, well, it was the last one, wasn't it? But they actually tried to give the orcs a kind of emotional value. They were fallen elves. Adar is a fallen elf. They establish a kind of familial relation. They invite the audience for the first time to think that these are not just, you know, insert random evil creature that can just be killed willy-nilly. So they try to do that, and then that's what makes her admission they also about say wanting they to kill and torture. Hell. Well, yeah, they also do that, but then also that's what makes her so horrific when she says at the time, I'm going to kill every last one of them and make you watch. That's horrific at the time. And now, now they've kind of... Now they've just completely done a, a vault face, and now, it, now it's, well, no, you should be lamenting killing them except when you you shouldn't be i i don't i think even the show understands what the moral character of the orcs is yeah and normally you would have thought that the orcs you know they didn't really care about each other either they, they'd happily have killed each other for anything um hmm. but in this they've set in stone that they actually do care about each other they have a culture they well, are upset Adar, when each other's dies like... well yeah Adar, but the other orcs as well they were all involved in that ceremony they all seem to care that one of them had died and so right. it, you do get to that point where killing one of them because it would negatively impact other people, there is a kind of a moral thing there. And it didn't, it, it always on about, well, you know, we're only here, like, looking for a place to live. It, it's kind He's of, such... I don't care that we're getting rid of people, but 
He's full of shit, though, because he tried to make it sound like it's such a, you know, like, it's so nice for us to finally give these orcs a place to be. And then it's just like everything they show of the orcs are just these horrendous assholes who want to destroy everything (laughs) for everyone else. It's like, if it would, if you could have one orc who was just like, man, I just want to farm. I just want to grill. I just want to grill. (laughs) (laughs) I want nothing to do with this crazy war stuff. Real people? No, no, no. No, just regular grilling. (laughs) Yeah. I think they're aiming for the fact that they don't really care if they kill other people, but they're not going out and deliberately, like, doing it for pleasure, is... I wonder sometimes about that. <laughs> Why would that betray these orcs? <laughs> well, Remember when they yeah, killed orcs... one of the slaves for no reason at all? Like, they were just like, hey, hey we did it, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, okay. That's true. They, they, they were smacking a lot of them as well for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's trying to smack some to sense into them. Those slaves were Revel retarded. in the misery of others. But that's what you expect from orcs. Or... The, they're trying to humanize something which is innately evil, which is why it doesn't work. But they still like, had a go, I think. Oh, uh, then we have a whole scene to say Muriel's blind now. Um, rip. I was saying when. when oh it happened, no, not Muriel. The thing is, the scene itself is like fine in terms of how it's revealed. She like. I I would asterisk that with where I, there was confusion on my part. Because she was staring forward, and so was he. He was staring forward, too. And I thought they were looking at something. The two of them. Um, well, I, th- I mean, it, it gets pretty... They do a visual of uh, Elendil dodging a twig, and then he looks up to see her dodge it, and she doesn't. Just narrowly gets past it. Yeah, which is kind of... That's like... The it feels pretty away. blatant like at that, that point. Yeah. And then... So I, the, it that comes before mind, they're both looking in the same direction. I was direction. just imagining that the entire journey up until this point... And at no point have they gone below a low-hanging branch, because then she would have just been twatted right yeah, off her horse. And not that only that, but just funny. here climbing onto the horse while being horse, blind. Got onto the horse. Yeah, there's going to be, surely yeah. you would have been given away at this point, but maybe they weren't thinking about it. But, um, I don't know, he picks it up and then she's like, oh shit, you noticed? And to me, I was just like, I probably should have just told him, yeah. right? Like, he was going to figure this out. Like, I think a lot of people would eventually. I was blinded trying to help Numenorean soldiers. Have you seen the elf? So yeah. I haven't. Because, you know. Yes. The problem is, is I just didn't care really? about her at all, so. <laughs> I don't, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's... Yeah, like, if, if she was more of a character, just like if everybody was more of a character, then this could have been more potent, but alas. So we don't even oh, really wow. know how much agent she's she has. So it, it's different if you've got a. I mean, think when um when Neo gets blinded in the third Matrix film, and then you realize because we know a lot about his character and we know how integral he is and we know what he's going toward and how integral to the plot, how much agency the character has. That that moment of blindness fills gives the audience a sense of the gravity of the situation. But with Muriel, who's not really a character and whose agency hasn't been established beyond that she is vaguely probably a queen of some description, is this even that tragic a thing? Like, is it really going to impact her role in the story going forward? And ideally, you'd have at least got some hint of how terrible this will be for her beyond, obviously, the inconvenience of not being able to see anything. But it's it just again is it's. it's Bad character work until this point means that you don't care about it in the supposedly revelatory moment. I think I think I know what you're saying. Like when Neo gets blinded, we're like, ah, fuck, he's been blinded. Jesus, what? Oh God, what is this going to mean for the re-? like? We need him to be able to blah blah. But with her, you're like, oh, all that, right, that, that, well, that, oh, that's that happened. That's that sucks. I guess. Yeah. Like I even did. if you are pretty empathetic to her, you might just be like, well, you can still make decisions, right? <laughs> yeah, like... that's her sole role as well that she doesn't actually need eyesight to have a role in the story whereas with neo you assume that he does need eyesight to do the things that he does so again what are we supposed to feel about this if anything beyond that oh that's a bit kind of sad for whoever this woman is well we'll get back get to the that. impression that the only reason that they did that is because they felt like they needed more consequences than a present in yes. the story for the corruption. <laughs> because <laughs> nobody important died except for Guy no, who didn't want that, to die. That guy, and we know that Isildur isn't dead. I don't think he's dead. Um, yeah. I, I, there's no way, right? Like that they're actually gonna like deviate that much, are they? Or well, so some well, theories, some people come up with is like you could have another yeah. Isildur. That could have been true, a different one. True. Yeah. Gary. How you doing? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, we can. 
And I was just about oh. to answer a super chat that kind of, it was like, why aren't you talking about the finale? It's like, we're halfway through episode seven, so we'll we're get there in a the few film. hours. Yeah, we're building up, we're building oh, up. Guys. We're going faster today than usual. Yeah. <laughs> well, I might so much. Back. I can come back for that then. Oh, well, yeah, we'll be here for a while, so you're more than welcome to. By the way, hi, Rex, this is really awkward, because I promised Hello, to get you, and I, and I didn't, but I, I still will, and I'm sorry. You, I you promised what now? Sorry? I promised to get you something, and then I didn't, and I'm sorry. about. What did you, Fal what did you promise to give me? It was Falcon. You asked me to do something for a video about Captain Falcon. You don't remember? Oh, hey. yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Don't I haven't I haven't I, I know that what I said is, is almost like a, like, oh, you totally forgot. But I, I haven't forgot it. It's just in my it's for something else and it's still okay. happening. So good. Yeah, it's, yeah, that that is absolutely underway. Whatever could it be? Who knows? I guess we'll all find out later. Yeah, I just wanted to publicly apologize because I don't cool. know. It's fine. I mean, yeah, the public didn't we even know that it was happening. Kind of ripping so you to shreds uh, publicly. Really kind of telling everybody how much it sucks. So it's good that you've done that. You've recovered your rep now. It's all You're good. To talk about rings of power. Yeah. More, because I just finished talking <laughs> about myself for three hours. It's, it's been the last fun. hurdle for us, Arm anyway. Stretch. Yeah. Arm yeah. Stretch. Finally I'm getting it. To think about it for a while. Uh, we're up to when when totally not Gandalf is excommunicated because he <laughs> made a branch fall over there that goes. they do, they both jumped underneath for no reason at all. While trying to save the tree for them and get them <laughs> <Yeah>. food. <laughs> Right, of which he was successful. Uh, he just, yeah, it, just it was a delayed that. sort of thing, you know. Um, but yeah, Nori is like, bro, here's an apple, and it, I guess it's supposed to signify something. I'm not quite sure. Like, ah, oh, look at the journey these two have been on, or the friendship they it, share, or something. I think it's just supposed to. Maybe it's supposed to just symbolize here's some food. <laughs> yeah, if you're hungry. Maybe they needed to kill some time to pad pad the watch time. Uh, doesn't it like? Or do they does, kill time with this plot? Ooh, they kill time. So ooh. with. With uh, Nori pushing her sister towards the tree, yeah, <laughs> uh, and and this is all over like a tree branch falling down, and it didn't instantly heal. Uh, doesn't it make you kind of rethink how these little assholes like abandon people? Like maybe somebody <laughs> just has a sprained ankle, and they're like, "Fuck this guy, he's dead." Well, you I guess, know, I guess yeah. we saw them do that, right? We're gonna <laughs> turn them into the yellow sunshine berries. If you get my drift, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you just gotta wonder how extreme they get. Like some guy, you know, you just bots. And they're like, "That's it for you, buddy." That's it. a social faux pas. He can't be doing that. Yep. Oh. It smells like death. Your death. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, he, he walks off, and we get just the funniest shit. Nori's like, you know what? I should have stayed on the trail. That was my big mistake. I didn't stay on the trail, mum. It's like, yeah, they're really doing that. This whole season, they've just been having to say... You gotta stay on the trail, Nori. She's like, I don't want to stay on the trail. I'm gonna go off the trail. Uh, now she's finally like, oh three. boy, I should have stayed it's on the, the trail. Second act low point for Nori. She she's realizing the error of her ways and is doubting whether going off the trail is good. They don't do a very good job of making us try to like trying to get us to sympathize with her because they're, given how they're much there's almost time like these characters have had. That's insane. Yeah. No, but like, ev everything she says in this scene is wrong. If she didn't go off the trail, then she never would have found him. She never would have rescued him, and they would have been left behind by the other Harfoots, and they all would have died. She's literally uh, saying, I, I, yeah, yeah. I think my family yeah, should die." The show's logic is that the reason why her dad had the injury in the first place is because yeah. she was too busy off the trail, which was so retarded. Even was... though everybody else what in the village could have that? helped, well, I, I there don't was know. so many she, fuckers she was, sitting I, down when that was happening. Code. Only families yeah. are allowed to help families. That's why you have kids, because if you don't have kids, no one can help you legally. No one is allowed to assist you in any way. Whatsoever. I just want to know what happens to the people who struggle to walk because they're just getting old. Do they, do they just get left behind? Yeah. I guess so. I, fuck them. <laughs> we hate them. We eat them. They literally just, they just disappear and we don't talk about it. No, they put them in the little book, remember? This is the dystopian future of the Harfoot world. Like I said, it's like Logan's Run. Well, uh, I look forward to I, seeing that adaptation. I just watched one of the showrunners justify the Harfoot's existence by saying, erroneously, by the way, at Comic-Con in front of God and everybody, including the Tolkien professor, that um, Tolkien didn't specif specifically state that Harfoot's didn't do anything in the Second Age because he only mentioned hobbits. 
without mentioning the fact that Harfoots are hobbits. They're just a breed of hobbits. So these guys are like functionally retarded and they're they making- tried, uh, They tried that loads of times. So they, they did that with, <laughs> no, Tolkien never said Galadriel didn't go to yep. Numenor, therefore it's fine. So, okay, but mm. Tolkien never said that Galadriel- Probably would have mentioned it. Didn't meet Dumbledore on Tatooine. And like, you could do anything with that line of reasoning. Yeah. He made it right that the Harfoots took a shit on the 3rd of of September, 5505 BC. You're like, well, then I guess they did. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, so we, this is where we find out that uh, Caliborn is dead. He's, yeah. Quote, unquote. We'll find out whatever's going on there. It just it seems know, unlikely to me that they're going to commit there. to him being dead. But uh, Maybe there are two Caliborns. Who knows? Oh. Oh, yeah. Twins. All, Ever... all elves are born as twins. It's uh, a. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's like, I met him while I was dancing in a in a glade or a grove or whatever. And then it's like, you don't, you never, <laughs> not this character. You've never danced. <laughs> I stole that He's from a uh, Baron and Luthien too. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Luthien was dancing in a glade. It's 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 repurposed shit. It's all shit. I'm so bitter from watching this. I can I'm imagine, done. yeah. <laughs> you, you could finally unbitter yourself for a little while before the next season oh. comes out. That's going to be years. That's the good news. Two, oh. right? Yeah, like three years. Two and a half, three years. Um, I don't so yeah, uh, she's like, Theo, this isn't your fault. Uh, and don't take that burden because it'll be really hard for you to put it back down. And I'm just saying, they're like, do you actually know what Theo's done? I'm assuming she has no context. Because he's probably talking about all the shit with the hilt, right? Mm -hmm. It's amazing does how she much know we say anything that? about that, even. Because she, she wasn't there when it Does she even happened. know the hilt did this? Does anyone I don't know? Think she, I don't think she does. Does, does no, she X ever character in the know that X character did a thing? Or that does X character know that X event even happened? It happens all the time. The knowledge levels are all over the place. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, I, I don't feel know guilty. Know. I'm not going to tell you, you know, don't tell me why. I'm just going to say you're not. It's like, all right, thanks. <laughs> Sweet. This is very encouraging. You have no idea who I am or what I've done, but you're telling me it's not my I'm fault, so I'll believe you. <laughs> yeah, well, she absolves Sauron, so why not absolve this guy, you know? Yeah, that's okay. fair. <laughs> yeah, she seems to say that to everyone. Because later on she goes, well, you know, I didn't actually mean what I said to you, that nothing mattered. So she'll just tell people whatever she thinks they need to hear. To kind of be a useful tool for her in the future because if this kid breaks down he's going to be a trouble for her so even this could probably be self-interest um, i can't have you having a breakdown then we get like once again like they establish something that i don't think works very well he pulls the sword out of the hilt slightly and it makes like a shing sound and then all the orcs go blah, 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 blah. there's someone clearly That's over what there all swords have to do it's a hollywood mandate whenever you if... pull a sword out of a sheath it has to go shing. if you want to establish that right Fine. I think it's goofy, but fine. It's loud enough to activate all the orcs that were over there. Okay, and then they Why like. Why didn't they just uh, have it to where when he's scooting back, he like puts his foot on a, a rock or and... break a twig? Yeah, yeah anything something. normal. But uh, the orcs look around. They're like, "Oh, I don't see anything. Let's go." And then they're like, "Whew, we're fine." And he puts the sword back in, and it doesn't alert them this time. Like it goes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It'd be God funny if they it. did the exact same sound effect but reversed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, why establish that and then break it immediately? Like, ugh, can't keep keep anything well, straight. Well, why have the why have this scene delay? Why why does she even? You're wandering through enemy lands. There's orcs everywhere. You're the only trained fighter in the amongst the two of you. Is this really the right opportunity to be handing over your sword to a a random child you just picked up in a burning village ten minutes ago? Oh like yeah, soldier, that's yeah. A... That that is a thing that has that happened yet? She he's like Oh, I, is that not the I think this is a little bit later. I don't know why he just took his sword, maybe. I can't remember if that's happened yet, but he's just like you give it up. Am I a warrior? Can I be a warrior? And she's like, Yeah, here's the sword, I guess. That seems to be what happens, right? And I remember being like, What the fuck are you doing? You're gonna need that sword. Give him the like if you're gonna give him anything, give him the knife, right? Yeah, give him something else. Or just tell him just don't fight. Don't don't fight. I ain't no Boromir. Just don't fight. Don't get into conflict. I yeah. will protect you until we get to wherever the fuck it is that we're going. <laughs> because we've we somehow here? found a trail to the Numenorean camp yeah. from the village that leads to an army of orcs. Like, how did this happen? We are in the woods. 
there i don't even know how that would be a nifty scene if they're like which way are we going he said normally i'd use the stars and the sun but it's it's just so it's so blotted out i can't even tell why are they all it's, going in different directions i don't they all know left the same place no going one to the knows. same place nothing no logistically that... lines up in the village to the Numenorean camp well, nothing they go when they need to go for the sake of drama and for whatever they need the, everything the characters in the world just bend to the whim of what they want to happen without any regard for the decisions that they would actually make. What is that game where it has all the, it's like a kid's game? I guess anyone can play it. It's not necessarily a kid's game. I guess it is a kid's game if kids are playing it. But if you have a, it, it, it has like the board. It's not Boggle. It's kind of, Boggle's kind of, it's close to Boggle. But it, it's got the board and it like rotates all the shapes and it throws them around and you have to try to put them back in the appropriately shaped pegs as fast as you possibly can before the timer goes off. That's what they did in between episodes. Monopoly. They they just jumbled everybody in the locations so that they can get everyone split up. Which it doesn't make any sense. With Isilda and uh, what's his name? <laughs> like how they were they were both having a conversation by the horse because that was the the drama that they wanted for that episode. But then yep. in the next episode, it's like, yeah, but we want to, like, fake out a sealed or death. So how are we going to do that? It's like, well, they're not together Oggle. anymore. It's like, wait a minute. But, like, they were together. No, they're not. Like, it's it's just... it. You can't you can't just like do whatever you want. Like you need to <laughs> you need to like if you make certain choices in your story, you have to commit to them and follow through. Was, like what it means to be a good writer is to understand like how all of the parts of your story are interconnected and how to like whatever changes you need to make, characterization or to like the plotting, to achieve whatever payoffs that you want and to achieve them effectively. You don't just get to do whatever you want. Um it's, it's funny because when, when they ignore the source, right, and fuck with it in whatever way, you're like, wow, disrespectful, driven by your own desires, blah, blah, blah. But when they ignore their own stuff, you're like, oh, you're, what are you you're doing? just a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> you told me this was true, and now you're telling me it's not true. What the fuck? It was the writers yeah. doing to each other what they did to Tolkien. Because mm -hmm. remember, when, when it comes to the story that you present, like, you as the author, the writer... You're making choices about what you present to people. Like, because they can't see everything. Like, there's got to be some guiding force in terms of giving people information. And when you give people information, like, yeah, they, they do retain it. And, like, when you change it in the next episode or you disregard it, yeah, I mean, like, that, that damages the story. You don't just get to do whatever you want. Like... <laughs> commit to the decisions that you made or like you know what maybe there's a better way to get the drama that you want in both episodes or alternatively if there's no better option which is rarely the case then just commit to that choice but imagine that army of orcs does start to approach the village and everyone scatters to to, to escape them and that yeah and that's Meanwhile. how everyone gets into these unique sort of groupings and they all have to regroup exactly. back at the numenorean camp because you think about opportunities for drama if he's like looking for a Sildur, and then a bunch of orcs start running in it's like I mean, again, exactly, we, yeah. we've lost the characterization of. I would presume that he would help people in that village. He seems like that kind of person. Deal would definitely do. do that. Yeah, there's not even a chance. Like, yeah. Most of them would, but he definitely would. But we we can't do that because we want to have. We didn't the have drama. that scene. But that but that's like an which is un, weird. An un, it's an unimaginative perspective on like storytelling. Like, well, we needed him here for this. It's like you have tons of options. You have all the options. You're writing it. Like you. Well, can, uh, Having all of those characters in the village in the aftermath of the volcano, it's great for storytelling and characters because it will show you how they all operate in that crisis exactly. situation. Even, even with, amongst each other. Even how illogical it is. Like, yeah, know, where... To do. Yeah, if, if we're biting the bullet on, that's just, just sort of what happens in the story. Then you could show how they act, who are their, what are their priorities... Who do they care about first? So who's most important to them? You have it's just rife with opportunities to really learn about these people and further characterize them. But and I think it's, like I said, I they got boggled. A, what they got boggled because I yeah I just think it just reinforces that you don't you don't realize all the opportunities that are before you, and more importantly, that everything that you make your characters do in the circumstances that you put them in, says something about who they are. I'm pretty sure you mentioned earlier, Rags, but, like, when Galadriel, like, walks off and doesn't help anybody, that says something. Yeah, that's, the, that's apparently that's a thing that she'll did. do. Yeah. Exactly. She is willing to hear a baby crying 
and she'll fucking walk off into the woods with Theo. <laughs> yeah, just and what's weird about and having aimlessly in the forest, and you have this scene where, like I was saying, potentially you know fertile ground for character development and stuff. But I guess they really wanted to have Galadriel and Theo together for a few scenes. They really felt that that yeah. was worth it, and that was really important Does, to um... have in this show. I think Little Platoon mentioned it, or disprove one of you, that the, the, the idea is that she sees herself in Theo, and she gets to have those that conversation of advising him with stuff that she should have been told herself, yeah. or some shit like that. I think it's when he's blaming it, like he's on about attacking the elves, and he, he says something like, uh, I've got to go and kill them all, and she's like, no, you've, you've got to let that go. You've got to let that go. And it, I think the repetition is her realizing you... it applies to her. Yeah, they should have done that in the camp back at back at the 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 Numenorean encampment. What they should have done is after everything is sort of they've gathered all the survivors and everything. She notices Theo with a sword, like whacking a practice, you know, dummy or whatever, and she notices that he's just he's just shit, right? And so she maybe goes over and notices, like, gives him some pointers and stuff, and he's like, "Why are you so?" You know, and then they have the conversation there, right? Instead, Instead of, of just we being need to separate her and Theo in the woods, yeah. They see the, you just think about the the first alternative that comes to your mind is better. This, like I said, I keep saying it, it feels well, like a first draft process. that no one checked. It's the writing process, isn't it? Like you start with your ideas and the things that you want to do, but then you start refining it and you figure out more expeditious, more potent uh, ways of of getting to the payoffs that you want. You don't just kind of like passively accept the first idea that comes into your head and then just roll with it. You think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, you make that I list. Writing... Here are the things that we want to have. And you make all your checklists. We want to have, like, we want to have Galadriel and Theo talk. Like, okay, we have Galadriel, we make all that list. How do we make this happen? And how do we mesh that with the other things that we want mm -hmm. to happen? We yep. could just have them walk into the woods. That's cool. That's solved. Next one. And then they move on. It's, it's an entirely, it. it's, it's a redundant it, yeah. aspect at this point, though. But this is the worst point you could possibly choose to even try this device. You've got five seasons when you're going to be sticking around with these characters. If you want to make oh. it more believable that Galadriel should leave a village full of suffering people to get back on her mission, what you don't do while she's getting back on her mission is to give her that moment of self-realization and reflection. That that's Make that happen later. Get to the end of this season when it turns out that her drive to fulfill her mission has ended up arranging, stupidly but nevertheless arranging, Sauron's re-emergence and his coming back to power. Have her grappling with the consequences of that in maybe like the first episode of season two. That's when you give her this moment of realization. You don't do it here with a character she's never met, whose actions she doesn't know, and then forget about it, really, going forward anyway, because they, they just thought all they wanted was to have this, this random scene. They thought this was the place to do it. It's the worst place to do it. You do it much later. It, the very definition of contrived. I mean, you could... I mean, I know we're trying to break down the scene, but we could also argue that you don't make your main character an insufferable bitch that you don't care at this point. <laughs> hey, step <laughs> one. <Are> you... <laughs> yeah, it's... The if you want to make her very unlikable, you you want to you don't want to make anyone unlikable, right? People yeah. can be evil bastards, but you could still be like, oh, this guy, right? Yeah, we've we've unlikable. got a really good show right now that kind of illustrates yep. that. There's a lot of we're bad difficult. people that we're interested in. Yep. Yeah, like I don't know if it's compelling or yeah, compelling, interesting, yep. entertaining. Like there's a Engaging. there's a whole bunch of words that would describe it, but a character, like a character that you like doesn't necessarily need to be, it, yeah, I guess it depends on whether you want to use the word likable or I like them, you know, versus who they would be in real life if they really existed. I just don't think that they realize who they, who Galadriel is, like who they've characterized her as. I think that the impression that their writers probably have is, yeah, maybe she's a little headstrong, but she's like determined. She wants to save lives and, you know, she's, um, she, she's determined. I think that would be the word that they would use rather than like, Alice. Yeah, or, uh, you know. she um she shares the most important information with the audience as well. So she's determined, but she's also frustrated. And I'm sure the writer's idea was that the audience would see her frustration and understand her frustration because we are the only people besides her who know that she's right about everything. And so we yeah. see her being put off course and being denied by her other characters, even though we know that she's correct. So we're supposed to sympathize with her frustration, but. Th that was that was massively presumptuous by the writers 
and it, it doesn't excuse you then of writing her in a way that's not a complete dickhead in universe, which is what they did, which does make her unlikable. So I, I actually think, you know, they should have doubled down on that, really. If they're going to do that, which they shouldn't have done it to begin with, if they are going to do that, though, double down on it, make her unlikability the point of her character, actually have her deliberately abandon villages of suffering people because she's so mission focused. And then you see the folly of that at the end. And then you can bring in self-realization later. You mm -hmm. her on. Yeah. But I don't think they realize it, it's just, you can't do that if you don't even no, realize so, what I character don't you realize. They don't realize I, I think, that that's an arc that's available to them. You know, I think they come from a perspective where if you know you're right, then you are justified in any action in order to achieve what you want to do. And doesn't matter what it costs to any other people. It's kind of like they're climbing the greasy pole to get where you want, especially when it comes to like the writers themselves. They've written for 10 years in Hollywood and no one wanted to get anything made. And then you've got Gladriel is like, no, if only everyone gave me a chance and listened to me, then ev everything would be amazing. I'd be able to sort everything out. And it kind of the it's the bizarre, action though, like you know like what kind of arc is that i was right all along if I, <laughs> I don't think they're thinking arcs we've seen it yeah, before, I don't, I don't we've seen it before. Maybe, you might be right maybe they don't think it arcs i don't know like <laughs> i got no idea so she was right all along and just needed to realize she was better all along we've had that a couple times now well yeah, yeah i think it's about everyone else needs that. to learn that Captain she's Marvel. right Yes, that is another thing that happens usually. <laughs> Other people need to have their arc <laughs> understanding how awesome she is. As opposed to like resolving some problem within yourself, like some flaw and then and then rising above it and becoming a better person. So uh we come yeah. back to Durin and good old Elrond. And Elrond is is doing the thing again where uh if you remember when he was talking to Gilgalad in the other episode where he was like, uh I went oh. to Durin in aid of friendship, but you sent me there looking for for something, did you? Like like, boo, and, and we were oh. all like, uh, "Excuse me, Elrond, you Elrond. went there. Like, you're, just, you're a fucking liar." Elrond is Cartman. He's he's Cartman. Yes, he's Cartman. He doesn't even. So he's like, we, well, we get yeah, the best I example now. I... So, <laughs> Durid is like, I'm not going to drink water right now. Self discipline. I assume what he means by that is to space it out or or something, because you know, I don't actually it. know. Because um, uh, if depending on what the relationship could be, that would be oh, I'm not going to take the help of an elf or something like that. I I don't know. I'm I'm going go be to go best faith possible and assume we need to drink where the intervals lie. Self discipline, right? Like I, I don't know. But uh, Elrond's then like, I'm you sure. think that's going to bring you success? And I'm just sitting so here like self discipline. Drinking water? No, no, self discipline. Oh, like the, the very concept of self discipline. Will that bring you? It's like typically yes. Uh Oh yeah, this is good. Self My is, is, uh, is... was actually it's 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 an expression, it's a euphemism for stubbornness and not so he's using self discipline as, as an excuse to sort of press on regard because he's he's angry at this moment. He's pushing forward at the expense of his own health beyond the point at which it's reasonable, and he's sort of aware of that, and Elrond is sort of aware of that. And so, you know, that's kind it's almost tongue in cheek was what I took from that. Um but maybe I'm being too kind to the writers. No, that, no I, I hadn't thought of it that way, that. but that yeah, that makes sense because they also then refer back to the previous time with their duel between them, and he was mm. angry in that moment as well. So it would tie together. If that's what they were going for, uh, it could have been made a little bit clearer because I legit was confused that he was being critical of the concept of self discipline. But if he wasn't referring to that at all, he was just like, "I'm just, I don't know." At that point, I'm just like, "Durin, what the fuck are you doing? Drink water, mate." You know, like yeah, it, it, ha, reframe like that. It sounds like because he's angry, angry, he he's like. He said his angry. rage. <laughs> but he's trying to channel his rage into the mining like he did before, and that's but like how he he's, beat Elrond. He's sitting down and having a breath, and then he's like, hey, I have some water, and he's like, no, self discipline Like, I think that the argument yeah. would work better if he was continuously hitting with the pickaxe, and then he was like, dude, have a break, and he's like, self-discipline, elf, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, like, having a sit down and not drinking, I'm just sitting like, why not? So, like I said, I thought <laughs> what he was trying to say was, like, save the water or something. I don't fucking know, whatever. Anyway, uh, Elrond is like, oh, it, you won that contest, did you? And he's like, yeah. That he's like, you did. You did want me to uh, like? You didn't let me win, did you? And he's like, well, I wanted to uh, have your ear, and so you know, I, that's the way to do it. And I was just like, does Elrond not remember what happened? It was presented as if you win, I will grant you a boon, meaning you know, like a benefit in some way. In this case, I'll listen to you. 
If you lose, you're banished from all dwarven lands. How does he imagine that losing to him ensures more time to be listened to? Like, this just sounds like he's doing the Cartman thing again. Actually, I, I won, and I got what I wanted. Yes, it's it's mm -hmm. kind of a no-lose scenario, so obviously if he won, which he must have known he wouldn't have won in the end. I, I think that's the admission when he said he admits that he was winded, so he knew he, he couldn't realistically have won. Um, and then you have the line after that says, well, can I, can you at least escort me to the exit? So I, I think that does sort of work in, it's not done particularly well. I think it does make some kind of sense though. Like he, he went in knowing he was probably going to lose, but it was an opportunity at least for him to get Durin's ear while he was led to the exit. Of course that all falls apart if Durin says, no, fuck off. I'm not leading you there. But we, we sort of forgive that, I guess. Um, I think there is an, uh, uh, words, an element of sense in it. What becomes a little bit more tricky is that Elrond has effectively lied to Durin every single time they've spoken at this point. So he turns up and he says, I need your help. And Durin complains that they haven't seen each other for 20 years. And so Elrond backtracks and says, I came because 20 years is too long to be away from a friend. And then it turns out he's pivoted back to, I need your help. And by the way, I came to you under false pretenses, even though I couldn't have known that, because I was really after the Mithril. My people are going to die, even though they're not going to die. And now I'm telling you that the competition I invited, I deliberately lost. Every single exchange, in other words, is essentially led to a lie of some kind on Elrond's like, part. So if I were Durin, I would never This is downright in character for this person at this point. He constantly yeah. makes shit up. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, if Elrond told me the sky was blue, I would fucking check. <laughs> yep. Can we be sure about this? I don't think so. <laughs> like, you might believe it right until you have me. the magic power <laughs> to make it not be blue anymore because you said it was. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, I should probably address, by the way, this this is them digging. They are digging because uh, Durin has forbade it, but uh, they can try and maybe do it themselves and get access to that mithril, which we find out. Even a thimble of that stuff would make a hell of a difference, any amount they can grab. And, um, you know, which is just kind of interesting to think about, because they don't, they don't manage to pull that off. But uh, when digging, they actually crack through and they find a huge deposit of this stuff, like a huge vein. Um, a whole bunch. The only thing about it that I wonder is, like, you know you're getting caught, right? And it's like, yeah, the plan is that if they can show the king that they've found a bunch of mithril and they managed to mine it without everything falling apart, that he would be partial to that. When that wasn't, like, if you remember, his closing argument was, the elves dying, fucking let them. Like, it, it wasn't no, well, like, it, like, that, it's that almost was like he's are... using this to get back at them for something. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, Durin's trying to counter the point of, like, it's dangerous. When it's like, oh, you already did that. You said, I'm not gonna let my friends die just because something's dangerous. And then the king countered that with, they're like, they're meant to die. I don't think finding no, a mithril are... vein's gonna change that. Deezer went further than that because she said, like, we can force his hand by essentially getting the other people on our side. Like, this will be great for the Dwarven Kingdom. And so oh, they think, will turn against the king. Like a civil war sort of thing. Or... Well, yeah, I think it was like pressure, essentially. That if everyone's like, this will be great for us, then he wouldn't dare go against them. Well, because he's, <laughs> well, he still does. <laughs> like... <laughs> Well, yeah, but they, well, they didn't get the opportunity to I guess talk to anyone so, else. Yeah, at this like point. to mine it out. And I let think the that's what Deez is going to do next time. Oh, like in season two. Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, I the impression I got by the time we hit the end of this plotline of season one is that they intend to possibly depose the king at this point. I don't know what's going to happen with that exactly, but yeah, uh, Durin wise. catches them, the king, and he says, "Right, elf, you're banished." And Durin, I'm going to have a chat with you. And I was just like, "Whoa." Consequences. <laughs> you still see Elrod that that actually, often. yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's but uh, you know, Elrod, he managed to sneak out some mithril with him. Mithril. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Quite a and it's just like, uh, how did uh, you do uh, that? Uh, how did they let that happen? It's in your fucking hand. It's in his weird. hand. It's literally in his hand. This is so significant as well. Yeah, it's the, not like a this, minor thing. <laughs> I don't. I don't care about flashing forward for a second. This creates the three rings of power for the elves. This, like, this little thing here. Because <laughs> nobody checked. Nobody they just checked. Walk out with it. Unreal. <laughs> just... And also, when you find out that that creates the rings and that solves everything, it makes everything that's happened with the dwarves entirely pointless. Like all the <laughs> stuff about the Mithril, all the mm -hmm. time we spent with them was all. It's like the Harfoots. They don't go anywhere, doesn't contribute to the story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a time. dead end. 
Oh god, yeah, the yeah. amount of time wasting we've had in this season is unreal. It's um, all of Yeah. Well, you know what? It'll speed up in season two, I'm sure of it, which means it'll get historically worse, I imagine. <laughs> oh, um, you heard what this today, right? Or yesterday. There was an article that the Sauron's gonna be like Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> that shit him. is priceless and, what the fuck do you mean Walter White <laughs> and they compared the first season to like Batman Begins and next season's gonna be like Dark Knight like oh my comparing... god <laughs> so they essentially admit in a paragraph they're like well all the things you wanted to happen in the first season are gonna happen in the second it's like what you just and they're all it's gonna be more canonical I'm like, I can't believe they're saying this out loud. Like, these guys are idiots. They're freaking idiots. Did you? Um... I am not Walter the Gray. I am Walter the White. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've told, I told us about the, the, the Dog Strange 2 video, right? But, like, the amount of comments said by the actors or the people who make this stuff that makes everything worse. We had one instance recently. Uh, Gary, did you see what Patty Considine said about the series and his, his journey so far in House of the Dragon? Have you seen any of that? I've seen some of it. I've seen just the like, a, you like yeah, from George like extendedly explained like a lot of inspiration for the portrayal of the role was how he saw his own. Uh, it was either his mother or his grandmother how she deteriorated over time because of uh, diabetes and stuff. He was mm -hmm. saying how uh, when a person like loses parts of themselves, they still try their best to sort of be involved, and you still see parts of them within them, and that he wanted to bring that level of humanity to the series, and that he was so thankful they allowed him to. And I was just like, holy shit. This is like, yeah, really. Um, he said he was talking about how, as well, that like, um, in his last moments, he just wanted to make sure he could do everything he could, like, put everything into, like, he was hanging on for them and stuff. And I was just like, this is not only references that can be supported by the show, but it's stuff that maybe some people didn't pick up on and can benefit from. Compare that to all this other shit, like, patently evil or super toxic people that need to be put in their place. It's like, shut the fuck up. Talk about the characters. Oh, wait, you can't, because nobody knows what the characters are in this fucking show. I don't fucking have any. They're all, they're all dumb they assholes. The, morons. Complete morons. And, like, when you get to the end, like, just pick a character. Pick any main character and follow their quote-unquote through line from beginning to end and tell me where any of it makes sense. It's all contrived events that just happen for the sake of the script that lead to next contrived event of, you know, random occurrences. You know, oh, the, I just tossed this mithril right next to the leaf and it happened to kill the cancer in the leaf and then I tossed the leaf down to the bottom and, oh, there's a freaking... <laughs> There's a Balrog down there, supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, hibernating, but apparently he's just awake down there, like, well, kind of... Well, a, a leaf, dude, that would sell off anybody. Totally. No, it's it's really um, it's, it's the worst. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's worse than Star Trek Discovery. I know you guys didn't watch it, but, like, it's... <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad. Gladly no... dodged that one. I oh, actually did watch that. that and I didn't think there would be a worse female lead on screen than Michael Burnham. But since then, since then uh -huh. we've had She-Hulk and Galadriel in the same months. So that's been impressive. Yeah. And they both I ended. But, yeah. Well, She-Hulk hasn't ended for us until next week. So uh, <laughs> that's when we're covering it. But we'll tackle well, that when we get to it. Um, oof. Yeah, I know. That last episode is something else. Uh, Dude. That article that came out too. The badly evil one? Oh, no, wait, the Toxic Man one, right? Toxic the one, the, the fuck you to the Marvel fans. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was, really, yeah. that's an excellent look. Just top notch. Top, they really yep. know what they're doing. They, they, they actually did. outdid Patently Evil. <laughs> they, I didn't think they could, but I'm not, they did. I'm not sure that outdoes Patently Evil, dude. <laughs> like calling me Patently Evil or saying fuck you. I, I thought Evie, I thought the evil one was worse, but no, I mean, it's going back to that point earlier. It's, it's a really useful counterexample. You get Paddy Considine, who clearly puts lots of thought into depicting this character and what the character actually means. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have Tatiana Maslany saying, yeah, well, we all know that no one likes female superheroes, so <laughs> fuck you guys. And she's, oh, it's just a given. That? Oh my god. Even though... Yeah. Yeah. Even though Marvel have been playing catch up to Wonder Woman since 2017, like right? they realized everyone liked that. Like it's like, oof, rip, nonsense, bullshit. You just I was mentioning Violet and Elastigirl, and she even oh, made yeah, a comment course. about it's really difficult for female superheroes to even take up space in this universe. I'm like, you do realize that's not an original creation, and she's 
been in the Don't comics for a long, long it's, time. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's so annoying to me because they only started trying to focus giving like women uh, the solo films when they were like, wait, this is viable? I thought it wasn't. And it's like, no, you, you can. <laughs> like, no, it's just, it's purely, it's just coincidentally, it, 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 it's, or it's not a coincidence, it just happens to align with our values now. Mm -hmm. Right. Fucking annoying. This is what we thought all along. Prete yeah, pretending like they've been this way the whole time or something. Like, oh, we've never made oh, women movies because you guys hate them all or something. It's like, no. <laughs> you never wanted to. And it, it, it's not like Wonder Woman was the first, like, the, as in the 2017 movie, was the first female-led superhero thing that people enjoyed. Gosh. Whatever, anyway. <laughs> Back then to... How do you uh, explain... How do you explain Elektra? Uh, that was just a bad movie, I think. <laughs> you just hate women. I do. They get a, they get everywhere. Based in the <laughs> game. <Yeah. man. laughs> uh, yeah. So King Durin is like, you were a shitty baby, and then I made sure you were okay because I'm nice. I put you next to fire, and it made you better. And I was like, oh man, you're gonna be king someday. It's gonna be great. And then uh durin is like what how am i gonna do any of that cool awesome good leader stuff if you're gonna stop me at every single time i try to do anything and like the conversation seems to be doing going somewhere that i guess i would call vaguely interesting but then i mm. guess durin says uh i like elrond as much as i would like anybody like a brother he, he could have been fired in the womb of my own mother or something uh, uh which is like Calm down, man. You not only Which did he is, abandon you uh, for two decades, but you've known him for very little. Like you, you seem to not know him at all, really. Do you feel this way about people you've known for just a week? God, um, the entire conversation comes across as like a, a whiny thirteen-year-old mm -hmm. complaining to his parents. Yeah, like about his true love that he's known for a couple days. You're like, right, this is the one. This is the one. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and the dad just is like, how dare you compare him to that, bringing your mother into this. Fuck you, you shitty person. And then he's like, no, fuck you, you're a shitty person. I found that line kind of strange. I, I wouldn't have read that as this is dragging your mother down so much as it is lifting Elrond up. I guess you know, it, it, that's how a family I, I is by elves. Way, which is strange to me. Which implies that he just fucking hates elves. Yeah, which, which they haven't given us much context for. We just have to go with it. It's like, exactly. all right. And if if his dad was like super racist against elves, and elves were super racist against dwarves, and they didn't get along because whatever reason, first off, it would be more reason to bring up the whole we col collaborated on a tower thing. Exactly. But also, like, what happened? Why? Why do you hate elves so much? I mean, w I mean, we're all there at this point. But why do you hate elves? Right? We all have our reasons. Like why? Why do you have so much distress? Why do you do you hate? Is it Elrond personally because he's a lying, conniving bitch, or is it because you just don't like elves in general? What's going on? Well, we don't get these insights into why people feel the things that they feel. Yeah, and then he's like, "You're you, you lose your uh, your neck thing. He's wearing like a little neck neck thing, and he and dad takes it off him and says, "You don't deserve that anymore." I don't know what that means in terms of. During the role, I guess he's not got any political power in the minds anymore. I thought he'd like disowned him. Yeah, I thought yeah, like disinherited. But it, well, the thing is, like he he's still he, hanging out, right? Like we see him later. Yeah, that's it. Makes no, I, I read that as kind of are they, are they saying that he's no longer the heir? For example, that's but, what I think. That's what I thought. I, yeah. I took but, that as this is like the proto crown, like the next in line wears the the king right. collar. It just, it's just inconvenient that the first time anyone really even noticed the collar was when it was taken off of him, so we have no idea what it is or what it symbolizes. Yeah, I, I was actually going to bring that up. Are. When he took it off, I was like, is that a significant thing? Like, oh, it is. Yeah, okay. I just thought it was something. Not quite like a crown, is it? You'd expect maybe he has like a smaller crown. Yeah, or a, some... I'll always recognize a crown. You're the only person wearing the crown. But that collar is like, that just be the dwarven attire. That, should, that could just be in vogue underneath the mountain right now. I don't yeah. know. So anyway, Poppy's eating food. I learned her name recently. Proud of myself. I've always been known as the fat <laughs> one, but now. <laughs> I take a lot of pride that it only took me a whole season to figure out what even her name was. Poppy uh, Proud Fellow. Uh, yeah, she's... Poppy she's... Proud Fellow. Poppy Round Fellow. <laughs> Females. Yeah, he's... We, uh, we find out that uh, Totally Not Gandalf has fixed the whole orchard, I guess. It's all growing back. Loads of wonderful fruits and vegetables. I don't even know. Um... And it was just, 
there's a little thing about this a little bit weird. Like, they are packing oh. up the entire thing, ready to move on, I guess. And it's like, okay, there's, what, an estimate of about 30 of you guys? Right? They're Maybe not leaving, right? 20, 30? I don't, I don't know. But, like, they pluck all of it. And it's just like, I don't think you're going to be able to eat this in time. And that's going to keep for what? Like, a week at most? Maybe even less? Mm -hmm. That's that's pushing it. Without refrigeration and just baskets, that's really pushing it. Yeah. Like a couple days. But they maybe. treat this as though it is going to become an, like a supply that will last them forever. And it's like, no. This is you all... want to leave that on the tree, sort of, until you're ready to yeah. probably harvest it. Unless you have people just, re just roasting it and salting everything. I don't know if you can salt fruits. That probably tastes really shit, but they just, I don't know. He's doing this montage where they're like, they're fucking ecstatic that they've got this huge supply, but it's like, it's not gonna... If you pick it all, it's gonna go bad. Yeah, I don't know. Fine, whatever. The, the, there's a reason for this that goes beyond any of that. The, the, we're supposed to present this as really positive because a real negative is coming, okay? Set you up to really make you sad. They spot tracks. I think they think it's, it's just a footstep. It's not even... Uh, I don't even know what it would be, they would assume it is. They'd find a footstep anyway. Just, just, just a footstep. Was, was, it, was it, yeah, because I was going to say, it wouldn't belong to the creepy demon people, right? Because they're behind. Um, I think it's meant to. Yeah, I thought it did. Oh, okay. If it is them, then yeah, fair enough. Well, the, and right. Why didn't she take this with her? The, the, the whole I don't know. She drops her bucket, bucket for no reason at all. <laughs> it's like, you it, can't carry it that. It literally leaves a sign that yeah. they're supposed to be great at hiding. She's that terrified, is that she she drops the bucket immediately because that's how it's supposed to show how concerned and worried she is. So mm -hmm. Fuck the bucket. Fuck I it. Mean, I, I, I to... thought them hiding was like a reflex like animals do. They that they always have a built-in response. Mm -hmm. So they shouldn't really panic when it comes to it. I wish they would freeze like the goats and just go like stiff. They would get paralyzed and just wobble <laughs> over. <laughs> the vision is based on movement. <laughs> yeah, whenever they surprise, they just all f they just get paralyzed. Uh, um, so the creepy creepy demon people go find the flower that came out of the the ashen tree the the not Gandalf made, and like Nori sees them and they're clearly. So, I don't know how this works, but one of them just points to the distance and they all start heading over there as if to imply yeah. they can track Gandalf like perfectly. I don't know how, they just do. I, I, th I thought the reason, because they, they're pointing and they're going to the village which, which Gandalf has left, so that's the reason obviously that Nori jumps out and tries to no, misdirect them. Before that, I'm suggesting I don't know how they can track him, but they just can. Like, magic, oh. I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. No reference to that in the show. Maybe that little staff that they have is a homing device. Which we can just... makes me wonder why they needed to go to that tree first. Shouldn't they just take them directly to? Maybe it was on the way. Maybe it tracks all of his Maybe. movements. But it yeah, anyway, very like it was on the way. They were headed into the tree area, and they just happened to cross by the stream. So anyway, Nori is like, "Hey, whoa, idiots! He's he's going the other way, not that way, fools!" <laughs> and I guess she was just trying to trick them. And so one of them takes an acorn out of her hair, which is just like, why? <laughs> and then in response to that, her dad is like, I'm gonna get you with my fire. You best not harm a hair on her foot. She's like, why? Why? <laughs> why? You have a head foot. of hair as well. I... They have big... No, their feet are more important. That's why the foot stabbing happens later. <laughs> if... You know how if you stab... It's like if you stab someone in the thigh, it could cause internal bleeding because of how big the you know blood vessels and everything. That's what it is for Harfoots, actually. If you stab in the foot, almost certain death. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Harfoot dad fails to remember fire is cold in this universe. Yes. So it doesn't do anything. Cool. This See? is like the fifth instance of fire not being hot. <laughs> fire just isn't fire anymore. <laughs> Except for what it is. I we need to recognize, however, it, it's, it's a normal thing for every other show, but we need to recognize that this is a father concerned with his daughter's safety and actually kind of does something about it. Oh, I guess so. Um, totally The thing is, that, that guy has been know. mostly okay. He's like the one he's half that actually gets yeah. away with all of the bullshit because he never suggested to leave anyone behind. He doesn't seem like he would. Yeah, he seems to be worried. He had that one good conversation with his wife in the cart. Um, he's been generally okay, uh, what little we've gotten of him. A little bit cringe, but, you know, that's okay. You, you can be a little... 
Is I'm, he a little his creep? biggest problem is the Stockholm syndrome. That he knows these people want to murder him and leave him, and he's still like desperate to catch up to him all the time. <laughs> he's got no other <laughs> friends. Okay. <laughs> We get the cringe line later. Yeah, yeah the cringe later. line will be next episode. Uh, oh, anyway, okay. in response to this, the creepy demon people just set all of their stuff on fire. All of their uh, precious, precious apples and resources. See, and that's why we we had the montage of them being super happy about getting it all. And I was like, oh no, it's all gone. Um, this, this why wouldn't they just burn the people? Also, well, so I was thinking, is, why are, why is no one in bed asleep at this time? It's it's night time. I they thought not that's sleep what in their little... the implication was because some of them are like screaming, like like this. And I thought, oh shit, is there like people? Yeah. Some people in there? They're being cooked alive, but no. But no, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's just the apples. And I I, I hesitate to say just right. I understand it's shelter and it's food, but something I wonder about these demon people were they like, okay, so we want to kill them, right? And then it's like, no, we wouldn't want to do something so harsh. It's like, what should we do? It's like. Burn all of this stuff. <laughs> like that's a bit. I just kill so them. So you're just, you're just evil. Yeah. But you, like you, you fuck with them. You want them to starve, or you want to destroy all their possessions but not kill them. Feels really weird to me that they decided to set all of their shit on fire and that's it. Yeah. Really feels like they were just being petty. Like yeah, well, fuck your shit. <laughs> like go away. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, these people are obviously just pure evil. Uh, we get that confirmed in the form of this skeleton moth thing that happens next episode. This is going to be a weird thing to talk about. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're just assholes, and I think that's the point of this scene, to be like, see, look how mean they are. The Harvards are nice. They did that. How horrible. And it's like, Harvards aren't that yeah. nice, though. But Harvards would never do anything <laughs> cruel to someone else. Right? I thought it was perfect. <laughs> it would never burn. be cruel. Top is down. So, oh, back to the Numenorean camp. So this is the first oh. time we've even seen it, by the way. I guess it got yeah. set up at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Sometime, yeah. I, I guess at some point they set up a camp, even though, as far as we know, you've literally had no time to do so. You I'm rode actually, in on your horse. Yeah, logistically, like, when would this have been done? I guess after they defeated Adar and before the volcano <laughs> erupted? It is... After they captured all the horses that they couldn't have brought across the fucking ocean. <laughs> no, no, we established in the last video they flat packed the horses, so that was fine. Or okay, the giant Isn't net it, plan that I had, fire. put the net at the back of the ship and just throw them all into the net. Doesn't matter if they drown. Yeah. We'll give them CPR when we get them to land. We'll just the strongest will survive. <laughs> horses is this, this place is um this is within sight of the ocean, isn't it? So like my guess would be they landed, they left some people behind by the shore, and they built this place There's whilst like, the rest of them rode off. Like one guy but, with a series of Ikea oh, packages. Sure. Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> Earlier, <laughs> and they had over a giant mountain range before they got into the Southlands, too. Oh, so, yeah. well, so near the, the mistake right. you're making there, Gary, is that it turns out actually every significant place is right next to everything. Okay. <laughs> I paid attention to the map. That was my mistake. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't that great nope. that they show you the map constantly and they don't pay attention to it at all? It's like, why'd you even have yeah. that there? <laughs> you reminding us how much you don't care about how anything works. Remember in the Lord of the Rings, they went on like a journey? No, no. Fuck that. No. Fuck uh, trap these days. Am I right? Right. You want to go to. Ugh. Yeah, it's sealed those horses running amok, and and you know, land deals like, ah, oh, I'll sort it out. And then the other guy is like, you can't. As if to imply, Isildur's the only one that can speak horse to this horse. And it's like, didn't Isildur it's, um... ride that horse for five minutes? Yeah. I think they say it bonds with you during battle. I... It's, five it's minutes battle. Did... His is first move excuse? was to jump off it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's their excuse to do the Aragorn thing, though. That, that's yeah. all they're doing, is just, well, we saw Arag Aragorn tame his horse, and the horse was loyal to him, and it went to rescue him when everyone thought he was dead. So, yay, we, we get a reference, I suppose. You would just think like that a war horses are trained to be, you know, disciplined and that sort of thing, because horses are dumb, skittish creatures. So, just because you're... you're... Your your guy gets lost and your horse has PTSD. You're like I don't know, man. I feel like that wouldn't really happen that much. I just, the I, horse you, is bonded. I, they'd, probably, they'd probably kill it and just eat it. They're not half. A... <laughs> <laughs> but that's like, like, well, Alendil was the one. Watery. Alenda was the one who spoke about the horse bond, so she should know that if this horse oh, is yeah. acting like this, it could be a sign that my son is alive. No, well, he doesn't he care about his son. It. We already went over this. He doesn't give a fuck about his son for some reason. <laughs> he yeah. just, like, yeah, he's just giving up on him. 
left. Remember, he left the village without looking for his son. So did so did Bronwyn. He didn't even look <laughs> for his <laughs> queen. No, oh yeah, you're right. Look, Bronwyn just fucked yeah, off Bronwyn too. Also yeah, just I'd do. Yeah. Oh, just um, recapitulating. The, the horse cares more about his son than he does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's some writing. Yep. Although he does say my favorite line: "We should have left the elf in the sea." <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting to that. That shit's so. Yeah, no, you passed it. That's before this. Is after it's it. It's the horse, horse scene. Emotionally no, it's during thing. the horse scene, isn't it? Is it? I thought he says it to Muriel. He says it to Muriel. No, no, well, well, no, he we'll... says it to himself. Oh, that okay. you, you, I think you're right. Yeah, I remember there being a smaller reference, and then he's like way more overt about it. Um, well, uh, I'll grab it in a sec. I just didn't see it, but I was just gonna say because you just reminded me. Yeah. He thinks, uh, uh, Theo thinks that Bronwyn's dead, and then she's, like, right behind him, like, I'm fine, and it's so funny, because it's like, did they forget she lost, like, all of her blood hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> they just, do they know the, the time replaced it? Replaced it? She's, really like, perfectly death. fine now. She's back up to full strength. It's like, you were, you were, like, hobbling around when the volcano went off, and now you want me to believe it healed you? Is that how that works? <laughs> the volcano, like, if you're a main character, it'll give you health. That, that, that was, oil is amazing. Okay. Yep. It was like a full body cauterization. Yep. It feels Gosh. like it's worth emphasizing the eruption of Mount Doom. Like, look at the damage it caused. Like, nothing. Like, fuck all. Like, most people survived. It could, well, do you think? They out better. They panned around the room. There was a guy who lost his leg. There's some people like screaming and stuff. It just it didn't do anything to the main characters. All the other no, people got all annihilated. All the main characters are safe. Like, yeah. Oh, Muriel lost her sight. I guess there you go. Yeah, there's that. I don't know. Yeah, how. But not to the volcano. Not, not to the volcano. The you're right. Yeah, yeah. She lost it to a no, house. To the house. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see <laughs> <him. The laughs> I don't know how she's blind. Her eyes look great. I think she's faking it. Probably is. She just wants to go home. She just wants to go home. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, maybe um, that I missed something, but most of them have been on foot, and they've been walking from not too far away from the volcano to this camp, and <laughs> which they've already arrived, where the skies are clear and blue, and there yep. is no sign or symptom of, of what just happened at all. So how far have they actually come? And in how I don't long? know. I have no, no idea. Clue. 3,000 miles. <laughs> 3 billion <laughs> they rode, miles. They rode for six days without sleep, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've escaped Oh, the... well, we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's not even that far away, actually, because we're, we're coming no, to the end of the episode. Bad. I wouldn't say we're, we're nearing it. But, yeah, Lendil says, time, um, in an hour's time, we can leave to go back to Numenor. And it's just like, wow. Um, holy what? shit, man. After all that, you just gotta all leave. These, really. All these people who are, like, in agony and this absolute calamity. And you don't even know if you found everyone yet. And you're just like, we're going, fuck this, out. Yeah, That's like... Cool. Absolutely You've fuck both of these characters for this day? decision. Seriously. They've been here for, like, literally three days. Haven't they, right? Like, no, they it's got not even... there, it took them two days to get there. So it's like, you've been here for three days. Not only that, it's just that this is not the time to leave yet. You've got no, so you much have... work to do. If anything, you could not leave for even longer than you probably yeah. assumed at first. Like, there is a new realm of pain and horror that has been you're created welcome. before your very eyes. Which, let's be real, you guys fucked up. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is partly on you. And you're already leaving. Like it's too difficult. They really <laughs> fucked us up, yeah. Um, but they're gonna okay. be leaving soon, so you better hurry with that. And uh, when she arrives, Galadriel to have a chat with her. Uh, <laughs> you see a lead deal's face. Yeah. Holy shit! He is absolutely furious that she exists now. And it's like, dude, thanks for joining the team. It took you a while, but your reasoning <laughs> yep. isn't quite as sound as ours. I don't no. think. He's, uh, he, he blames Galadriel for all of this. I don't understand how. And she, she then blames herself for it, doesn't she? But then she's yeah. told, I think by Muriel, that it's not all of all her fault. That's, that's kind of true in the sense that it was, it was Muriel and Farazon who rescued random elf who they hated, yes. locked in prison. She broke out. There was another guy who they didn't know who was also imprisoned. Both of them have broken many laws. And as soon as she says give me an army to go to Middle-earth, they say, yeah, okay, fine. So, fine. actually, if, if there's fault amongst anyone here, it's probably the people who took that decision, because you're the most incompetent ruler of all the incompetent rulers there have ever been. Well, it's like we were asking in earlier episodes that were taking place in Numenor. If you went up to any of the people who seemed like they were really thrilled to go to Middle-earth, I'm like, do you guys know 
why you're leaving, why you're going to this war? Like, actually tell me, why are you going? Do you know anything about anything? Imagine being one of the people who said, I ain't fucking volunteering for this suicide mission of nonsense, and then a couple, couple, what, four, five, six days later, you're just chilling, you're playing a little Xbox, and you're like, oh, the guy's back, and you're like, oh, wh why are they back so early? What happened? Well, the queen is blind, we've lost th <laughs> two-thirds of our men, they're panicked, bloodied, and wounded, and they say they need help. Also, a volcano went off next to them. It's like, what oh. the fuck? <laughs> of what kind of place is Middle Earth? Jesus Christ. And not yeah, not too, too far ahead of ourselves, but like the guy we followed in the battle is the king. <laughs> He's the Veto. king of evil. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually Sauron. Could we have fucked up any worse? <laughs> By the way, How we want you to go back. possibly been more shit? <laughs> yeah, can we have reinforcements? It's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're never going to Middle Earth again. Also, you're fired. He's like, just let us know, what did you gain? They're like, okay, that that's going to be difficult to exploit, right? <laughs> we, uh, the list isn't very long. But yeah. The one thing we didn't want to happen. No, it's just... But then, there's some... There is a sort of world cockery that goes on next as well, though, because I, I think it's... Is it this scene where Bronwyn turns up and says... And she's talking about um, how they're going to move off to... I think it's Pelagir they mention. Yeah, um, just after this. Which is yeah. an old Numenorean settlement, as they describe it. Uh -huh. So, again, this 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 is... It was irritating when they first said that, well, we've not been to Middle-earth for decades, centuries even, and it's portrayed as, like, this is the first adventure in Middle-earth they were all going on together. And I and was annoyed at the time because, no, they should have been settled there for mm -hmm. eons anyway. Now it turns out they were, but apparently they just all cocked off at some stage. So Pelagir is just an empty old settlement. But if they used to be here, then they must have known a lot more about the place they were going to invade than they actually did know when they took the decision to invade. So I think they just name dropped it because, hey, it's the law. But yeah. I don't think they've actually understood what that entails for the world building stuff. Mm -mm. No, these uh, these are like it. I mean, it, it, uh, it if it looks like a duck, it cracks like a duck. These showrunners are inexperienced. They're morons. So they're even making like good right. Like Jennifer Hutchins worked on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but they make it look like she's uh, an eleventh grade writer who looks like that she shouldn't have been passed on to the next grade and maybe repeated tenth grade. <laughs> like that's how fucking bad this is. Uh, and you're right, like, th to bring that up, like, for one, they're all fighting for that town of, like, that shithole town of Hubbles, and they're like, wait, there's a there's an abandoned Numenorean yeah. colony? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gone to that yet, because I was going to say, not only is that town abandoned and shitty, there's holes underneath it everywhere, from all the caves the orcs dug, you don't even know how stable that ground is anymore, I know how gooey it is, remember when they graze on the orcs land, the, the fucking cows get black milk, I don't even... I don't even I don't know even, if we were going to develop what that. Is that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's just evil, just, gen just <laughs> evil generally milk. evil. I think, I think just it's like the tree goo. Bullshit. Yeah, the tree goo. It's it's. God, it's so fucking stupid. But yeah, they it's cow goo and tree goo. They showed us the citadel of fucking like records that uh, Muriel's dad like saved. Yeah. So you think we'd be curious about it and maybe go on that day's ride herself and learn a couple of things like some histories. Being a queen regent, you know, this is just an argument why women shouldn't be queen. Well, I mean, it that... would have been interesting for them to discover that there's an evil dark lord who's gathering powers in this location, and it's all mapped out. It's like, wow, that's all in that one place? Neat. <laughs> like, yeah. Mar she's marking people with a big M that looks like the mountain range <laughs> on the map. That's Sauron's gonna be called... like, if I put an S, they know it's Sauron. So I put an M for you know, I will put M. And somebody else will name the, the mm, land. For Mordor. Oh, we're actually mm -hmm. getting that soon. Oh, that wonderful thing. I can't wait for us to talk about that. <laughs> oh, God. I like it because of how clever it is, really. You know what? So, <laughs> speaking of cringe. Episode, I forgot about all the dumb things from the last episode. This yeah. Is, yeah right. <laughs> we're finally getting to the main to event you. soon. Uh, yeah, Muriel's like, woohoo, yay, we'll do it. We're going to come back. We're going to fight with you and the elves. It's going to be great. Captain, let us leave. And there's like this awkward silence. She's like, Captain? And he's having a moment. He's like having a cry. And it, I just love this for the awkwardness because she's, she's blind, right? So she's like, I, I got, hello. Hello. Got, <laughs> Galadriel has to say, Oh, he's well, over there. He's just crying. Galadriel is not blind. Yeah. So as you can see from this shot, Galadriel's looking at him. And you can imagine Galadriel's just like, oh, uh, Well, he, there. He's just, uh, give us. Did he lose his hearing and she <laughs> lost her sight? What happened? Oh, tragic. They were, they were all looking at him. 
Well, yeah, because even, even Muriel's looking at him. Looking at him. <laughs> yeah, like it's just funny because Muriel's the only one who's just like, guys, everyone's quiet. Hello, like, <laughs> what's what's going on? Is he here? Is he dead? Like, what what the fuck happened? And you just know that there would have been an awkward end to that scene, but they cut, they cut, so it's fine. Is Bronwyn there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's at the bottom. Heal- Shouldn't she be healing people who are no, like she, no, <laughs> Gary? She said no, they, she said all of our wounded, them. the she's bones have elf. been set and the wounds have been like bandaged or whatever. We're ready to leave. That's what she says. It's like fuck, you did that what? fast. Oh my god, is that good? Yeah, this not only like did she do it medi- fast, medieval era <laughs> medical. Yeah, an emergency and medical services, day. right? This is this is yeah, after a volcano hit them. Exactly. They have no resources, as far as we could tell. But in half a day, uh, you're good. Yeah, you're and there's no way that they go. they haven't found a sealed door, so we know that they haven't found everybody. Yeah, you haven't gone back to check, and you've abandoned them to death, I suppose. God, you guys are all legendary, and it's like, yeah, well, we found a Numenorian outpost that seems to be abandoned, has good land, good fortifications, and good people there. It's like, what the- why the fuck did you go there the whole time? Where was a few episodes ago, during the orc invasion? Did you just suddenly invent this because the season's over? It's just like, there's just this awesome place we're gonna go to now, bye. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, toodles. I, I this, it's God. actually a really good thing. Uh, if they end up the going to this place in season two and it's like a castle or some shit, I'm going to be so pissed off. <laughs> like, It'll probably be some great We decided to f- defend does. a village that was holy and open on all sides instead of going to the castle with many resources. It turns, um, it turns into the main fortified port of Gondor. So, And it was pretty big when they first built it. So yeah, uh, it's it should be very well fortified and stocked Great. and defensible. There's a very good chance we'll have a new president by the time season two comes out. I mean, it's, you might be married with kids by the time season two comes out. So. <laughs> well, how many years do they yeah. say it's going to take? Like, I think it's, it's 2024, 20, 20, right? Two and, a half. Two, and a half. two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Fuck wow. me. Two and a half years per season, so we're going to get this shit for like... F- how long is that? So 12 and a half years? Over a de- it's going to be about a decade. Yeah. By the it's, time it's, it's, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. No. You just start. Pick, my goodness. Flash forward. Well, the there's some job old. security for you right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little bit. So oh, they just started filming season two, right? Yeah. Yes, right. they have. And, and, and that's probably going to take like a year. I could see that being the case. He said it's going to yeah, take like, a couple. The the showrunner said it's going to take a couple years. It sounds like they're retooling absolutely everything. I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. This is like a huge commitment in terms of the amount of money that's going into this. It needs to. Yeah, I mean, I'd be curious, great. right? Like, you would ask the yeah. question. You guys knew you were that, like, because they are committed to five seasons. Why weren't you filming back to back? Like. At least that's, back that's to a, back with like seasons point. one and two, three and four, and maybe five yeah. or so, or like or all of them separated. Really, by <laughs> massive amounts, stretches. It feels like it's going to well. cost them so much more money too by doing it that way. Um, it probably does, but I guess it's maybe like whatever their commitment is. The more stuff you film, the more locked in you are. The less you can you can change depending on how people respond. Depending on how to catastrophically it and... it's received. Yeah, and I think I think that's kind of I guess that's kind of the funny thing, right? Like for as much as you can have like press interviews where it's like, yeah, we don't really care. It's like, but you do though. Like things are changing. Like you you are you are maneuvering and changing because of the feedback because you know it's you're not happy with this outcome, surely. Like people aren't really, I don't know. I just don't see people talking about this show that much. And when it does come up, it's mostly negative. Like there's it, no way Yeah, it happy it's either negative or man, House of the Dragon's good though. Yeah. And of yep. course, you know, the, a big litmus test as well is, and it's going to be the same for She-Hulk, which, I mean, coincidentally, both of them ended this week. Is anybody going to be talking about them next week? Is anybody going to be talking about that great moment in Rings of Power next no. week? The yeah, only I, no, I don't think so. The only way somebody's talking about them is if they uh, tell us to fuck off again. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they might. All that. You know what? It's it would be really uh, funny if it's like, when's House of the Dragon season two? And they're like, oh, you know what? We're not sure. And then Rings of Power go, we're coming out in 2025. And then House of Dragon go, 2025. That's what we'll be out to. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> what date are you opening uh, Rings of Power? Oh, yeah, we'll be the week before. Yep, and we'll end the week after. Don't worry. We'll end the week after. It was such an own. It was great. It was. It, it comes across oh. as way too deliberate to me at this point. Like, it... Oh, no. No. Somebody oh. whipped out their Johnson on the table. So that was Power- great. Season two is filming in the UK and not New Zealand. Yeah, they've yeah. moved. 
uh is that because it's too expensive to shoot in the day so they're gonna go like into because i mean it means that anytime we see mountains like big mountain ranges is probably going to be visual effects right like there's no, no they're still filming some stuff down that they published when oh, they were filming like second unit stuff like filming landscapes or are they actually yeah, like doing any level of production there? Yeah, they yeah, abandoned the, 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 the they to Wikipedia, they're not going to New Zealand again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. no, they they did name there was a, a, a like one of the documents came out and they they named the three. One was in Edinburgh, one's in London, and one and they did mention New Zealand. They didn't name the, like the buildings or anything, it was just like the nations. Well, I figure it might be second unit, right? For like landscape shots and stuff. It's probably like drone like, footage. Day, You're not gonna yeah. have actors down there because of the COVID restrictions. They that they the they skyrocketed the cost to where even the tax breaks didn't even help. Uh, plus, plus Amazon was already building this massive studio that's going to have volume yeah, in so it. These yeah. huge investments for this show, like, and yet, I don't know. Dude, it's huge too. The building, I forgot the square footage. It's like, it's some ridiculous number. Like Just how big this show. That's, <laughs> when, uh, when wow. they build it. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. Uh, to Lord for... of the Rings and the Rings of Power, the the very well received, widely highly praised, <laughs> well regarded it. series. Totally. All right, so back with the Harfords, and uh, yeah. oh no, God. it it just it's the kind of thing. The scene begins. <laughs> oh no, like, God, not the Harfords! Every no. time you try and give it a chance, it just falls flat in his face immediately. So, uh, Nori's like sitting there, despondent, probably because of the fact that she feels partially guilty, at least for this, and the dad is like. Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. You're like, we need help. Let's get to work. And the mum says, "Don't lie to her. She's too old for that now." Like, what? What the it's fuck? <laughs> Tell her that things are shit and it's her fault and fuck yeah. off. I, 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 just sit on that. Just sit there and die. Is essentially all, all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Tell her to kill herself. What a, what a twat! <laughs> like, you know, you're trying to make your kid feel better, and then the mum is like, "Don't do that. Tell her the truth. The world is shit." <laughs> <laughs> we're all this shit, and we're Harfords. Oh, hell, all right. Jeez. The thing is, I guess, normally you'd get maybe one doomsayer character like that, and everyone else would be, you know, slap them and tell them to pull themselves together. But apparently almost all, this is the default mentality for the Harfords, because Lenny Henry yeah. says much the same thing. So oh, we're all going to die anyway. <laughs> this is just cry. what they do. We're all gonna die like, anyway. The moment something goes wrong, their default presumption is, well, Fingers we're fucked. Crossed. So eh, what's well, the point? Because, yeah, you're right. Uh, he follows up with saying, like, come on, Brandyfoot, give us some time to weep. And it's like, Jesus Christ, do not evoke a certain other uh, moment in a different movie that was way better than you. <laughs> like, I assume you guys all know what I'm referring to. But, yeah, um, no, yeah. that's not what he was saying. He wasn't saying, like, you're not allowed to have feelings. He was saying that it's going to be okay. <laughs> That's a hard yeah. rule. Well, yeah. You're not allowed like... to have feelings. <laughs> and it was like, suck it up and carry on. Like, solve the problem before you just like collapse on yourself. Yeah. It, it was great advice. And, well, and, and, and he's like, weeping? Is that all you think we have left in us? And once again, I'm like, fuck, you're having two different conversations. Nobody listening to each other. Like, what, what kind of response is that? When, when it's like, uh, let us have time to weep. And he's like, you think that's all we have left in us? Well, no, I just mean that right now, can we weep? Like, it's like, why is I'm switching between my favor of these characters based on how stupid the other one is? Like, oh, it's like, you're, you're that's the, good you're the writing. Core. Yes, that's how you get uh, intelligent <laughs> characters by making everyone around them stupid. Was it, wasn't it Drinker who said that they like they took either just random lines or what I'm thinking is lines from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and wrote them down on little pieces of paper? Yeah. And then darts at him and that's how they, they added wrote. a whole bunch of yeah, post it to them <laughs> yeah they have it's, no idea why any line is actually there they're just like hopefully this is coherent i don't know hard to jump the next episode but like i there's something actually worse in it than you have not seen what i have seen and it, and it was just a little scene and it was between elron and um guy ladry always is. and yeah <laughs> yeah oh how is it here? here how is it you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i remember the <laughs> <laughs> and then neither of them answer those questions. They they had the scene. It's like no, oh. he like nods as if, oh yeah, well played. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? True. <laughs> so <laughs> based and harfoot pilled. Yep. <laughs> so we get a little speech from the guy, and my god, this 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 set you off, Rags, I think, but it sets everybody off. Basically, they're like, you know, there is there are creatures out there. Some of them have their mines or their forests or their kingdoms, or whatever, like referencing all different kinds of races and stuff. And he's like, but Harfoots, 
we stay true to each other. That's what we do. It's like, what the fuck are you that? talking you about? Can you believe that? Can you believe that? After Once everything we've that, seen, that, really? My office is my house of lies. <laughs> the most backstabbing, cruel, callous, unfeeling, they malicious little fuckers. Their wheels. They contemplated stealing their wheels to you know, leave them to starve and toil. Like, you, know, you can quote me on this, but at least orcs will stab you in the front. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't even contemplate. She actually, like, she was telling him that he should do it. It's only because he was horrified. That they didn't actually happen. Yeah. She was more than willing to go down there to do it herself. It's well, just they're a horrible community. They yeah. they, they <laughs> don't stick together. They do the opposite of that. If you can't keep up, tough titties. Like see you later. See you in the afterlife. Like, it's, <laughs> but if you do one. keep up, we'll we'll make sure you can't. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. make sure we'll <laughs> laugh at your if ass. If you do keep up, we'll sabotage your efforts to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> And if you die, we will mock you. We will laugh at you, like the yeah. guy who got killed by bees. Yeah, we'll create chats <laughs> right. where we, and, and when you're starving to death, we'll, we'll surround you and watch you as the life fades from your eyes. Did they even double down on it in, in like a couple of seconds when one of them uses, unironically uses the line, "We've le we've left too many people behind." Yeah. Yep. No, <laughs> you you nobbled them and probably you them. engineered their demise amongst yourself. <laughs> it does make you wonder about those stories, like the bees. Yeah. It turns out they've just covered him in honey and stuff. <laughs> and they're like, they're 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 the ones got him pit. done. While he was just was leaping, they <laughs> throw a bee into his little <laughs> <laughs> Locked the door. Lock the, yeah, lock the door, barricaded. <laughs> That's why it was so funny. You just get those the fucked up imagery of like a really dark forest and these red eyes and they're feasting on one of their own and you're just like, oh Jesus, <laughs> the half it's run. Yeah, it's like the fucking basement from the road. <laughs> it's just terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah, he says we got we got that that fucking I think it's a trailer line. Why He's do like, you think Patty's so fat? They're fattening up Patty. It's yeah. the only explanation. We <laughs> poppy. <laughs> Poppy, whatever her fucking name is, <laughs> that one. If they're a bunch of little cannibals. That would make more sense. It would. I, I, honestly, I, I think they've given us enough Patty, information a candy. to infer that they are. I'm pretty sure are, we, you know. we know. But yeah, he says uh, you... we we got hearts bigger than our fate. That is such <laughs> fucking foolish. And he shit. looks into the camera. Yeah, He's <laughs> they're so proud of that line. Yeah, he, you're right. right. He does look right into the camera. Jeez, that's kind of creepy. Well, you, you imagine that like, that is weird. The, the why are, why is he looking at the camera? Like, yeah, we, yeah, I think it was meant to be impactful. That. Like be the, that's I think amazing. It was meant to be impactful. Yeah, like that oh. was a really cool line. Work out. <laughs> By that. No. <laughs> no, it didn't. The fine line, if this was in a good show, I'd be like, oh, that's cute. Instead, it's like, oh, you are a bastard. <laughs> so anyway, you're a liar. Uh, Nori decides from that inspiring speech she's going to go grab not Gandalf and warn him about the coming demon people, which is interesting because they're Perfect. ahead of you. They're way ahead of you, like a like, day ahead yeah, of like, you. You ain't going to be able to warn him of shit. Whatever's going to happen to him is happening to him. Yeah, you have to know where Wizard is. You have to know where mm. the cringe squad is. Yep. And you have to be able to get to there to fast up. enough to reach one without bumping into the other along the way. Yeah. And you're a Logistically, the and deck he's is... just like a full-grown man. He can presumably walk faster than you. Oh, twice so absolutely, he will. Yeah. They uh, even reference it, yeah. Like, you, you've you got big legs, you could walk fast. We can't. I think it's Sadak who says that. I just thought it was funny that he suggests this, and then uh, Sadak is like, going off trail now? As if to be like, this is it, this is it. Oh, she's going off trail, guys. She thought oh going gosh. off trail was bad, but she's gonna deliberately go off trail now. But she's not gonna go alone. Her friend's gonna come with her. Remember, it was yeah, nobody goes off trail, nobody together. walks alone. This is someone's going yeah. off trail, and oh, they're going with you're someone. You're not supposed to do that. It's we would great. never allow someone to do that. So, oh no. Yeah, Chungus says she'll go with her, and then the mum says, I'm going with them. And it's like, what? Why? Why? What are you gonna do? You guys have never done this before. You always abandon. What's going on? And then one of them is like, they're gonna need. Someone who knows how to track if they want to catch up fast. Sadok, you go with the them. trail finder, right? Yeah. So, so, like, so the dad is just going to let the mother of his children possibly. He doesn't. Very question. If you remember, his reaction God. to her saying, I'm going to go, is, Are you sure? It's not, No, I should go, or You shouldn't go. It's too dangerous. He just goes, Yeah, yeah okay, I guess. <laughs> it's like, What? 
Like, is he gonna go fight the fucking uncle? fire spewing demon people? And you're just like, well, good luck, love. Hope you're right. They have to have, they have, to have three girls to one guy. That's a pattern I've noticed in the show, by the way. Well, he gets uh, killed, so it's three girls to no guys. <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta make them expendable. They have to find a new a new red yes. shirt male <laughs> to yeah. fucking die. A man is the new red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> new red shirt. Uh, and the and the woman that suggests that he go is the one that said, I think we should go back there, take their wheels and write and kill them all. <laughs> yeah. go, yep. You know what? It'd be really wonderful if just once you weren't right all the time. Oh, like, I know. And yeah, then she looks so the... smug. Like, she's like, oh, thank you. It's, what? This is such a good idea, this thing that we're doing right now. Aren't we smart and correct for doing this? Yep. Yeah, this will end badly. It shouldn't Lenny Henry be suspicious that the woman who is literally five minutes ago advocated, you know, de-wheeling her comrades is, is essentially forcing him to go off on the adventure to tackle the fire breathing witches. Like, I, I would be thinking, hmm, yeah, but there's something I just can't believe here. that I, I legit, when I was watching, I was like, what's the plan, guys? You understand that they could annihilate all of you. What are you doing? What's, what are you going to, what's the plan? He's going to walk up to him and say, yeah. don't be mean. <laughs> they seem to have exploded all of your carts with the power of thought. I don't think that you need to be fighting them, your harvest. Yeah, what the I, fuck is... I feel like they're the outmatched. plan? Kill them yeah. with the body order. That's what I think. Kill them with kindness. Not that they have any, but... <laughs> no, but they have plenty of body order. So they can kill them with that. Yeah, they just put their feet on their face. Oh. Ah. Yeah. You can fucking imagine. By the way, Elfman has just fallen out of this story. He gets one moment here. He's just like, do you think the queen will come back? And Galadriel's like, I know she will. Elfman? Oh, Don Lemonless. Okay. He's, he, doesn't, has... he doesn't do anything in this episode, nor the next one. He's just kind of gone. Oh. Yeah, you forget about him and Bronwyn. Everyone wants to do that with all the characters. The just don't let it. Really, yeah. Oh, yeah. What the fuck's like, that? <laughs> well, they're in the tent. They just like meet up in the tent, all of our characters. Theo's like, oh, hi, mom. I'm oh, glad oh. you're not... Speaking yeah. of that, Rags, uh, in this conversation, he mentions, oh yeah, you know, by the way, uh, our, since our king is injured now, or whatever, and then, and then Gajra's like, wait, what, what, your king? He's like, oh, oh yeah, Halbrand, he's, he's, since last night, we grabbed him and been trying to heal him of a spear wound to his belly, he's in one of the tens. Sorry we didn't let you know that the king of man that you provided us, who is clearly one of your, like, closest friends, is currently dying, and it's <laughs> weird that you didn't ask any of us where he was. But okay, yeah, oh. now we're doing this. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what? In the, half of this episode with these characters is them playing catch-up with finding people. I yeah, can't, I, I, this was like a whole plot line that was put on pause. It was like, we can't do this yet, we gotta do some other stuff. Holbrand can be, literally be put on pause, and then we'll press play as soon as the queen leaves. It's so weird. You don't see stories run like this often. Absolute no. absurdity. Because Galadriel, if you remember, we were complaining about this near the beginning, right? She hears... Baby's screaming, and she's like, Hall Brad, a lead deal. And it's like, oh, she really cares about those characters. She found a lead deal. She gave up on Hall Brad, I guess. <laughs> it's and really look at the state of him. Like, he, that guy cannot get on a horse, <laughs> let alone ride anywhere he's after. Fine. He's got and like. Let alone ride for six days. Well, so here's the funnier thing. How did he get. Best. How did he get lanced in the belly by an orc when he was right next to all these people in that street? The volcano went off. Did he run away into the forest, get stabbed, and then run back? Well, well, well I assumed it was self-inflicted. I just, uh, I have no idea what, what they yeah, what how did imagine that happen? happened. I don't understand. When did you get stabbed? Were you not wearing armor there? I guess I went through your armor. So some people are saying he's faking it. So he gets surgery from elves. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but did he, did he stab himself? That's in order to be taken oh. to the elves, which is where he needs oh. to be to enact his master evil plan. Oh, because, but yeah, because Galadriel even says at one point something like, when he says thank you, she says, what, for bringing you here? So that's when she's kind of realizing... But that's, that's what kind of some... hilarious to think about if she had like, seen the yeah. wound and been like, yeah, that'll need a few stitches, you're gonna have to wait oh, here. I'm gonna go to uh, Eregion now, bye. <laughs> or something, be yeah. like... Some shills out there are saying that, like, everything, if you go back and watch, everything is part of Sauron's plan. Uh-huh. I'm just that saying, I, I feel like he couldn't have known. No, no, that's the thing. <laughs> that, no, I know that. It's, it's fucking insane, because if you go back and look at that, like, it would be impossible. It's I've actually mapped it out. I've got little notes on it. It's insane. This it's isn't a show for maps. 
all the time he's saying, I don't want to go back to Middle Earth, I just want to stay in Numenor and grill. Like, that's, it, it was all so part of his plan. Stupid. I'm just, How I'm, he... I'm now picturing, like, he walks over the horse, goes around the corner, grabs a spear, goes to himself, and he's like, ah, God damn it! okay, this should, this oh, should work Oh, I didn't even great. know that I was wounded. It must have been the adrenaline. And then, like, yeah. pulls out the spear, waddles over to them, hoping to get found, and he's like, I'm feeling a little bit. And he falls over and just dies from bleeding out. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I remember in ep in episode one, Arendir said that the elves don't even have medics. So right, I, d I don't even know why oh, they yeah, go they there. have Come back and check artificers. And that's what he said. Right, yeah. Yeah. They, they make beauty for the Weird soul because they don't need right. medics. So um, yeah, I guess that was the plan. He needs to go to the Region, so he's gonna. Fake a wound, quote unquote. I I still think it's hilarious that that means he would have sneaked off to just get himself stabbed by himself. Joel. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, you're a genius, Staron. <laughs> there was no way that he could have convinced uh, Galadriel to go there with her for any other reason, be it political or uh, anything else. It had to be that this is a fucking gamble. Wait. So, so this means that at this point in the story. How Brand doesn't want, so he doesn't want to be this. Hmm. I'm trying to think about his motivations and where he is, like his flipping point. Because I've not, not got a clue of. Out of concern for all of you, don't try to think about the logic of what is about to happen, like why he's going through a radio. <laughs> because it makes no fucking sense. It, what it, I was going to say is, as you've already pointed out, if you draw him all the way, way back right? to being in the Southlands and then going to the raft slash going to a ship and having it destroyed and ending up on a raft, we're already stuck. Like, why do you do that? Well, I think you have to think that he was being honest in Numenor when he said, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go there. You're dragging me back. I think all that has to be honest. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, literally nothing makes sense. Except that I, I just don't think that makes sense with what he later <laughs> goes on to say his motive. So I, I agree that that, that would... You could extrapolate from that and make more sense of what we've been given, except for the big reveal moment where he reveals what his actual intentions are. Uh -huh. Because that oh, doesn't. Yeah. I think his entire that. personality changes in that scene. Yeah. Yeah, because I, like the yeah. implication is that he has been actively Sauron this whole time, but he's just been kind of conflicted on what he wants to do next. Right. That's the idea. Yeah. By the time we hit the end, he wanted to be good, and then and he was like, "I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go be king of the Southlands. That's cool." But that doesn't mean he's evil. It just means that he wants to be king now, I guess. Well, so, uh, you know what? He wants to be evil. We'll cross that when at... we come to it, actually, because there's a whole speech he gives. Because we're, probably... we're nearly up. To yeah, the we're nearly at the end of the well. episode. Uh, okay. No, right. Galadriel's so like, cool. we're gonna, we're gonna go now, and Theo's like, hey, here's your sword back, and she's like, you can keep it, which is just the fuck. Why? No, That's your we're... sword. He could get a sword. <laughs> Whatever. You guys have been on such a journey of, you know. Two I like that she oh, didn't even well, help like, him out the tent down. just because. Just because she's so short, it would have looked absolutely ridiculous. Oh, you, yeah. Like, holding on for it. Oh, just, that's, that's, that's probably true. Because it's kind of amusing. He, he would, like, be bent over even uh, half his height, and he's still towering over her. <laughs> she's like... yeah, he'd have to, like, stand behind her with both hands on her shoulders or something. <laughs> but yeah, he's, uh, he's got this, like, seemingly almost fatal, presumably, wound that can only be healed by elven medicine. Elven, uh, human yeah. medicine's not good enough. So now they begin their horse journey all the way to a Regiard, which uh, you could take a guess <laughs> for how long that would take, but we find out next episode because time scene. jumps all the way over the road. And I'm, I'm not a medic, but surely bouncing up and down on a horse for six days and nights would tear your wound open. Mm -hmm. I imagine nah, it'll be fine. He favors. Yeah, yeah, you just want to put a lot of weight on your feet and on those stirrups so you don't... You know, Maybe he got a Bronwyn bandage. Well, he was hit by the volcano. It might have healed it. That's yeah, true. It's yeah. it. it's all fine now. It is a mysterious <laughs> volcano that can do many things. Cauterize the wound while simultaneously not frying your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> or just any other part of you. <sighs> and so, back to the mine. Disa's like, your dad is old. And super old and just, just so old. Stubborn. And Man, you, boy is he old. You're next up, so, you know, you're not old. So, how about, how about that? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. 
I don't know. She she seems to genuinely be coaxing him to depose his dad. Is the impression I'm getting. She goes full Sith Lord. She looks like your power. <laughs> like we we can mine all of it. Then we'll rule not only this place but every single mountain. Like she changes like, entirely. See, and if there yeah, was any like, justice, wow, Disa, I didn't know you had this in you. They wouldn't have the balls to do this. But if there were any justice, it would mean that when they finally activate the Balrog, it would eat her. It would like like she would be the character to suffer the most because she's the one that made all this happen, sort of thing. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't do that. I'm pretty sure they're like, "Yeah, Deesa's great, great." Yeah, the one rumor I've heard is like she's been corrupted by the Balrog, and that her singing is like communicating with it back and forth. Wow, she does. Sort of um, she does okay. have the, the yellow what? Sith eyes. Why so not? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Why not? Eyes, yeah. I think people are desperately trying to fill in plot holes. Yes, with things are. which are far better than what will either. It might actually get written in because they've read these stories and like, oh, they haven't thought about Twitter. that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> How do we explain these characters' behavior? That would be. I don't know. She sung to the Balrog. Fuck it. They probably have. That's definitely happened in the past. I'd imagine a writer has a look, see at what people are saying, and like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll poach from the yeah defenders of the show. One of them might have a decent idea. Well, uh, Patty Jenkins did it right. In defense of her rape scene, she was like, oh, no, yeah, it's a yeah. commentary on big. <laughs> Trust me. It's commentary on rape. Um, Wait. So, Durin Kingman uh, tosses the leaf through the little hole and says, seal it up, because he just doesn't care that the mithril's right there. He's like, nah, fuck that. And we follow the leaf all the way down until it lands and then singes up into a flame. And it's like, wait, what? What's going on there? And turns out, uh, as, as was based in the trailer... Which, by the way, was the entire footage of the Balrog in this season. They knew what they were doing with that one. Here he is! Oh gosh, because he almost chewed that up. Oh boy. So, it's a little bit confusing in terms of like, wait, was he just woken up? Or... Uh, no, evil doesn't sleep, it waits, remember? So he's just, waiting for someone and to, <laughs> he's just waiting for someone to dig a hole that he can go through then, isn't it? He, well, just, this is he the... just hates leaves. Okay. He's been sitting down there, he's been keeping it clean. And With now how evil... A fucking leaf on his floor, which he has to brush up. It's honestly, I mean... it's, it's so, it's so bloody uh, exploitative. Like, you could have, and also it, it presumes stupidity on the, on the uh, audience's part. Yeah. If you just had the leaf go down and catch fire, and maybe have a little growly noise, then you could say, okay, I mean, it's still irritating they're doing it, but at least they're sort of teasing us rather than actually just slapping it in our face. You get the, the other thing, I think, which, which we're coming on to to do with the name change. But it, you don't need to have this except for the, for the trailer footage. Just be a little bit more artful about the things you're exploiting. Could have just fallen into the dark abyss and, ooh, that's spooky. Who knows what could be down there? Yeah. I, I mean, at this ground. point... With how evil all the characters are, I'm full on that if they go down there, it's a home invasion and he has every right to defend his own property. I agree. <laughs> so I'm full of full Balrog. Balrog reading. It is difficult to sympathize with really anyone in this show, other than the Balrog, of course. Yeah. I just wanted to be left alone. I just wanted to grill everything around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh boy, what a mess. It's yeah. so, um, it, there's just, there's no cleverness. There's no uh, subtlety to it. It's like, fuck it, here's the Balrog. He's screaming at the camera. I'm like, yep, sure is, isn't he? That's, that, that is what he's doing. I remember the Balrog. Even, it's not even as though it's a build-up to anything, because we've now got two and a half years to wait. And I, I don't know that they'll even do the Balrog very early on in season two, in which case it is just yeah. here. It's only here to get the audience who are falling asleep by this point to sit up and, and take notice. That's that's the sole reason. And of course, for the trailer footage, that's it. Uh, and I, yeah, and I think it was just there for the they, we need it for the trailer footage. Where, where's a place where we can fit it in? Uh, kind of like that. Oh, that's the next episode. But um, that scene of uh, slim, uh, slim lady, like. When she gets knocked over, she looks up really quick, and it just looks like, oh, that was shot. Oh, yeah. That, like, that was so bad. Um, In time with the music. It, yeah. It, oh, God. Talk about how, it, how, how little I remember anything about the music in this series. It is extremely forgettable. And yet, at the same time, it's trying so hard. Yep. Well, it's a strange way to do it. Normally, for TV series and stuff, you would film it all and then you would get the artist to make the music for the scene and they would watch it and score it at the same time. 
Whereas in this, they've just got a load of tracks and they've desperately tried to force it into all the scenes, which is why yes. you keep hearing those same notes over and over and over again to the point where it gets annoying, in, especially in the first uh, two episodes. I'm hearing it in my sleep now. It's, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I think this Balrog moment, this is their, like, She-Hulk's Daredevil. It is li a little tease that we'll probably see right at the end, and they just think, well, this is what people want to see. So we're going to keep hinting at it. I don't even know how they're going to be able to do this, though. Like, because as soon as he starts running amok, like, that's going to cause major problems for all of the dwarves, right? Gandalf will fight him. Oh, oh, did they do that? <laughs> they could do that. Oh. oh my god, you're right. They might actually do that. Like, the, they're going to do the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. Oh. Actually, he fought Darth Vader twice. And you're you can right. already see the justification that they will use as well, which is that how did Gandalf automatically know in Moria that it was a Balrog that was after them? Well, now, now we know, be because... Oh. I'll just make some Boo. shit up. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. Um, which brings us to the climactic ending, which is glorious and totally not insanely <laughs> stupid and embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. Let, me, let me set this up for those who are not aware. You have Ada, mm -hmm. the legendary orc captain elf man, who's like, you know what, guys? We did it. This is great. Look at this place. Oh, it's ours now. And everyone's like, woohoo, Ada, you're, and you got a combination Yeah, of this is great. What a great day for orc kind. And, and orcs, they're all just like, Ada, you're a cool dude. Lord of the Southlands. Woohoo, yeah, Southlands. Yeah, right. Southlands. And yeah. Ada's like, Southlands? You know, this place... This place really... That's, that's a name for a different place. A place that doesn't exist anymore. And it's like, oh... Well, what is this place called then? And I think everybody on Earth was like, "Oh, is is Adar about? Is the camera going to zoom right into Adar and he's going to go? It's called Mordor." And we we're like, "Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no! He's you have to roll the R's like Mordor. annoying. I fucking hate Mordor. <laughs> I say like, rolling R's, cringe. Don't do it. Um, it would be what we would call a key jangle. However, they ask him what it's called, and he looks up, and they have a shot of Mount Doom and everything. And for a second, I was like. Are they going to leave it there? Are they not going to... That would be nice. Some then, level of then you see in the top left there, it says the Southlands in text. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> but it, it looks like Morrowind. Then, oh. it looks like then it that goes happens. Trans yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, film. Thank you. <laughs> Very much. Thank you so much. I would not have known that. Thank that is you. legit one of the stupidest fucking things. <laughs> Why? They, they, they did like they did the cringiest way possible. If Adar would have said it looking at the camera or whatever, Mordor, like that, that would have been would shit be and cringe. Yes. yes, that would be shit and cringe, but better than this. What? Why? This it's, stuff. It's... Executive producers, producers, industry professionals, professional editors, who were paid lots of money to change a font badly. Yeah, it's, not it's only like that, a, it, it feels like a preset. Thing. It looks like a preset thing that someone threw on. They were like, oh, that looks neat because it burns. Yeah, and then at what it. point later on when everyone automatically just comes and starts calling it Mordor again? So I assume they were all watching the show that they're in, She-Hulk style, in order yeah. to gain this information. But it's, it's like, it's, I don't know. I, signs. They put up signage. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. usually this dichotomy that's drawn people to assume that either the writers are dumb all the audience is dumb. I genuinely think yeah, that this her. is sort of both. It's it's written by people with an IQ of thirty for people with an IQ of fifteen, and the, the writers genuinely. Hey, in the land of the blind. Well, I don't think this was written like that. I think originally this was the scene because that looks like an editor added it in with very yeah. little time just at the back end. So I think it was meant to just go off to the volcano, and the the audience is meant to realize. But then, as they're editing it, someone went. What if they don't understand? It's fucking insane to <laughs> me because who it. cares if they didn't understand? It doesn't change anything in their understanding of the story. You can fucking call it Mordor in the first episode of season two. It'll be fine. You really... This was a fine opportunity for me to have actually complimented the show and been like, you held restraint. Good for you. But some fucking editor slapped his dick all over this fucking scene because he thought that nobody <laughs> would understand. He's like, you know, oh, Mordor's Mordor, really cool though. And I, I don't worry, guys. I'll make it real cool. I got this little birdie font. It looks so oh great. It's what? just so good. You'll you'll you'll, you'll yeah. I paid you twelve dollars so, to someone it's so on the lame. internet to use it. It's just so lame. I hope, Why would you... I hope we get road signs in season two. Welcome to Mordor. <laughs> Welcome to Mordor. <laughs> Population. I don't, I don't even know. Lots. 
I guess. Why Lots are these trees still on fire? Need? I don't know. Everything that dies. It's been like weeks at this point, surely. No, it's been uh, days, right? How long has it been? I don't even know. They all walked like. At least tens of miles to get out of the range, because we know the range is massive, because oh, yeah. they're half foots. And then they had to pack up their entire base, g get all on a boat, go back to, uh, okay. well, at least Genuinely, a significant way into the ocean. They, The writers could actually be in this call right now, and they'd be like, what do you mean, Disprove? That took place over half a day. And I'd be like, they probably believe that, dude. They probably believe that. They have no clue what's happening in this. Mm. The logistics, the geography is so embarrassingly bad that, like... I could believe they think that it's been an afternoon and that's it since the volcano exploded. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, how long has it been since the no first clue. episode to this one? I have no uh, a week. And I don't even know if months? the stories are lining up a year? in terms of all of the subplots. Like I have no idea if they line up at all. I don't know whether I'm like it's like where your brain makes images where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> but if you follow that plume of smoke at the top, that's not meant to be an eye, is it? Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, uh, hang on. Because it oh, looks like an eye, um, but I don't well, know if I'm making that. We already have the we have the eye staff that the Saren people have. I think you can interpret that. I think it's subtle, but yes, that looks like an eye. It does. They definitely they do a lot of eye stuff, especially in the last episode. Because it's Rackerson even shaped like a curved. Well, this episode was called the eye, right? Oh, it's true. Yeah, because yeah. she goes blind. So it's see, it's thematically like great because Sauron's eye, and also she's blind. It, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Beautiful. It's like poetry, it blinds. It oh. blinds. I gave you that one. <laughs> um, Alright, and that does that episode. We did it. And, and it only took three hours. Alright, next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before that, I think since it's, the, it's like a checkpoint of sorts, it's about time you let people know a, a oh great reality that is the case. It is linked oh my at the very top of the description, so some may already know What's about that? it. What's that? That would be oh well. You know God. what? Maybe you should talk about it. What am I talking about? Rags? Ah, you are talking about the launch of the Rags 2.0 plush. Yeah. Oh. oh my God! <clears throat> da, 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 da. Did you know that? Down. Yeah. Did you know that this is? Amazing. You can check it out at the link in the very top of the description. You should absolutely do that and take a look at all of these wonderful pieces of photography that show this new design where I'm laying down, I got my face, and, I, and, and what's that? I have a beer. I have alcatisms <laughs> because you know that I handle it very well. And it's I only the one beer. You'll deal. be fine. It's only the one. I will definitely be fine after a single beer. Of course. My little doggy body can absolutely take that much alcohol yeah. undoubtedly it makes the movies better I we need that, that more than ever these days it, it's really good I've, I've got the um they sent the of course the test one out and it is it is a velcro beer so if you want me uh sans alcohol then that is an option that you can explore and peruse at your whim but uh yeah it comes off you can attach it there and i hold it and i sit there and i'm just having a great time Having a great time watching Rings of Power, where where all's magical, all's right in the world. Uh, so beautiful. I we have um, but when you make sure that you know, uh, and and take take care to remember that if you use the code Rags R A G S, then uh, you will and, and for this weekend only, then you will get. I believe it's ten percent off. My God. Uh, so for yeah, it's a launch weekend, a little bit of a sale. And let me see, what was the 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 the, the arrangement with um, your plushies and mine? Was it well? How did, how did that work out exactly? Because um, the, 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 the separation of time. That out? Yeah, it was it was buying mine and fringies together. Got you ten percent off. Yours is going to be with the the code for the weekend, I presumably. Is, gotcha. Um, Excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, because my uh, my weekend code is just regs. It's just rags. It's the it's Pretty just easy a, to remember. a promotional yeah promotional launch weekend code that gets you ten percent off. Um, of course, Mahler and Fringy have already had theirs, and those are incredible. I cannot wait for them. Uh, this one just took a little bit longer to make and get just right and uh line look at up. how so, unique it is yeah, yeah he's totally very different, different. it looks amazing design yeah it, yeah, it, it is it looks great. Uh, 
I got it next to my other one. I'm I'm building a throne of ego over here, <laughs> and it, it looks very great uh, next to the other one. They're distinctly different. They got just a little bit of a difference to them, which I kind of like. They're not all exactly the same, but they uh, same character, just sort of a different imagining of it. Uh, I, I wanted to pick something that was really just near and dear to my heart, my character's heart. So Fringy has his goo. Mahler has his little cereal. Cookie crisp. <laughs> I have my beer. That's what I'm known for these days. Of course. But, I, uh, but yeah, check it out, please. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a really cool thing. It, Link it, in description. They did a really, really good job with it. Available for a limited amount of time. Code Rags gets you the 10% off, and I assume that runs out. Is it like Sunday night sort of thing? or? I believe it. Well, I don't know the exact time. It is for the first 48 hours. So as far as I know, then it will be for uh, until 1 p.m. Central on... Uh, I don't know, actually, when it actually cuts off. Oh. And because of that uncertainty, you should buy it immediately. Take advantage. Right well, yeah, now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab them soon. Do I not. I them because I'm buying more than one. Oh, my God. I have, I have nieces that enjoy it. It's, it is a very, very, um, it, it's, it's, it's very versatile in who you could give it to. You could give it to anyone. Old old guy. You could give it to people. You could give it to animals. You could give it to and aliens. See, when they're like, wait, but there's a beer bottle with it. Aren't they too young? And I'll be like, I'll just tell them it's ketchup. We'll catch them. Yes, <laughs> tell, them, tell them that it's... Uh, I had someone... I, I showed this to someone, and they said... They asked if it was... God, what was it? Something else. Not, 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 not alcotisms. But something else. I do like to be some Tabasco. It's mm. a, but it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, it is a sauce. sauce. It is a sauce. It's the sauce, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just say it's sauce. That's all you gotta say. It's just sauce, and you know what? It's it's Velcro and detachable. So if you wanted to give to someone who's under twenty one and cannot legally drink alcohol in the United States, then you just take it off. And then when they turn twenty one, you can give them the present, and it's a little Velcro beer bottle to complete the rags plushie that you gave them years and years ago. It still feels like crazy. That there's such a like three year difference between Britain and America for a... Yep. That is a that is an odd one, yes. You guys can come over three years earlier than when you're allowed to legally do it in your country. Well it wasn't always that way. There was certain like it was left to the states, right? And the, the different states had different oh, drinking yeah. then they made them all comply. You used to be able to go down to Tijuana and drink when you're sixteen. Long time oh, ago. Long time ago. Anna. But yes. Down. Grab it now. Link in description and possibly in chat here and there. We'll be uh, telling Please you about it, it yes. for as long as we can, obviously, until it runs out of time. You can't, uh, it's a 21, 22 day counter, I guess you'd say. Fucking it do it. begins today. Yeah, put it. You got to get this one to uh, match with your others, with, with your Fringy and your Maulers. Yeah, you, have right. to, you have to do it. You don't want me to be lonely. No. That would be a, a crime. Possibly racist. You can't. Oh, the, the elder horrors are fine. Dogs. Plague dogs are fine, but dogs aren't. It's like mm. not dogs. <laughs> that would be an interesting, an interesting statement of preferences. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, so dogs. it is time to break down oh. episode eight, the final fucker of Rings of Power. <laughs> Finally. Episode eight, and it's a long one. You know, yeah. <laughs> talking about that plush got me so excited. I have to pee, so I will be right back. Go right ahead. Uh, I will do that. I hope things will go well. You know, this one was cruel as well because they give you a scene before the intro and it made me think that I had seen the intro so I didn't have to watch it. And then I was like, oh, you <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, it's a weird scene. Uh, it's it, we, we get, like, strict confirmation that Gandalf has walked off and it's just like, we, we judge them on their other side. Like, why did Gandalf just feel the need to be like, yep, I definitely should abandon these people because I'm a threat. So, like, that's the idea, right? He considers himself threatening and that's a, da a danger and he shouldn't be around them. Even though both times he has hurt people, it, it has been them fucking with him. It's really annoying that just no character seems to recognize what the fuck is even happening in their lives, but whatever, he's still sad and he's run off. Good for him, I guess. But then... Um, he looks at his apple that was given to him by Nori, and he just, like, it starts playing flashbacks where she's like, You're not a peril. You're good. 
<laughs> I was just like, oh my god. Like, out. like they had to put that voiceover over uh, over because we're morons. Oh, dude, uh, they not only do it because we're morons, but it comes back later in what is one of the most embarrassing moments of the episode, which is a tough sell in terms of like, wait, that is? And it's like, well, there's a couple, but her saying you're good to him, it's really uh, important, you know? It'll It'll come back. <laughs> Yeah. And in every other scene, they try and sound like intellectual and deep, and then they just come out with that for a huge You're moment good. of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> was am back. laughing so hard. <laughs> How exciting. This so, is. something funny happens here. Pulls out his little apple, I guess with the intention to possibly eat it. Not sure. And uh, Jesus Christ, his fucking nails, dude. He's just sticking up his ass. He's, he's like, I'm a wizard. You want to see me make this apple disappear? Arr. He comes out of his mouth. And he just afterwards. sticks it up his ass in front of the Harfits. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he came and it's from a outer long space. labored process. And the only people he's met don't like wash. So, like, he probably doesn't even know what washing is at this point. That's true, actually, yeah. Uh, I don't even know. So he spots a short person, and he's like, oh my goodness, that's probably a Harfoot. Uh, where are you running off to? And this happens. I want to be specific with this, because I thought it was so funny. Right. Got it up on screen, you can see it. So you see this? He's like, oh, 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 and falls over. He's like, oh, he's tumbling. He's tumbling. Where's he gonna go? See him drop here, and it's like, there goes the apple. Very low amount oh of momentum. Oh my goodness, there it goes. Yeah, right in front of him. Very low momentum. And he's like, oh, jeez. Now, my assumption here is that... It's like a football. We chopped down some kind of larger scene, because he's like, oh, jeez, my apple. I best go pick that up. And as you just saw, that's gonna be what? Like a, maybe a foot in front of him. This is where it is. <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> he launched that fucker. One of the rocks it formed like a ramp. He's like Mariel coming out the house. And it just... <laughs> it just <laughs> fucked up. Are we supposed to interpret that as they're fucking with the apple with magic or some shit? Because I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Fast travel apple. They, um... I'm... Well, let's get to the part where the yeah the change happens because I'm wondering what's the point of it. Oh yeah, well so yeah for anybody who's like what what is happening here? It's um it's Nori who's running around and it's like Ooh. wait a minute why is Nori running around and she eventually stops and I was like oh you there friendly or friendly Roy Nori are you a pair? And then she does a creepy little like. Look at it! Look at it! Look at him! It's creepy. See, she's looking all dead-eyed. Blinks. Not because she's a Harfoot. Dun, dun, dun. This is yeah. what Harfoots are on the inside. I agree with yeah. that actually. Um, and they were very proud of themselves for this uh, changeover shit here. One, go. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I always find her amusing whenever I see this, this demon witch person. It's always funny looking. I think, I think it's because they wanted to be intimidated, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. It's Mam and Am. Uh, yeah, Fam and Am. Uh, Fam and Am, Super I scary. Am. Who am I? Slim lady. Um, oh yeah, and we learn in the scene that they're like, you are Lord Sauron, we worship you, woohoo. And he's like, whoa. And it's like, wait, but what was all that? What was the point of all that? What was the... I Why'd you steal my apple? Why'd you pretend to be someone who's a friend of mine? Why are you doing all of this if you just wanted to walk up to me and say, Hey man, we saved What's you. What's up? Yeah, I'm gonna totally real... bow to you. <laughs> oh, first impressions real... are important, so I'm gonna make our first impression Wait. be that I lied to you. <laughs> uh, now look at when they bow. Yeah. Uh, when Lady bows, like it looks like she's mounting something. She bows really strange. Uh, she walks like that too and the, like... In the whole thing, she walks like, kind of like <laughs> Spider Man in the seventies TV We're show. Just look weird tizzy like, people. Like they all mountain up, oh, cock right there. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Like she does not kneel. She like she goes looks like she's half frog. Like she, like slips the hip a little bit to the side. Like she's working she's something got, out. You know, she's got yeah. a couple of really funny moments in this episode. Uh, specifically, Gary. I don't know if you can see the thumbnail for this stream, but that part is hilarious. Uh, I can't wait for us to get to it. Hang on. We chose the thumbnail because I was just like, that part's too funny not to have in the thumbnail. There are so many great thumbnail moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit for years. Um, yeah, All right. Yeah. 
Got us the intro. Yeah, I just think it's a bizarre way for them to introduce themselves to Gandalf uh, when. Well, well yeah, because they're, they're supposed to be ambushing him, but they lead him off a road on his own onto another road so they can talk to him. The only reason that scene exists is so that you know she can shape change. That's it. Yeah, and to provide us a little bit of mystery, a little bit of tension, because we got to fill time. There's no other reason for that. Uh, and it's just, yeah, he just came across as really odd. Anyway, because time's not a thing. Oh, jeez. Did you guys catch, uh, I know Rags and Fringy did. You guys did too, but how bad the green screen is here. Uh -oh. They they didn't, they could, Amazon can't spring for a field. Oh, God. But it so does look very fake. bad. Because they're trying to just, wow, isn't Galadriel cool? She's riding on a horse. It looks isn't bad. that cool? Yep doesn't care about him at all. He's literally collapsed and she's just dragging him along behind her. <laughs> this is, no, this is my up. tale of heroism. I mean, she... Halbrand simply shares in it. I just, it is kind of funny, though, that if he did inflict that wound upon himself and he almost died when his plan was to just get taken to here and he just dies on the doorstep, like, ah, oh, I came no, so This really was a shit idea, Ooh. wasn't it? I was I was thinking that might be volume, but it's definitely green screen. You can see like right around her shoulder and her yeah, arm. Like the, yeah, like it's the depth of the the background doesn't feel like it's it should you know like move that way. It's hard to really say exactly what it is about it, but it doesn't seem right. Doesn't she doesn't see. seem like yeah, she's moving along with the background. And what's funny is yeah. if this shot is this bad, just cut it. Yeah, yeah, we don't need this. We don't need to see her. Like a close up of her galloping forwards. They're just trying to go, yeah, isn't isn't Galadriel awesome? Isn't this character we made super cool and amazing? Look, she's riding a horse. That's so Ooh. cool. Riding You're horses right. is really cool. That establishing shot before this would have been plenty. Yeah. To let you know. I guess someone would argue got... like, well, it shows a determination. Like, yeah, you can do that in plenty of ways. You don't need that shot. Oh, she's um, determined. To make everybody hate her, and she's <laughs> determined to destroy the universe. <laughs> and she is masterful. Um, yeah. Then, uh, so Gilgalad is arriving tomorrow, and it's sad because we're gonna have to tell him that we fucked up. Is basically what Elrond says, and we couldn't save the world. And I was like, just casually mentioning this now. This is like uh -huh. this is like your whole life right now, and it has been for Celebrimbor too. That's all you guys have been thinking about, and you just it just I hate it when they do that with dialogue. It's just like. Hey, by the way, Gilgalad is on his way, and it's going to be really sad when we explain to him we failed. I could just picture Oops. Celebrimbor Wolf slapping him. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, that's our whole thing. I know. Um. <laughs> and then he looks at the Mithril, and he's like, if only there was some way to do more with less. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for him to go, it needs to be small and round and rhyme with sing. Or do <laughs> Maybe I'll think of it later. Hmm. I just wish there was something I could do as, as a metallurgist. I just don't know how anything works. Smith. As a smith, as a, the master smith and lord of a, a region, like, hmm. We can't I, combine. I love how like we're all just itching to fucking point that out. But it's, it's funny because that's the one I've seen the most on the internet. The most complained about Thig. It's just how fucking stupid it is that he didn't know. We'll get there. It's alright. To be fair, he's only been a master craftsman world renowned for like a thousand fucking years or whatever. Years, so yeah. yeah, it's not like two thousand years or he, anything. Yeah, he wouldn't know what an alloy is. That's not something that elves are aware of. They it's it's they're very racist when it comes to metals. They don't want to mix their metals. They want to keep them pure. Every right. metal has its own place. The silver is over here, the gold's over. I'm not saying the silver is worse than the gold, right? I'm just saying that the silver is over here and the gold is over there. And that's how it should be. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But well, think about how how many times in this show they've told you something, then show, told it you again, and then told you again, and uh, like they probably think yes. we should tell them again. And that's exactly what they did to him. And they he changed didn't it, get it the, the first time, yeah. so they repeated it, and he understood it the second time. I and think most... that's their life. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe elves should die. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the dwarf king was well, right. I mean, I just they all just seem. There's nothing, they don't seem grand and they, they don't seem elvish, you know? It's not just the casting where they just look like dudes with pointy ears. There doesn't seem to be anything um, like particularly. Uh, no, they look like know. 
dragons for one they don't look like elves they just look yeah like they just look like dudes they look like, oh gilgalad looks like the guy who works at blockbuster you know yeah. like this <laughs> is like i don't even manager like, yeah he looks like a, he manages a wendy's you know <laughs> it's like oh i gilgalad has been utterly was... unimpressive throughout all of this he's he's very lame Extremely unimpressive, impressive, I, and that's by it makes me think about. Remember, um, I forget his name, but like the elf king dude from the Hobbit, uh, films, who's played by the guy who played uh, Ronan and yeah, you're like I believe that's a king. I, I believe you're an elven king. Yeah, he came across as a lot more elvish to me from memory than these guys ever do. They're just they they just fit in with everyone else, you know. If and well, run do you take away the gotta roll those Randwell. R's, dude. Yeah, you can oh, perceive and age. No, he was good. He was fine in that. But okay, for one, this episode's called Alloyed. Nice. You know I don't like that's a very <laughs> Is that even a word. Um, that sounds like I don't know something you don't want to happen to you. Is it meant to be taking a piss out of Alloyed? <laughs> I caught Alloyed. No, no, alloyed no is it's, 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 it's alloyed. a play on words. It's it's meant to say annoyed, as in we're all very annoyed to be here <laughs> watching this show. Right. Finally admitting no. it. This show was first announced back in 2017. I got like excited for a minute. Okay, forgive me. I was I was younger, more naive. I forgive you. Um, thank you. Uh, and I'm like, oh my god, we get to see Gil Glad and Kella Brimborn and Kella Born and Kierden and uh, <laughs> now I know I hear you laughing. Now we're here and, no. and like, oh fuck, they've taken all the characters I wanted to see and made them shit. I looked up the definition of alloy, and it is to spoil something or reduce its value. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it, oh no. <laughs> well, to seal was off the season, perfect? that might actually was be the perfect name for this episode. It yeah. really might be. All of it, my that... mind has been thoroughly changed. Yeah. Wow. Cambridge Dictionary <laughs> to spoil name. something or reduce its value. <laughs> <laughs> Or is that is that what they're going for with the whole point that they're making? I guess. It's well, no, because the, the the conversation about Mithril is like, oh, well, it will be spoiled. That he's like, well, no, we have to find uh, uh, ores that wouldn't spoil it, that would complement it. Right. So it's that's ironic. Curious. It's, no, it's not case, really it's... anything. Not to be that guy. I mean, that's the that's like the derivative uh, derivative meaning or uh, like a colloquial meaning. It's it's strict definition is to make an alloy of me an alloy of metals. So it's which it is what happens. Wait, alloy. but if, so, it, if it is colloquially accepted, commonly, but, that's still pretty funny. It's literally the, the fact, Cambridge yeah. definition. That's the fact that's the that, is that, yeah. Is, is, is alloyed even hilarious. does alloyed even have a colloquial definition? Do people use that word? Uh, uh, maybe I, mean, I would describe you. I would describe rings of power as unalloyed shit, for example. I mean that that would be one way of putting it. So yeah, you, you can use that in different ways. I know Waldrig alloyed himself with. Uh, Adar and the orcs, so that he could live. Is that is that mm. viable as a usage? I don't even know. I was like, I was. I meant instead of allied, alloyed was what I was going for. I yeah. thought I thought you were trying to say that there. that is how you could use it, but I don't even know. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with the word to know that that was a joke as opposed to a real thing. Well, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, oh well, Adar. Made mm. Waldrig kill that guy yeah. to test his metal. Ooh. So there you Ooh. go. Yeah. yeah, I like it. See, we brought it. We brought it right back around. Beautiful. Now we don't have to discuss it further, and we can carry right along. And we'll just uh, give and you, you know something about right there. We totally will. Because this. Yeah. Oh gosh, there is so much. Uh, Galadriel arrives, and she's like, blah, 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 in terms of what's what's going on. It's just funny that the first person she sees entering this place is Elrod immediately. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh wow. <laughs> it's <laughs> listen, Middle Earth. It's a small world. All right, small world. it's a small world. Fortunately, it is amazing though. You you made Middle Earth and beyond seem so small. Mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe um, maybe that's not impressive because. They've they already only made Star Wars feel like it's just three planets. It's true, but but Amazon only had sixty million an episode too. So. Yeah, that is true. it's not much. To be fair, not like they what had. Was, a, was it yeah. Nita said they had a billion per episode? <laughs> it was like a <laughs> <laughs> That's almost it's fifty hours from season one. Could you imagine they had a billion dollars per episode? <laughs> it would God. still be shit, but it would look so good. So. <laughs> I Everybody wish they'd come out of this. Episode. We'd have a Balrog every episode. Fuck it. I wish they had come Maybe out of this. Maybe machine gunning them bitches out. 
the other 42 hours, we're just going to do it on the binge model. It's out tomorrow. <laughs> just <laughs> drop it. It's like, turns the out price. it's been correct all along. Oh my God. The price of Amazon Prime goes up to like $7,000 a month <laughs> <laughs> to pay for the Lord of the Rings show. They adapted the Silmarillion word for word. <laughs> nah, that's what they can do. Um, I was sent a message, by the way. Shad <sighs> mentioned something interesting happened during his stream. Apparently he got kicked out of the, of, I guess, the stream several times for watching the episode, and so did a ton of people in chat. Might be something the showrunners did to inflate the numbers of the final episode. Yes, I have my notes here, and it happened for me during the girl Sildur scene uh, with uh, Farazan when she was... Uh, Wait, the, watching the episode on Amazon.com? On Amazon Prime, on Amazon Prime Video, a pop-up came up for that, uh, some virtual reality show. And it's a full two-minute trailer that took you out of the episode, and you had to click back into your episode. Hmm. And, I didn't... Really? I don't. Uh, I didn't get well, that. Well, because me, Fringy, and Rags watched it together, and we didn't uh, have that happen. But um, that's interesting. interesting. That... Yep. I would not yeah, put I it past Amazon at all. Oh, you know either. that they scrub reviews. I totally am. I've gone very suspicious since I saw that stat about um, how they might be counting views of of the episode running in the background of like menus and shit. I was yep. like, wait, that is that true? Because <laughs> that's something. Because I know Netflix probably do that because they play their episodes in the background yeah, all the time. Do. It's George, the kind of uh, show that I just don't believe has a really high like retention slash viewer rate. Honestly, it's no. it's just it's tough to believe. The show is just really bad, and yes. it's boring, and it's not engaging. Um, it's not like a, a giggle a minute, you know? No, like it's bad, really. but giggle, at least it's not even a giggle a season. To be time. honest with you, well, I guess if you count that lady screaming, like giggle, in like in, you're in a straight jacket. Oh yeah, a lot of that. No, um, but to say like. Even through its fourth episode on the Nielsen side, that it's even close to House of the Dragon. And House of Dragon's clearly getting more people watching it because people watch it on linear cable here well, in the States and there in your country, too. It so, may be considered a bit flimsy as a metric, but, like, haven't the engagement on the streams where we're reviewing it, they've just been going up and up and up and up. Yep. Like, I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the first one we did was around 3.5K, something like that, and it was climbing up to 8K, the recent one. Okay, the the reason why you got kicked out and we didn't, um, Australia redirects you to the American Prime Video site, whereas the UK ah. got its own one. There oh. you go. So that's why it happened to Shad, and they're just doing it in America, and it just happened to happen in Australia as well. And it's absolutely a trick. They don't accidentally put a pop-up in the middle of your damn movie on Amazon Prime. Believe me, that's a test for future things, too. That's It's going to happen more. Absolutely happen. Yeah, more. I think they're going to roll out like a version of Netflix eventually with ads on it that you do pay for still. But that's see, that's here's the rub with that. They have to be uh, open with their numbers to the at least the advertising agency, so that they that's something they've never done, and they're going to have to be. So we're going to start finding numbers. Yep. Oh yeah. It's weird enough that I pay for Amazon Prime and I still got a ad at the beginning. I thought that was weird too. Uh, yeah. A little annoying. A little annoying, not gonna lie. Glad it's skippable. Thank fucking I think that's where we're heading. Uh, no. You might not even be able to pay for, for a version that's ad-free. That'll eventually happen. It's, yeah, it's gonna get to a point where you're just, you're gonna get ads, no matter what. It might not be many. We'll go back be to being like TV. Yep. We were there it's, when this got introduced. TV, yeah. TV what? died. Let's make it more like TV. <laughs> what they're missing is is licensing over linear TV. That's what made them tons of money to different countries, like licensing Doctor Who to to China. They uh, BBC got like a billion for that. Doctor so, Who. Doc Doctor Who. H H U. Ooh, that episode's coming out soon. You excited, Gary? I am. S no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I almost oh. died when you said it was ninety minutes. Oh, oh no. It's oh. Long dude, and it's a week from t uh, tomorrow. Oh my god, it never fucking 90 minutes. ends. You can create, you can put a lot of quality into a ninety-minute show. So, yeah, yeah, exciting. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's pretty cool. They won't, but you can. Yeah. So, they establish it's been six days ride from, uh, I guess the encampment to Aragion. So. Uh, Sauron should be dead, but I guess maybe his body doesn't work like normal people. I don't even know at this point. Either he, it's it's 
it goes back to that space and time thing. We've talked about it before about traveling, but if you're traveling with a wound so grievous that only Elvish medicine will save your life and you're just bouncing around on the back of that bitch and it, you're just there and there's no, like he's hunched over and that's all we get. Yeah. There's no well, sense remember, he's up and running in about an fast. hour. Oh yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. He, he's good to go. Like it's I'd, fine. Um, Don't worry. About I'd be more it. concerned it's... about the horses than about him. I know Numenorean horses are supposed to be much better and stronger than ours, but if you can find a horse that can ride for six days flat at a sprint uh -huh. um, without rest, there's a reason that Genghis Khan's empire sort of eventually contracted because it got so big, but he kept it running because he had way stations with fresh horses because horses cannot actually go at a gallop for all that long. They definitely can't go for six days. These are and Numenorean nights. horses. I They're don't met. think even they. Numenor could do is that. the home of the horse lords, as we all know. <laughs> That's they why they command so their horses running. to keep going. Because because Galadriel said to the horse, "If you don't get us there, if you if you stop one fucking time, I'm going to kill all of the other horses in front of you and make you watch." <laughs> yep. Would she even need to do that? You'd just be like, "Look, when we get to the end, I'll leave you alone." It's like, okay, I'm running. <laughs> I'm not stopping. I'll <laughs> never ride you again. Um. So yeah, uh, Elrond's like, "Wait, King of the Southlands." How did you cross paths with him? How are you here? What? And I was like, Elrond, great questions. I look forward to her answering them. But unfortunately, her response is, well, how, how are you here? Uh-huh. And then he's like, eh. Yeah, I know you fair, are. Yeah. What am I? Fair enough. It's the way he nods at it. <laughs> That's what gets me. <laughs> All right, well touche. It's like, what? No. <laughs> Both of you answer each other's questions. Like, people. No. That's not how this show works. Um, people don't talk to each other. Yeah, you know, talk at and past at each, each other. other. Yeah, and then he says, uh, "I should never have set you on that ship. I should have trusted you. It's a mistake I will not make again." Like, yeah, what? she she was right the whole time. Okay, I don't even know what he's referring to because the fact is, this is something that happens a little bit later, but I'm just pissed about it now. Gilgalad does actually see that Galadriel is back, and no one has a conversation about his original theory that if she left, the goo would go away. Because he thought, remember he says, like, I thought by setting Galadriel away, the goo would go. It's like, she didn't go away, bro. You've never actually tested that out yet. If you actually thought it was a real thing, it might be, from your point of view, that Galadriel is still causing the goo. I don't know. I guess he's throwing that theory out the window. Do we know what caused the goo? I don't Evil. think they've... Yeah, I think they just evil. said evil. Right? Not yeah. me. It just it's seems to be evil. Yeah. Evil. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it was a Balrog fought a Balrog next to a tree, and they both piled their evil into a tree, and then that made black goo <laughs> in the earth and spreading. I don't know. That would be pretty it's cool. Like, her response there is horrible because he's like, "Yeah, you know, I should have trusted you. I shouldn't have set you away." And she just goes, "I won't let you." It's like I think she's trying to be nice, but it sounds like a threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 Galadriel dialogue at this point. That's, that's how you write it. Just be bitchy about every single thing ever. You could say like "Good morning," and she would be like, "That's wise of you to say." <laughs> You'd be like, "What?" Well, well like "Good what morning." Makes you is so it? It's like, that. I don't know, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you how long will this greatness last? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so she said, I leapt off the boat because I didn't, like, she said I, don't, I didn't deserve it and my task was incomplete. And when I surfaced, all I could do was swim and pray that I had chosen wisely. So that oh. is in-universe com confirmation that she basically thought, I'm killing myself, fuck it. Yep. Mm -hmm. If Absolutely ridiculous. If you, also, if you're Gilgalad, right, and you send um, Galadriel and all these other people to go to... Uh, undying special Valhalla or whatever mm -hmm. and you like okay that's good that's neat so they're in heaven that's awesome and then all of a sudden one of them shows back up you should be panicking like, what the fuck happened to everyone else like that's did, a good did point the, nobody asked about happened? anyone else yeah yeah no. like what what happened how come you're here how come you made it where's everyone else you should be in Valinor unless we're like, supposed to believe that how are you alive between scenes, she told them all. Oh no, it was just me. I jumped off. Everyone else is fine. Don't worry about it. Because yeah, I'd be I'd be terrified. Like, did, did something happen? Like, where's everyone else? They never made it back. You'd be worried. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be terrified. You'd be like, God dang. Yeah. Also, also, the whole you, um, you jumped off the boat and everything. Wow. Is it part of a reason was that she didn't think she deserved 
go to Valnor. So, like, I really don't think that was at all really given to us in the scene. It was a huge focus on the whole, like, darkness thing. How she didn't believe that the evil had been purged yet. That seemed to be the main focus of that scene. Not Yeah, it wouldn't have been my guess it. at all. It would have been that she wanted to just keep getting Sauron. She didn't feel like her job, job was, was done. Um, I wouldn't have guessed. I wouldn't think I was worthy. Fuck off with that. Hmm. Anyway, then, I mean, yes, even she yeah. even said to him, "Then I ca and I cannot stop." Uh, the only way I, I could try and make that make sense is if she doesn't think she's worthy as long as the fight is there to be had. So she's unworthy because it's a failing on her part that Sauron was able to kill her brother, for example, and so she will be unworthy for as long as the fight against Sauron is, is even a prospect. But I don't think it was framed in that way, or at least not very well. And then it doesn't easily sit with, as Brax mentioned, that, that last scene of uh, dialogue when she says, I, I fight because I can't stop. It's one of those things that you just think, well, why did you not make more of this? If this was your idea to begin with, why didn't you make that at least a little bit clearer than, than you did? Because at the moment, it just seems like, well, she's a bit mad and she wants to stab orcs and, that's, and she hasn't finished stabbing them yet. So that's why she's done it. Yeah, pretty um. much. So, uh, the legendary character of Hullbrand meets Celebrimbor in an epic scene. Another legendary character. This scene is the meaning of the minds. This was a tough one to watch. Uh, the acting in this was... Because I was... Rubble. Fighting back yeah. my, my oh. tears of joy. So, um... He's, Hullbrand's like, this is peculiar, what is it? Just picks up the mithril, because apparently it was just on a desk. Uh, uh, <laughs> he refers to himself in the third person to begin with. He's like, Oh, yeah, Calibrim Boy is like, This is Calibrim Boy's workshop. Like, yep. Oh, I'd love to meet him. And he's like, Oh, well, he is here. It's like, What are we, we doing? I guess he's just having a moment. He's he's having like, Oh, it's, I, I have a fan, I have an admirer. Oh, and it's the most evil person on the earth. <laughs> like, God damn it. Um, but yeah, he, hey, yeah, this is what this is what Wagner felt about Hitler, you know. Maybe. Uh, so yeah, he picks up the Mithril and he's, and and Celebrimbor's immediately like, "Oh, it's not enough." Like, why are you even talking to him about it? You don't even know who this man is. And he's like, "Have you tried mixing it?" And he's like, "Well, I, I wouldn't do that because it'll dilute it." And he's like, "Yeah, but what <laughs> if like, you were like, to mix it with something like that's whiskey? good though?" And he's like, "What? Not... Oh like combine God. it with like other rare things and then make it better." And then Calibrin Bull's well, like, whoa. Oh, this whole time I've been mixing it with shit. Master Dang. Smith, <laughs> right. Master Smith of the Elves, as the show took time to tell us, uh -huh. as doesn't understand how basic metallurgy works. And it's like, I pointed this out on Twitter, and someone underneath said, um, yeah, I, I too object to this fantasy show because it got metallurgy wrong. I was like, I don't think you, um, you've got the point there. That's that's not what I'm taking issue wrong. with. It wouldn't. It doesn't matter that it's metallurgy. Uh, compared, it, it matters that it's his expertise, and yes, it, it could have been a made-up thing. It could have been magic casting, and he's the greatest wizard of all time. And then this other, like, rookie wizard is like, "Have you ever tried casting a spell with your butt?" And then he's like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" Butt spell. And like, you know, I've in this case, with my penis. if butt spells were known to actually be really good, it's like, why doesn't he know that? Except, like, context matters. Uh, especially surrounding this show when they kept on saying, well, we went back to the book. We went back to the book. We're honoring Tolkien. Tolkien took his time to, to, to map all this out, his entire effing life, and they're getting the most basic elements wrong. Like, like Kelle Brimbor is a moron, uh, and it, it, it's, it's, it's basic. It's, Kelle, yeah, well, I call him Grandma Brimbor. He never changes his clothes, but that, as they pointed out last <laughs> Grandma? <laughs> He's Tolkien never specifically said that elves change their clothes. I understand that, but is it uh, is it a is it a particularly um, consistent trait among grandmothers that they don't change their clothes? <laughs> clothes. I don't understand and your they name. Call themselves Smiths who don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> I had a granny called Caleb Rimbo. Uh, granny folks, Smith. Oh, I like the apples. Yeah, Granny mm -hmm. Smith. What if he's like the leader of the Hawks? Yeah. Big counter argument now for the fucking Rings of Power is oh, it's just a fantasy show. Well, y you're adapting Lord of the Rings and Tolkien, you dipshits. Like, it oh, didn't used to be just a fantasy show. Yeah. If anything, that's I just already an admission of defeat. 
It just sounds, whenever someone says that, it's just like, it's supposed to be shit, it's fantasy, and it's like, oh, get the fuck out of here, jeez. Oh. It's just like, it's such a lazy response. It, yeah. Of course it's a fantasy show, yes, but it's the thing that defines fantasy as a genre. It's like turning to Wagner's ring cycle and saying, well, it's just singing. Yep. That, no, that's, that's <laughs> not, you can't excuse fucking Lady Gaga because it's just singing as though it's the same basic level and as, as influential as, say, Wagner was. If you're reduced to that argument, you don't have an argument. That's just deflecting. Like, if Tolkien, you wouldn't have Wheel of Time, you wouldn't have... Um, I think, well, think any major fantasy series that's yeah, come out basically since the great. 50s, you wouldn't have it without Tolkien. Uh, and the idea that, well, yeah, ultimately it doesn't matter if you debase Tolkien because it's just fantasy, is essentially saying that it doesn't matter if you debase an entire genre of art because, you know, who cares? You know, it's just art. Who cares? Oh, dude. Throw it, soup it, over it. The top it doesn't even one. have to be a peak example because fantasy in itself is about creating a new universe which will have its own sort of internal consistent logic and rules yeah. and physics and everything else. And once you make those rules, you have to stick with them. It's like now they or have defined the fact. Yeah, now you've got now they have defined that ships float because they look upwards. That is a rule <laughs> that you have to stick with for the rest of time now in your series. It was so, a metaphor. Yeah, it it's, it's not about like metaphor for the bullshit. purpose of it. Is that you have to be internally consistent, otherwise. Any, literally anything can happen. Like, we can just nuke Galadriel in the next scene, and it'll be fine, because who cares? Oh, yeah. That would or... be an improvement, yes. But I mean, like, She'd just if... tank it to the face, though. That's the problem. <laughs> She'd wander into the woods there. with a miner. Or, like, a guy who mines. Yeah, like Durin. Yeah. There's, there's the other problem as well, which is that, okay, if you're adapting this stuff and you're taking characters from it, and you are using their names and also their titles and their established positions as the law defines them. So Celebrimbor is the greatest of elven smiths. Gilgalad is the high king of the elves. You do then have to portray them as though they were those things. You can't just say, oh. this is Celebrimbor, he's a great smith, and then make him, you know, basic not a great GCSE smith. <laughs> B-tech level guy who's only just discovered what chemistry is. Like, that's, that's not a, necessarily a law failing, that's just a failure of writing, which the show is... Fill, fill, uh, words filled with, well, obviously, but um, what if it's like, like delivery the mechanism, and Go he's ahead. just making it up as he goes along? So, like, the half was like, oh, when they did that spell, well, he's using small words, so the tree understands it. Turns out Celebrimbor's been faking his entire life, pretending yeah. he's great at all this stuff. <laughs> when really, he's like, oh wow, yep. We said before him being like the greatest elven smith ever and the bestest always, that would have been really useful. To have us learn about Mithril when he when when Elrond comes back, gives him the Mithril, having Celebrimbor look at that and be like, "Holy shit, this is fucking amazing!" And then he he, he does all these tests, these tests that he does off screen in between scenes or whatever that were baffling and strange. If we saw him like talking to Elrond as he, he was in his workshop testing the metal and weighing it and stuff like that. We saw it on the scales and whatnot. He was like, "Oh, this is so amazing!" That would have not only allowed us to learn more about Mithril you know, through Celebrimbor telling it to Elrond, but also it would have been like, wow, Celebrimbor is, if he's excited about this sort of thing, and he's this master elven smith who's lived for 10 trillion years, that just shows how special it is all the more. I mean, maybe he didn't even do the test, though. <laughs> like, the guy's like, do you know this does the thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, I read all the tests, mate. read all of them. Never tested it about oh, oh, yeah, the leaf, yeah. though, to see whether it cured it. Of course, the whole thing, it is just done as a contrivance, so I, I don't know in this, with Gil-Galad it's different, so with Gil-Galad, they've attempted to write an austere, powerful, wise ruler, but they don't have the capability to do that, so they've turned him into an idiot who makes all the wrong decisions. With Celebrimbor, I don't think they would have had the writing talent to actually portray him properly anyway. But the only reason they've made him an idiot is because they do need him to be an idiot in order for Sauron's relationship with the Forging of the Rings to take place. Yes. It's just staggering that they've left it until the, pen the the final episode to actually just to make this relationship happen at all. Like there's not there's been no build up for this. It's they're only there because well we still don't know what happened to Hal Prance. <laughs> like, maybe he stabbed himself. Maybe something else to get himself here to meet Celebrimbor for the first time in order that the rings of power be forged. The point of this entire operation be forged in this episode. This whole long manipulation that Sauron you know would have had to go on is condensed down to this exchange and they had to reduce Celebrimbor to orchestrate that 
I, it's just it's the shoddiest of shoddy writing more so i think than than all the preceding episodes even this is just we've dallied and we've wasted all of our time for hours on end nothing's in place nothing's set up we need stuff to happen so uh, yeah, fuck it panic just do this and therefore you destroy your supposedly greatest characters in the name of in the name of contrivance great great work for a billion dollars all this time and you're in the negative that must be great yeah, because the idea here is obviously that Sauron needs to have a particularly important component of the construction of these. So what is it? And it's like, well, he can tell Celebrimbor the secret to combining them. And it, honestly, because they're so stupid, they probably should have done it off screen. And Celebrimbor's like, I couldn't quite figure out the the way to do it. But that uh, that whole brand fellow of yours, he's, he's been he's been working with me, and we've managed to figure out a couple of shortcuts here and there, and a couple of things that. You know, this, that, and the other. Like, nice and vague, so we can't judge it, but you actually just openly have him say, combine it with other metals. And then, it's even worse than that, because Celebrimbor's like, oh no, that doesn't work because it'll make it impure. And then he's like, yeah, but what if it didn't? <laughs> like, it's, it's so bad. What if you use the right ingredients? Yeah, and that's it. And then he oh. later says, like, oh, you know, I got this from the Southlander. He... It's what he that said crazy? that opened the dab or something. He tries to make it sound oh, like it wasn't yeah. really his idea. It was my idea, but he kind of prompted it or something. That line, that it, the, it, it's the thing that turned the key that opened the dam. Right. Ooh. Yeah, which is an Ooh. interesting choice of words, isn't it? And I wonder why they decided to use that choice of mm. words. Is it because they need to fast forward things again? Yes, it is. Ah, uh, lame. Really lame. And it makes your uh, Elebrimbo look like an idiot. It does. So anyway, anyway. Um, so anyway. Oh yeah, so we're over back in um, Numenor, and uh, old dude is getting his tomb sorted out. He's kind of losing his marbles. He starts talking about the 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 doom of Valyria. I mean, the the doom of Numenor. That's or the one. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> it's all gonna fall apart. Bad tisms on the way. And he, I, I can't remember. Does he think he's talking to his daughter? I think he does, right? Yeah. And he's like, we've he got to yes. restore the old ways or our people will be lost. And like I like, said, when it comes to old bedridden kings mistaking <laughs> women for his daughter, he's really low tier. Really low tier. Not my yeah. favorite. Yeah, there's, there's way better one out there right now. Isn't that weird? That happens really in the weird. same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is kind of strange. So that's, it's that thing in it where it's like if I had a nickel, it's not a lot of money, but no. weird that it happened twice. I had a nickel for every time a dying king thought he was talking <laughs> to his daughter. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, he wanders over to his little Palantir room and opens it up, and unfortunately that means that she gets to now use it, because there's no, like, nurse in the room. There's no one in earshot, even, that maybe takes care of these things. And to be honest with you, with him being this senile and kind of crazy, is it good that he still has the keys to that room? No. Probably not. You should probably you not. Like, you know. have the key. The to be fair, the dementia. the Palantir room it doesn't have any shields because no one would be crazy enough to open it. <laughs> oh my god, Obi Obi Crunch can open. Um, so yeah, she just walks in and enjoys herself a Palantir, I guess. I don't know where that's going exactly because I don't know the law, but that's it. Oh, for we. Her. Oh, no, she doesn't exist in the law, so it can go wherever wherever it wants to. Like she's hey. just been made up. I'm trying to remember how she even got here in the first place. She was drawing. She, she was, was an drawing. apprentice, yeah, to was, do his uh, tomb. His icon. Likeness of his tomb. She was in. Con oh, she was in. Yeah. Competition. It was a competition for the likeness of his tomb. Yeah. I feel like they would have settled this ages ago. Someone in the guild would have high honors for, and you you wouldn't give that shit to an apprentice. You'd give it to like the master carver of the guild. You know, to to make the. You know, King's face had a stone for his tomb. It is a bad female energy to the family, but they she's going to be the impetus of the faithful breaking breaking away. Mm -hmm. They're going to make her the centerpiece of it, and not a Lindil or oh man, a Sildur who we haven't talked about because he's totally dead, right? Like, <laughs> totally, a Sildur dead. <laughs> So dumb. If, when a Sildur gets out of that building, he'll be really upset that no one. His like, dad came abandoned him, but then it'd be like it's worse than that, mate. Everyone abandoned you. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I sailed back to Numenor. Gonna be a barfooted, my dude. Yep. Could the, you the imagine that? Is 
He crawls Sorry. out of the fucking wreckage and he's like, you know, Dad, anyone, is anyone here? It's like mostly just orcs, actually. Manages to fight through them, escape maybe, gets to the encampment. It's abandoned. There's just some planks left or something. Bits of rags and stuff. Not that rags, the other rags. And he's like, oh, uh, geez, uh, where do I go next? It's like The pretender to the throne! And, and, and then he's like, well, what happened? He maybe gets all the way to the Numenor encampment place that Bronwyn's at. And she's like, oh, hey, uh, yeah, you guys left like weeks ago. Sorry, mate. And he's well, like, they where are they? It's like Numenor. <laughs> they went home. They said you were dead. So They said you were yeah. dead. I've been gone for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> How did they do this all so fast? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> were they trying to like hurry up before <laughs> everyone was hurrying in the camp? Quick, 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 before he gets, <laughs> before he gets, before, up, before, he gets up. Up. before he finds us, before he finds us. More rations for me. <laughs> oh, it's so lame. It is indeed. Anyway, that scene's over. We go back to the, the place and they're like, we're going to build you a crown made of Mithril, uh, Gilgalad, that's going to save the world. And I was thinking, like, surely you'd probably want a pointy stick so you can, like a wand, so you can rub it all over the tree and stuff. If it's on your head, you got to, like, awkwardly aim your head around a bit, right? Or is it just really. Just... It's got a. I'm aura. imagining that. They make a wand of mithril and they start rubbing it on all the trees. <laughs> so, hey, if it works. In the forest. They go to all the trees. He's, just, he's fluttering around with his wand. <laughs> he's like a fairy. He's like a pretty, pretty princess. Like, oh. sir, you have to do it to save the world. He's like, it's okay. I'm I willing. feel gay, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, Gilgalad's a little bit depressing in this scene. They're like, oh, we gotta make that and we can save the world. And he's like, too late. Oh. We dead. We're just dead. We gotta... Fuck it. Too late. If you guys have made this like a week ago, maybe, but it's too late. Fuck you. Um, Black pill. If only we'd learned about oh. this sooner. If only we told Elrond the uh, gravity of the exactly. situation. Exactly. Oh, so fucking dumb. To begin with. <laughs> this is totally not our fault. But also, uh, yeah, he says it's too dangerous and stuff. And Galadriel, who's just here, by the way, we haven't had any conversation for her and Gilgalad at all. She's just here. Nope. And she says, Sometimes the perilous path, bleh, perilous path is the only path. I wouldn't be standing here otherwise. He just looks at her and he goes, You shouldn't be standing here at all. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> that was kind of funny. You're the king. Tell her to fuck off. Was, tell her a lot of things. It's like you betrayed a whole bunch of shit. You, we, we've got loads of words to... We're not allowed to speak. The, the script won't let us. Never mind. But um. all three of them in this scene are like... Gilgalad's the only one with any kind of moral compass at all. They're basically going, yeah, well, you know, it'll make one person super powerful and probably a tyrant, but as long as you're that tyrant, it'll be fine. Like, so, I don't even understand the mechanics, really. It's like, so this stuff rubs away the goo. However, also, it is very powerful. No, not, not now. Like, it, they kind of imply that it'll supercharge one of them that will then spread to everyone else, is the way I took it. Like, it's a level up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they get all yeah, because the they say, like, it has to be a circular thing, because then it'll, like, power itself up infinitely. It'll, the energy will bounce on itself or something. It's like, whatever, fantasy, like, sure, yep, whatever. Yeah. Reverse the Fine. polarity, that's what it's going to do. <laughs> yeah, Reverse it'll the it'll transmogrify the Poloscovator, and that means that the, yeah, it's... And so, then it's something fine, really weird happens in the dialogue, and I'm not even 100% clear on the oh. purpose, I think. This happens a lot in this show, I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So, when he complains they didn't do this fast enough, Ella Brimbor says, angrily, I almost had it sooner! It was only in speaking to the Southlander that... And then he cuts him off to say, the low man? This idea was his? It's like, okay, before we continue, what is Celebrimbor saying when he says, I almost had it sooner, it was only when I spoke to the Southlander that I actually managed to do all of this. So, like, he's angry at, what, getting a shortcut where he wouldn't have had it without the Southlander? Yeah, that was confusing to me, too. Like, he's like, you should have like done this faster, and he's, like, complaining that he's doing it faster than ever before, but he also could have done it, it's like, you couldn't have done it faster, this was already faster. Is it? Uh, yeah. It's really like weird. Mid. Yeah. A slight... The kinds of like, things that remind you to write is really bad. And it yeah, feels to me like they were trying to find a way to force him into saying the Southlander to then trigger Gilgalad into saying, like, why the fuck are you playing around with that low man? Which is like, okay. Well, okay, so is it prior to this, Mahler, where Elrond says, I know it sounds strange, but... Like, every time you hear that in writing, period, 
that, like they're about to tell you something that doesn't make any sense and stupid. <laughs> what, I mean, they tell us stuff that doesn't make sense all the time. Is, like, I don't think Whenever they say, they I know it sounds strange, like, they're like, not Prepare lying. yourself. We're about to get a real bagger of nonsense. Um, but yeah, so he carries on. His suggestions were the key that unlocked the dam. This is the power of the unseen world, not of flesh, but over flesh. What the fuck is that supposed to mean exactly? Like in this context, yeah, it's that sounds kind of creepy. Go away. It does. Like, what was this again? Saving the elves? You're talking like about having weapon. power over flesh. What are we talking about here, man? And we just then... want to make the goo go away, my dude. And then you find yeah. out, like, power over flesh. Where did you get those words from? And he's like, who cares? Whatever. And then she's like, was it Hullbrand? It's like. Why would you assume Halbrand said, like... <laughs> well, because at this point, she thinks Halbrand is Sauron, but she's not but sure. Why? And And a, because of everything that's happened previously in the episode, like, I can't remember the exact details, but there's been enough hints that she thinks he's not who he says he is at this point. I don't remember the being there. Book in the first place. But, like, uh, but Ad Adar was the ones that said those words, and he got it from Sauron, presumably, when he was working with him, which is the link. Yeah, what? but well, no, that's that's the link between them, but not the link between Galadriel and this. No, yeah. Like I, I thought there was a complete absence of stuff at this point, which I was going to say. Galadriel... That's my big complaint with this: is Galadriel's no reason to distrust uh, Halbrand yet. And but all of a sudden she just Man. flipped on that one statement. Yeah, which, which is I'm really strange. Like really contrived, and we have to assume that Sauron got into Celebrimbor's head. I mean. That's... Yeah, which sucks. He's known him for like yeah. five seconds. Which, yeah, by the way. That would have been a neat scene to see him manipulating Hellabrimbor. Never mind, we don't get to have that. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we can pretend it happened and say that it happened if we pretend it happened. That's cool, too. Um, And yeah, before we can deal with all that, uh, Gilglad's just like, no, disband everything, fuck off, we're going back. Like, okay. Oh, okay. Um, We can try. Um... Also, I, I was a little bit perplexed as to why they went to the trouble of building this entire tower and city to hold a forge that looks like it really could have been put pretty much anywhere. It, it's it's yeah. a really small little cauldron thing, but they now have to disband it because well they they run out of they've run he out was... of time to go back to heaven, so I... which was a reward in the previous episode, but now is a curse because we don't understand why the elves would even want to stay in Middle Earth really to begin with. Uh, this mm, yes set up and pay off. Don't really link so what was he going to originally use the tower to make? Um, I think Just it was this plan thing? all along. Yeah. But, or to try and like use the, the mithril. power? Not necessarily the rings. Well, well no, it can't have been the rings because he must have it's assumed. Kind of, remember, they knew we got the ring idea here. here. Right we... at the start. Yeah, well, the, so the purpose of this tower being made was to make... Uh, some new thing power. Yeah. That's actually a good point. I'm not we're sure not what. we're not going to talk about. Something uh, with the mithril, I'd assume. Yeah, because they knew that the mithril was a thing, right? But they didn't know what it was called, and they didn't know where it was. So they just knew about Celeborn, that tree. Or Celebrimborn knew about mithril? So just both Gilgalad knew... and Celebrimborn knew about mithril. Presumably they knew about... Yes. Remember that story they tell? They were like, they've waited for that material, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, Gilgalad told the... And they said, like, they assumed the dwarves found that material, and they turned out to be right. So I guess they always wanted to forge that material so they... into something else. And then the person that they wanted to go to the dwarves is the person they didn't tell about it. Yeah, because they're uh -huh. incredibly stupid. <laughs> it gets worse at the end. I'm so con I'm so confused by like all of this. Who knows yeah. what and who gets told what and why are they doing whatever they're doing? Um. Also, I'm afraid Gary is going to have to bug out for a bit. Doing your, oh. your flams, your fling, you do it. I'm assuming you got some other work to do. You're a very busy bad these days. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'd stay for the whole thing. Uh, oh, no, but it's all I'm good. I, we're all like, you just love talking about rings of power, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going back to talk about rings of power in my review <laughs> <laughs> halfway through, and then if I'm done recording, I will come back if you guys are still talking about it. We, we, uh, likely, I would oh, yeah. say we got another hour and a half to two hours of this episode, probably. Uh, so if if that's within the time, we'll be doing the super chats after that if you wanted to come back and just talk about rings of power because I know you love doing that. But, oh uh, yeah, I'll come back. Either I'll way, back. Uh, good luck with whatever it is you're up to, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure. Sorry, I got to leave early. Thanks, chat. Thanks, gentlemen. Have fun. You too, man. We'll catch you in. Bye, bye. Thanks for jumping on. Okay. Where, where are you? So many complaints to be had about this.
whole sequence <laughs> of events. Sorry, I just kind of keep, keep it all in track, you know? Um, oh yeah, so Elrond is like, I really, really, really want to do this. And Gilgalad's like, no. And then he goes, come on, I'm owed three months. And then he says, you're owed nothing. And then he says, okay, well then do it because I'm asking you. And that works. God, it's just... I need to try that more in my life. Whenever <laughs> I don't get anything that I think I deserve, I'll be like, well, what if, what if you do it just because I asked you to? Yeah, it feels Master really negotiator he... Elrond. He's like... He's like demanding it as a thing that he wants, and he gets declined, and then he tries to pull like a sense of duty or favor, and that doesn't work, and then he just says, okay, but like, I really want it though. How does that, I just don't get how that works. True. It doesn't, it doesn't work even in the, the setup. If it's as desperate as we've been led, or as we've been repeatedly told that it is, why would you not want at least some people staying behind to work up until the last possible second to save your place in Middle-earth? Why oh, would you oh, want? Why would you're you an idiot anyway? Well, there, 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 there is that. But if you weren't an idiot, why, why you're would glad you be secretly working for Sauron, trying to kill the elves, <laughs> get them out of Middle Earth, based in so, Elf um, build? Yeah, so they're gonna. I guess they get that amount of time to build whatever it is they're trying to build, right? A crown. That's what they're building. A crown. Yep. And then we have a seed of Galadriel's like research the Southlanders and speak of it to nobody. And it is such like a... What? She really doesn't trust Halbrand now to the point where she wants to search up his history, which to be fair is like... I may as well just do that anyway. Check out his old tweets. Yep. What he's been if it's you think you might have done that while you were, you know, in the massive library in Numenor. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see where that goes, I suppose. Um... It's, it's funny because there's a couple of moments where she's staring at him while he's just doing smithing. She's like, hmm, pretty sure he's, he's just hmm. smithing there, menacingly. Yeah. And um, she says to to Halbrand, yes, all of a sudden you and Celebrimbor seem quite familiar. Like, that's evidence of him being evil? And it's like, he made woman, friends. His whole thing when you met him was that he wanted to smith. He enjoys he the process. And he's helping one of his like all-time inspirations and heroes, as far as we know, create something that he's trying to create. This, there's no reason to think he's evil as a result of all this. To be fair, I can believe that Galadriel thinks that making friends is an act of evil. <laughs> Those that does line up. She doesn't understand it as a process. She's like, what is this? You must be trying to hurt them. I like that she's suspicious of him at this point being Sauron. So you'd think, well, while I dis un discover it and investigate, oh. I'm not going to make him suspicious. So she stands across the room, glaring at him, as if she wants him to die. It's like, no, play it cool. Galadriel's glaring at him, and he's like, what, what did I do right? Although I suppose with Galadriel, maybe it'd be more suspicious if like, she was just nice to him for once. So yeah, I, uh, I just don't know what it is that clues her into any of this, but she's, she's on the right track, of course. Gonna... We'll get there. Over to Gandalf, or not Gandalf, with a bunch of the, the, the witches. And they're like, the more your power improves, the more the veil will be lifted. And I guess that's their way of explaining like everything to do with this character. He's like a normal-ass human. He's just lost all of the random things, and they're coming back to him slowly through magical streams. I don't even know. It's magic. They ain't gotta explain shit. Uh, but they do say the star pattern he's looking for is on the little dinner plate. And they say that it's... Uh, like, it's the Hermit's Hat, far to the east. It's a pattern that's visible where stars are strange, a land called Rune. I think they actually also use the line, it's only visible in one place, which isn't how stars work. Yeah, well, yeah. it is in this world, bitch. <laughs> that's strange. <laughs> the magical stars. Um, and then they have a little speech that really gets to him. Uh, she says... You fell from the stars, yet you are greater than they. Fire obeys your will. You fell below the dust, and yet dust fears you. <laughs> and yet <laughs> dust fears you. Can you imagine? The power. <laughs> the power, power of dust. Even the dust <laughs> obeys your command. Even the dust you trample underfoot. Oh, the dust trembles beneath you. Why would just... Oh. As, the dust know, trembles really beneath like you would work better, because at least that's like, that implies a different kind of fast. But if the dust generally just fears you, <laughs> I, I don't understand. Dust has no emotions. 
does tremble like, beneath fear. you, but at least like you're massive or, or you know your your stride moves the land. But if the dust just the dust is trembles scared, under movie Bob's feet, I don't. <laughs> I don't under who wrote. Who wrote that? Looked at it and thought, "Yeah, that sounds that's pretty that cool. Sounds good." It just you just picture him picking up the dust and being like, "Is it alive?" And he pokes it like, "Hello, <laughs> don't be yeah, afraid." Yeah, saying that the dust fears you isn't that impressive. Saying that like the earth itself or something yeah. that's a bit more like, "Oh, okay, okay, all right." Yeah. Now we're now we're getting someplace. Uh, yeah, getting the recognition but I deserve. It gets weirder because when they're doing that little speech, he like gets into it and starts. Doing like big old telekinesis everywhere and like yelling, like like he's happy to hear that he's super powerful and that dust fears him. That's um, that's the that's the um, the, it's the confidence boost that he needed to know that the dust fears him. I have no idea what to make of. <laughs> he's any been of this. he's been surrounded by Harfoots for a long time now. He like really finally people that. recognize how powerful I am. I can feel good now. Yeah, finally the dust fears me. But then it gets weirder. They don't like this. They get scared by him when he's just doing like a little like I'm so happy that I'm so powerful. They're like, "Oh God, stop him!" And then one of them blows dust into his face, and he gets knocked out. I, I don't. But what is? What's going can, on? Once again, he's like, "Can people not fuck with me when I'm casting <laughs> spells?" I know. Hey, I even God now. Time. I think every single time, like literally every time. <laughs> yeah. Screwed it up. <laughs> Literally never gets to learn anything. One. And then they blame him. Every time they <laughs> blame him for it too. What is this? What the fuck is this? Like... Magicus Interrupticus. <laughs> Wait, doesn't she just like blow dust in his face yeah. to knock him out? Yeah. The dust so the fear dust him fears him, you... but not that much. <laughs> well, uh, is it magic dust or is it... Um, maybe it's just... It's, like, I it's, imagine it's, it's magic. It could just be a different dust, substance. Yeah. It could just be a different thing altogether. Yeah. Maybe it's like well, Smeef. Smoke or... Does she get it from some It's magical, so it can't it, be something that's it's normal. Magic. It's Smeef. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that, there you go. He blew Smeef at him. Smeef doesn't fear him. Dust does, though. Smeef. Or Smoof, whichever you want. Smoof sounds more like Smoof poof. Magic. That kind of matches, I guess. Poof is a kind of smoky word. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, they like let's bind him, which I thought was really odd. I was like, he's a wizard, man. I don't know. I feel like just wait till he wakes up. I don't know. Yeah, right. just let him sleep, and then explain. Yeah, you, you got a getting a little bit out of control. Um, we we just want to make sure you don't do anything super crazy until your power, like, and everything comes back and the veil goes away. Um. So yeah, we we just went ahead and put you to sleep real quick, but you know we didn't we didn't tie you up, you know, because because that would be excessive and weird. And so the Harfords are here, and they've come up with a plan. Their plan oh. is one of them makes noises, I guess, to distract the witches, while the others go and try and free totally not Gandalf. Um, hmm. and I just wonder, I'm like, yeah, okay, but like, what are you gonna do when they catch you and kill you? Because they're way faster, they can track you. And the magical yeah, beings, like they can spontaneously explode objects into fire. There's like they're they're just physically they are larger and more imposed. Magic aside, they are just physically superior to you. Yeah, um, they they have a dinner plate. You add the magic on top of that. On top the power of, of Smee. I don't know if they're going to be yeah. able to defeat them at all, but they probably have some kind of weapon. What we learn is from a little glance that the witches are probably aware that they're here too. This isn't going to go well at all, apparently. Uh-oh. So the Harvards oh, get around to them. freeing old Gandalf there, and it turns out that's not Gandalf at all. It's a fake. It's the shapeshifter. Ah, and he turns... He's, well, he's not even turned into the lady yet. He's done the eye thing. And it's like, oh no, what's going to happen now that you've done that? And um, Nori is like getting all spooked, but Sadok is like, I'll grab his leg, you run. Doing a hero thing, you see. But then the ambush happens. The, the other ladies come from around the corner because this was all a part of the plan, you see. And um, they grab themselves a throwing knife. And I, I don't know how to deliver this information to chat. They're going to they're gonna take this really badly, okay? Because this is, this is tough. This is probably one of the saddest things I've seen in cinema so far for a long time. But they get a knife known for cutting. And they, it, it's, it was not even a regular knife. It's a throwing knife. Or maybe it's both. Ooh, I guess it would be sure. both. And you they throw, throw a it. Knife, yeah. Looks as if they weren't aiming for Nori, because it goes right past Man. her. 
Instead, it hits Lenny Henry right in his belly. <laughs> no. Who could have foreseen this being a possibility? And uh, I think I was actually surprised because I was like, wait, what? I was. I was surprised too. Why Didn't are you killing him? Happened. What's the point? <laughs> it's, it's, there's not much narrative juice to be drawn from him dying. I don't, you know, it's like, whatever, really. Sardoc falls down like Sauron. Or is that actually like how disconnected the writers are from what they've created that they think that this is, like that they've done enough work for this character to make this a really sad and meaningful death? Well, they looked I around and thought, who, yeah, who, could, who could, could we possibly kill who we feel anything at all about? And they ran up short. And so they thought, uh, I, I guess Lenny Henry then. Cause... Death for the finale, yeah, yeah, Lenny Henry he has... Um... People like him, some people still like him outside of this, so maybe that'll work. You know? Right, like you're just leveraging the actor rather yes. than the character that you've created. <laughs> What's what interesting about do? trying to play up Sadak's death here as like the oh no sort of moment that isn't it sad kind of moment is that as oh we'll learn God. his death is almost immediately forgotten and no one yes then it, it's just like you could like if you stepped out a moment like if you had to pee and and, and you came back having missed the scene where he gets stabbed or, or where he dies you know you'd be like so where's uh where's him where, where, where's he at i want it to be uh, known what's going on with him you'd never know you'd never know I want it to be known that when when the when the magic was starting to develop, the subtitles say "whooshing intensifies." <laughs> whooshing. <laughs> this is this is kind of whoosh magic. And know. something I forgot: uh, when they first got here, they're looking around at the scene and they're like, "What are we gonna do here? What's that?" Like, oh, uh oh, there's only two. There was three, and then they're like, uh, uh, "Nori says, well, better two than three. Let's go." It's like. Well, it's like I said when we were um, when we were watching the episode. It's like, well, I'd much rather fight three thousand people than four thousand. Let's go. I I just the whole po well, so it's weird as well logistically because they were watching them when the scene was unfolding with the three of them, like they showed the the half bits of watching, and then they lose one. I guess she just wandered off, and then they were just like, well, don't know where she is anymore. Like, nice. You don't have to or worry about you. her. She's out of the picture. And then that's Just, the other we thing. We have it's one like, unaccounted for evil wizard. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like when I say there are now two instead of three, it's not that we only have to deal with two instead of three. It's that we do not know where the third one is. Like, I don't know why they were just like, oh, fuck it, whatever. Because obviously the twist is the third one is Gandalf. Ah! Oh my god. Which again, I don't know how they managed to do without uh, half it seeing it, but fuck it, whatever. Oh, the indignity. So we get a fight scene. It's pretty funny. Um. You get the, the sort of normal, there's just magic things happening, and looks weird. I don't, like, understand what's happening. But you get, it's kind of funny, too, because they're very dramatic. The, the, dare I say, like, body acting. This one in particular, very yeah. dramatic. <laughs> Definitely a, um, yeah, art student. Yeah, she probably did this in the, in the sort of... When they were hiring, and they like, this is pretty cool. And then she was like, oh, they love this. I'm going to do this to intense levels. Uh, It'll make me look like a magical person, a fantasy person. That's what they do. Even as they're she fighting them, like she's flipping him round in midair. <laughs> like, at one point, he's hovering on the left, and she just rotates him 180 degrees for yeah, no reason. Yeah, that shit's funny like, as hell. Like, get rotated. But uh, this, this particular part, I'm trying to snap a, an A-B repeat here. Uh... I remember it very well, because it made me rags and free laugh for a while. It's not even the thing from the thumbnail, by the way. <laughs> this one's something else. No, it's not that. That's, yeah. Alright. Got it. Enjoy this for a while. This... <laughs> Just the way that you're so fleamy. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a try-hard cringe lord. You can't... Just... <laughs> Start walking like, go normally. back to your fucking basement and your with your, your hot topic <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> I'm gonna so get you. What is what is going on? What is <laughs> this is like a protagonist from a Final Destination film. <laughs> protagonist? Like, what? Like, Why? Like, what does that have to do with Final because Destination? They're just, they're just edgy late '90s, early 2000s ish sort of like edge to it. You I don't know? remember the main character from Final Destination doing this weird run. I like the main <laughs> character in Final Destination. I liked him too. Yeah, I liked him. Not not the first one. 
Well, the second one was the girl. Well, the second one was, uh, yeah, the lady, and the third one. Well, was, this, this uh, would be, this would girl. be a hypothetical sort of final destination. What the, the hypothetical film that doesn't exist? Why would you yeah, reference like something that doesn't things. exist? Would be a hypothetical. Why did you yeah. say it was like final destination? It ain't, it ain't, it's not like it's like akin to a exists. like akin to a one, but a, a hypothetical I, one, but like okay. one similar to I, it. I, I it's akin to a thing seen, like, that doesn't exist but could exist. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know that Absolutely. I would associate the way she looks with. Is it just the M and M connection that you're grabbing there? Because the clothing really <laughs> doesn't scream be. 90s to me. It might be. It's 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 Whoa, very sponge. very difficult to disassociate the M and M from the rest of the get up. But well, we have like the metal like strapped to him, like it's a like it's a um just like just wearing metal, like the Beach chains Blonde around the belt and everything. Thing, wasn't it? Oh sure, I just mean this this outfit. You I know, know staffs were a big thing in the nineties. Oh yeah, I I had a staff. Yeah. So, I think it won't be long before we find the really funny part of this scene. So there are uh... <laughs> there's so many funny things in this clearly very epic fight sequence with magic. And we're here <laughs> laughing at it because it's so silly. Well, um, I guess it's hard to do wizard fights or something because. You like you see this, you're like, oh boy, what does this mean? What's happening? And uh, well, they managed to handle it pretty well in Star Wars. And that's kind of funny. But look at this. She goes, hurrah, and then he just goes, uh, oh, turns ninety degrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. That's not. I'm not upright anymore. Oh, here I go, spin it all the way back the other direction. Why now are I'm you going this that? way. God, the try hard face on this this witch. <laughs> Holy shit. And he's so like, at least when, at least when Gandalf oh, and Saruman are fighting, like they're throwing each other into things, yeah. and doing damage. It's not just randomly twirling them around in the air. Oh my god, the faces she's making! What the fuck? It's legitimately. <laughs> Do you see Gandalf's face? He's like, what the hell am I dealing like, with? Are you are you are you shitting right now? Oh, off I go. Oh, very epic battle. Oh my god. She was into this. She was giving it her all. She was like, this is going to be top tier. This is an 11 out of 10 TV show. So sorry to tell you. It ain't. Um, Yeah, so everyone's ran off, right, while he's battling her. So it's like, so where are the other demon witches? Probably something bad is going to happen. And then a throwing knife dodges the Chungus by like an inch. It's so upsetting. We could have lost another character, but they found a way <laughs> out of it. It's a weird knife. Like a little moon. How do you, yeah, it's not even, it's like a shit boomerang. <laughs> Fringy. How, um, you, yeah. I mean, you, I, I, look, I, I'm not an expert on boomerangs, okay? I, well, uh, that's not true, but what, you know, as, you know, so what is your this query, really crap rag? boomerang isn't, I just want you to back me up on this. Well, the fundamental nature of a boomerang is that when you throw it, it returns to you. That's like the, fundamental aspect of what what makes a boomerang a boomerang this uh this one just sort of sticks in the tree um which i guess a not, boomerang wouldn't come back to you yeah. if you threw it into a tree though right um i mean but why would you throw it into a tree you know like hey, if you're trying to hit the hard foot in front of it with your i i guess if you were aiming to uh, right so like in a sense right the boomerang returns to you because you haven't succeeded uh, in this case, it hasn't returned to her Would you because say... I guess she succeeded in pinning what's her face to the the tree. Yeah, what makes a boomerang boomerang boomerang's... is the capacity to return back to you. It is the capacity to return. Yes, so that's like a big aspect of what makes a boomerang what it is. I don't know if this one would return. I think it wouldn't actually. I think it would just uh, drop. I think it would just heavy. keep going. Anyway, he turns and she realizes Sadok has been hiding here. Look under a little thing. And he's fucking ready, okay? Because he got stabbed. He pulled that bitch out of himself. He's about to bring it down. Bring down some justice. He's but about to bring this... down the full wrath of a Harfoot. This is a surprise attack, but before he actually like reveals himself, he blows the whistle that distracted them the first time to <laughs> announce that he was about to do it. <laughs> so, that's it in foot. And uh, she has a reaction to this. 
<laughs> oh my god she looks like yoda when yoda goes back and goes oh you're right that is like yoda it's just yoda. like yoda <laughs> <laughs> seriously one of the funniest faces i've seen in such a long time <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old. I know it's only been 20 seconds, but it never gets old. Oh my gosh. The eyes, the way they bulge. <laughs> it is kind of perfect. You the fact that like, like the, the teeth are the hidden. The weirdest looking people. It's the teeth not being there that really makes it. <laughs> Gummy scream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, that's got to cut Sadok's hand really bad, right? Yep. Because if that's like a crescent knife and you're using it to plunge the tip into the... The, the sharpie bits are going to fuck your hand up because you need to grip it to push it into a foot. I imagine that's actually quite difficult. But... Well, you can tell he's awkwardly got his fingers covering like the top, I guess, top end of it. And like that, I think he even knew when he was probably filming that that this would be bad to do. But luckily, this is a prop, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it's these little gifts that you just have to appreciate. These are what make it not worthwhile, ultimately, <laughs> but you know, still, it's pretty nice. Pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you're just like, wait, wasn't there three of them? It's like, I don't even fuck. Whatever. The fight continues awkwardly, unfortunately. I think, by the way, this is like your, your finale action scene, and it's just wonky as fuck. <laughs> There was no other one. Yeah. Like, isn't this so exciting? And it's with characters no. that we've spent like five minutes with these villainous ones, and then we barely know the Gandalf guy. Oh my god, every single time. Look at this lady walking. Can't do anything normally. <laughs> Weird jittery <laughs> movements. <laughs> I think they would like she was told not to, right? Like, don't do anything like a normal person because you're a mystical, crazy witch person. Okay. It's yeah, this is a fantasy world or whatever. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's all over. She's, she's. What was weird is that one of them said, "Make him see," and in response to that, she's about to hit him with the staff. I guess. Looking an angry face. That... Look at the face. Oh my. Do you see? Oh no, it's gonna tie not Gandalf down and show him all the pictures of her. Yeah. The whole day that they went on. God, she's so into this. Anyway, they throw a rock at her and she's like, ow. And it's like, what? It's a rock. And then like, the person <laughs> ducks down and they're oh, actually yeah. like tormenting her with just throwing pebbles. Oh god, it's so hard to watch. She's so dumb. Um, but they throw enough of them that she drops the staff, too, and then Nori takes it. She's just waiting, waiting for... that. That's part of the plan, yep. I guess. Or maybe just incidentally. But was it part of the plan to get her to drop the staff? Yeah, because or... she wants to give it to the wizard man who can defeat them with the staff. That's, that's obvious, okay. right? How did you figure that out? So anyway, uh... she burns the whole forest down. Because, you know. Yeah, as, as you do. As you do. A bit awkward. Uh, she sets a forest fire here that could likely wipe out the entire thing, though. So huge when they zoom out. It's just like, god damn, you're kind of an asshole, aren't you? <laughs> Whatever, I guess. When it pans out, there's one bit that isn't on fire, and it kind of looks like she just goes, eh, might as well do this bit as well. Yeah. I don't think there's even a hobbit there. Yeah, never leave a job, job half done. Just in case there is one. Um, but yeah, and then uh, you, you really, like... Gandalf's waking up with all the trees on fire, and he's like, Oh, nature. Killing it with fire. <laughs> fire is technically nature, too. Yeah. I, I hate this scene, because he could help them. And he's just like, can't be bothered at this point. Well, he says, he's like, not I might hurt you. And it's like, oh, as opposed to us getting immolated? Like, I feel like you should just give it a shot, mate. <laughs> it might be worthwhile. I don't know. I just want to, don't want to die. <laughs> Sorry, given past it, experience, so. one of them would run in the way when of whatever it was he was doing, yeah. and then they would scold him for it, and he would be sent away. I mean, why would you bother helping these people? They're clearly ungrateful. 
Um, he says, like, get away from me, you know, or I'll hurt you. And, uh, he says, and this comes up as a payoff. Oh, God, this, this comes up in all kinds of things, right? The idea that your choices define who you are sort of thing. The standard sort of oh. thing. She says, only you can show what you are. Which, first of all, is already like, oh, that's a bit clunky. Only you can yeah, show what you are. I would have rewarded that. Yeah, and then she says, you choose that. by what you do. It's you so clunky. Oh, it's God, so the weird. English is getting like fucked. It's, <laughs> it's really, and it stands really, out. really it, clunky. Yeah, this one is... Uh, mm. Well, it's just, and, you know, this is probably one of the least elegant ways that you could convey this yeah. point. But it, it's not I mean, even, it doesn't even come across as being unelegant in the sense of they are not an elegant people, the Harfoots. And they speak very plainly in a sort of vulgar way. It feels just like even then, it just it just. Well, I mean, you can uh, tell, right? The Iron Giant's core thing was you are who you choose to be. That's like a way. It's a much more straightforward way of communicating the exact same thing. Yeah, like I said, or, uh, loads of things know, go over the this. End, that choice defines the end of Deus Ex. We are our choices. You just so many other ways, <laughs> but then it's like what only you. What did she say? Only you choose by what you do. You show who you what? are with what you choose to do. Oh, fuck. I wish I'd written it down. <laughs> you you, you gotta, choose by you what you do. Like, oh. You yeah. Your actions you define do. you would have been... Yeah, yeah, just so many other, like... It, it's so clunky. I just... Well, it gets worse, because <laughs> she's saying this in response to him basically being like, I'm, I'm evil, sad face. And she's like, no, 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 no. Because I'm are... told I'm evil by these random weirdos in the yeah, woods. Yeah, I know, right? She's trying to tell him, like, it's a, like, you aren't anything yet. It's up to you. What do you want to be? And then she follows that up with, you're good. I know it's true. You're a good person. You'll choose to do good. It's like, well, that kind of destroyed your first point, didn't it? <laughs> it's, it's completely up to me to choose, but also do this. Are they trying to imply that he's kind of come down and it, he's in, like, an imprinting stage? So if they hadn't found him first... Oh, then God. he would have been evil if they'd found him first. I don't I know like what I'm meant to yeah. make of any of that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, good, that, that would be fucking hilarious if true. I imagine that they would counter, it's like, well, no, Nor Nori's just, like, helping him, you know, sort of be the person that he was always meant to be, you know? Not not that he is a completely blank slate who could have been molded by whoever... He's not Wonder Woman, all right? Like, yeah, I thought can, the idea was he has know, a personality that's just slowly being regained. Something. Because the, alter figured, the alternative yeah. is, if he is just a blank slate, then if the Harfords hadn't turned up at this precise moment and implausibly won, then the weird witchy people would have elevated somebody who isn't Sauron to Sauron's power, power level and completely changed the entire future Everything. of Middle-earth by creating a, a new different Sauron, who probably would have been more powerful and beaten Sauron, and then the entire thing changes. So uh, apparently this is an incredibly pivotal moment in the entire history of Middle-earth. Yeah, th this is an intense string of coincidences. I feel we've, we've kind of glossed over that in the sea of all the other garbage. It is hard like, to keep track is... of them because we've had so many, like, next-level holes and crazy nonsense to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, they have this shot. She's doing it again. It's like, flee me walk. <laughs> the flee me walk. They keep thinking it's really intimidating, but every time oh. I'm just like, uh... <laughs> It's so bizarre. I guess they think it's neat, so good for them. But yeah, he gets inspired then by Nori to do good, because that's that's <laughs> a man. Oh, the oh, line is no. coming. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this whole time, by the way, all of the witches have forgotten about that staff, which apparently with that staff you can just like easily defeat all of them. When when they had it, they were kind of able to defeat him. So. You might have thought they'd want to be taking a little bit more care on that one, but hey, whatever. He's got it now. Too late. He puts out all the fires. I like, was like, all right, all right. Well, this is Yeah, it's yeah. good. He says, from the shadow you came to the shadow you will return. It's like, yeah, that that's a normal last line, I guess. Fine. Whatever. And before he does... He stole it. Most of the normal sounding lines have been stolen from the... Yeah, I figure. I think figure. he stole that one, too. Um... <laughs> And, oh, God. So they say, uh, he's not Sauron, he's the other, the Istar. He's, and he cuts them off to say, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> not even I am good. Contraction. I'm mm -hmm. good. I, 
This is like the. Th don't do this ever. <laughs> Me it's like the sh it's it's a shitty version of like this it doesn't belong here the I'm good thing where it's just sort of uh really basic uh this this learning that I am good and that's a big like it, it like it belongs in a Pixar movie you know like it works there but it doesn't it doesn't work here there like, are, I think there are contexts where Pixar you can make movie this might work. be overestimating their estimation of the audience the, the entire thing with with Gandalf is the, is to have the audience asking, oh, is Gandalf good or isn't he good? And we can't possibly just show people the answer to that. We literally have to tell them it in the dialogue. He has to actually shout, I am good, in order that the audience that they think they're writing for understand that this is the payoff to that mystery. And now we know. It's, or, uh... or they think that it is, what I think what the writers hope is that they have sufficiently been demonstrating to the audience that he has been struggling with coming to terms with his his either goodness or his evil, and this is his moment where he finally realizes and accepts that he is good. Which would be fine if if it showed that he had any understanding of what well. those terms meant, which he doesn't, because nope. he doesn't actually know what good and evil mean when he first hears the term. Yeah, he oh, he's, he's basically parody. just like a, a baby when he falls from the sky. It's not like he's like he has an evil nature and he's trying to keep it back or something like that. It, it doesn't really work with the way that they've presented this character. And man, imagine like if you knew the Harfoots really well and you're like, I've been inspired to do good by them, you'd be like, oh shit. Was that, what is it? You're going to eat us? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, what does that yeah. mean to you? He's good with quotation marks. I do like he's, that, he's though. He's good on, on the Harfoot scale. Good is saving the Harfoots in this case, okay? <laughs> right? No. Definitely. I like that with, with the still image and the contraction, which, which of course makes it sound incredibly casual, if you look, if you hadn't seen the scene and you looked at the still image on screen now, what sort of tone of voice would you imagine that being delivered in? If you like, if you hadn't seen the show, because I would look at that and I think he's just he's casually saying like, eh, "I'm good," and then denying like uh, an invitation. This is after just... he annihilates him. He's like, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. you could have it be, map. "I'm praising my own skill," or "No, nah, I'm alright, thank you." You wouldn't have expected it to be literally. Yeah. I am morally Need positive. <laughs> I help people because I'm nice. It's just because, no, this was genius. Because some of the people in the writing room were like, there are some people out there who won't grasp this, that he's had an arc, that he's understanding things. <laughs> we have him say, I'm good. Like, who's going to make the mistake at that point? It's all coming together. All the pieces. Because there's someone out there might have said, like, I think he's bad. And then they'd be like, no, 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 dude, look, 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 look. And they pull up the script and they're like, see where he says, I'm good? Pretty sure that means he's good. And then the other person's like, oh. Oh, I, I must have stepped out or I was doing something else. Okay, I yeah, forgot I that, that line. But he was evil. I was too busy being blown away by the incredible CGI. Yes. Do you think they My even understood brain, yeah. the mix between saying that your actions define you and therefore the words don't matter and you, you just do good and you are good? And then he had to tell everybody. <laughs> he to announce I'm good. Yeah, it's like Southland's Mordor. You can't rely on people to infer. It has to be told. So, I thought this was hilarious. He's like, I'm good. Boom. And then this happens. And she immediately goes skeleton mode. And I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, what have you done? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Oh, Are you God. ring rates or some shit? What the actual fuck is going on? Is that what that's supposed to be? They're like... They are really... No. Like they can't Never because powers. there are no rings for to make them wraiths. Oh, right. Yet. Are they, they stack ring wraiths? wraiths. They're Jesus just wraiths. Christ, look at these three... The middle one, she even looks like <laughs> the one on the crown. left is like, huh? Ah, Dude, like the she's middle one a, looks like a, a sad she's skull. She's sticking her head out the window of a moving car. Look, it's a sad skull. <laughs> like, it's where actually, did she get the crown? Though? I, I was thinking that, yeah, it's, it's wearing a crown. Like, this is this is the Witch King of Angmar scene. Like, the, the, the ghost is crowned still. Yeah. And it's just, they, they're clearly going for that. But, and I've seen people on Twitter say, what the fuck, why are they, why are they Nazgul now? And I, I don't think there are. I can't, the show can't surely have introduced ring wrecks oh, think, before there were rings i think <laughs> your, your assumed theory there is the correct one of just look like that other thing you knew remember yeah the one on the right doesn't seem bothered by this the one in the middle seems sad the one on the left like rag said is enjoying having the wind blown in there <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
I love the subtitle, I'm good, is still there. Just, <laughs> just chilling out. Like, I'm good. Oh, this scene was bad. And they just keep doing it. They can't make a good scene. It's like beyond their capabilities. It's impossible. To moths. I don't know why this is what's happening, but it is. And if I Gandalf can do this, ghost, then or I revealed you as ghosts, anyway. like you were ghosts all along, or I turned you into ghosts, because I could turn your ghost into moths. So did I turn you into a ghost? I guess <laughs> that's what you do whenever you saying, kill someone, fuck? you it's turn like, them into a ghost. Guys, do you really think we have the answers for this? Moths. I have no idea what <laughs> this means. I don't even know if they're dead. Like, I have no idea. That's true. They might just be like, fuck this. Oh, it's, I'm uh, out of team. here. I'm going bomb He's bomb and blasting off again. I hope they're dead because I find them irritating. But yes. I really hope they're not dead. They are funny, I, I do actually want to understand what the fuck is going on at some point in this show. So if they're never going to bring them back and that's just it, which I, I suspect is the thing they will do, they'll just be gone now and no one will ever address it again. That's well, just going to be really, really annoying. I, I, I kind of want to know at least what the rules are that they're fucking around with, but we're not going to get I that. I thought they'd come back with, like, uh, other Easterlings and just in bigger numbers. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, like, a set uh, of nine of the... What if we get nine? That would be so cool. No, no. What if they rode horses? What if they wore black <laughs> next time? <laughs> they wore black this time. Like, so, moths don't like rivers. It all, oh. It's all coming together. <laughs> Someone asked me, uh, does this mean that the moths in Lord of the Rings are these witches turned into slaves by Gandalf? <laughs> That'd be funny. I, I just don't even know what they want us to think from this, because it still says I'm good. <laughs> what, what's going on there? <laughs> really hammering it home. <laughs> oh, wind whooshing, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they want us to draw from this, but holy fuck, Gandalf, that was a pretty powerful move you just did there. I hope well, you use it in what future I was, when you need to. We'll never see that again. <laughs> what I was told was that killing, going out of your way to try and kill hork, kill orcs, isn't good, but it's good to kill witches. Yes. Well, no. So yeah. that's a little confusing. Oh, that's remember, turn them into moths. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if Galadriel's like, you didn't kill those witches, right? He's like, no, no, I turned them into moths. It's like, oh, good, good, good. You, you don't want dark to, to darken your heart. Moths okay. only have a lifespan of like a week. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I haven't killed them. I've just ensured that they will die of natural causes imminently. But they'll enjoy the life cycle, you know? It'll, we'll have kids and we'll have kids. and Gorge is wonderful. Circle of life. Oh no, Sadok's dead. Uh, and this is a really weird scene. Wait, because well, yeah. Very weird scene. No, Nobody you suggests the magical man that does amazing things might be able to save him. Or medicine, or resting, or lay there, we'll go get help, or I know the herbs of the forest, or... Yeah, they don't try to do anything. He basically says, like, I don't wanna... I'm alright, actually. I don't wanna live. This show is cringe. Oh. This is... This show is so shit, I would literally rather die. <laughs> See, he's, he's not even... He doesn't even seem to be in pain. He's not dying. It is just a case of voluntarily checking out. It really feels like... He opted to leave because he'd been stabbed, and that's an option you have as a character in a fiction. It's like, I can just go now. That's the rules. Bye. I don't want to stay. Even to the point of him saying, like, I'd like to see the sun rise. And then the sun just rises immediately. And it's like, well, there you go. Oh, I thought that would take longer. I stand unshaken. <laughs> Except not at all. At point at all. I just don't know why he's, he's accepted this. He's just resigned to death. Yeah, it's yeah, just over. and that's the that that's it. That's him. That's his. And not character. only is he resigned to it, but everybody else is too. They just like passively accept this rather than. Oh, well, I guess to he wants him. to die. So I mean, yeah, he's he's just you're he's the boss. Be fair, dying here is probably better than being left behind by the Harfords. So that's true. Because yeah. slow death God knows by these, they wouldn't help yeah. him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but so them, by the way, saying he is the East Star. That's like the East Star of the 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 wizards, right? Is that another? Yeah, they're the history. Yeah, so it's a collective. We're close to a full uh confirmation of exactly who he is, but I would say the closest we get is his, I think, last line in this episode that a lot of people were not happy with, and we'll get mm -hmm. to it. Great. Back to Numenor plotline. Um, 
they even so we're running out of things to fill this episode with and so they have this shot of one of the sailors just slow motion walking over the ship it's just like why it's like well because it will take longer if we put it in slow motion yeah yeah that's filmmaking that's the art of filmmaking the the, the language of filmmaking what does that tell you what is this saying in the language of filmmaking? And uh, we go below deck and see that Elendil's talking to uh, Muriel. And he's trying to move around the ship by memorizing all the steps to go different places. And he says, you're doing well. And she says, patronize me again like that and I will take your ship. <laughs> so Muriel's a prick and I'm glad she's uh, blind. I just you. <laughs> They always do that with the show. They never Why are do you it. shit. Never have a piece of dialogue where I go, Oh, that was neat. That says a lot about them and that that fits the thing and uh, and, like, and nothing has happened yeah. between this scene and essentially the one before where he said, I, I should have left the elf in the sea. But he has entirely changed his whole position on elves just for this boat. For no yeah. reason. Oh fuck, what does he say in total here? He's like, You once asked me why I pulled her from the sea. And he like, he yeah. says something about what his name my, means. Yeah, my name yeah, doesn't just mean someone who looks at the stars something. or something like that. But his, yeah, the other meaning of his name is Elf Friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> elf I did yeah. what I did because my name means a thing. Yeah, that's good. They wrote that and they had him say it and it's so <laughs> stupid and it hurts his character so much. Did you do it because you? it was the right thing to do? Because you felt sorry for her? Because she reminded you of someone? Because if it doesn't... No, it's because my name means elf friend. So if I see an elf, I better help him. Because my I, I don't want to have an ironic name. It's just because you had the whole exchange with Muriel in episode um, three, three, I think it's three, where she she says your name has a second meaning, doesn't it? And he says, yes, it's elf friend. They have the whole argument when he explains, well, he pulled her out because the sea is always right and, and he did what he thought was right, which at least affords him agency and a decision. Yeah. And something that you can then critique, and then you have that weird exchange where she says, "If that's what you wish, or whatever it is." But if you then just yeah, if you just reduce it to, "No, nah, I did it because because my name says says a thing." I, when she what, says, um, no, actually, it's not it's not contradicting his character. It just it actually just takes character away from him entirely. Yeah, that just means he's he's predetermined by linguistics. Well, and she says in response to all of that that like my father had said about faith that you. Could expect like there will be a price and that you should like be unwavering and then he's like well sometimes the price is quite a bit and she's like yes it is and he's like well may as well continue having faith as if to say my faith in elf friend is costing me a lot and it's like yeah well this sunk cost fallacy no point in stopping now <laughs> like you've already paid the price <laughs> like what is this what are we learning from this you have to check the haven't... meaning of your name and follow whatever it says I don't think it's... The show hasn't done this properly at all. I don't think... The faith part isn't... I don't think it's supposed to be about his name. It's not faith in his name and, and the meaning of his name. So the point of the faithful, which is... The, the term has popped up in the show before, and in relation to both of these characters. And the point of the faithful is that they are supposed to be faithful to the Valar, which by extension means faithful to the elves, because the elves are the, the firstborn and they are mm -hmm. the closest in line to the Valar. And so the faith aspect, I don't think is supposed to come across as, well, my name says so, therefore I must. But because it's just dropped in the word faithful, really without context and not particularly memorably, that's how it does come across when he says it in this line. And she's one of the faithful as well. So the point they're supposed to be, I think, be hinting at is back to all this factional arrangement that exists in Numenor. But because the show is just so incompetently written, nobody would actually grasp that unless they'd read the law stuff that the show has discarded in all other respects. Have they even shown the other faction? No, apart from... Farazon has a band of sort of plebs who are <laughs> very hostile to the elves, like they're the anti-immigrant lot, but they haven't oh, been yeah. defined really as a faction, and they, I don't think they've been named as the Kingsmen either. So it is just, we've had mention of the faithful, that's basically it. I think that's what they're referring to here, but it hasn't been properly explained or set up, so nobody would know. Uh, so they it set up total earlier in the episode that black sails means the king has died, and then 
a couple scenes later, they're like, Black sails, boys. The king's died. Ah, next season, oh, boy. there will be a fight for power. Yeah. It will be as good as House of the Dragon, I'm sure of it. Look at yeah. all those ships that they didn't send to invade I know, the Earth. I know, I <laughs> know. And I can't believe how these people would feel about the fact that, like, wait, one is coming back, everybody is wounded, and the Queen has lost her fucking vision. How did you guys fuck up so badly in a couple of days? Can you believe a volcano exploded? And they're like, no. You're like, oh, well, that, that actually happened. Oh, well, it did. <laughs> you trust it. We'll, we will all confirm that all of our stories are straight. Um, and then there's an explosion in Celebrimbor's forging place. Turns out, uh, even with their most powerful tools, the mithril is proud, and they can't get it to f seal with other... merge with other metals, despite their incredible force. And my god, <laughs> the fucking way they suggest... This. I hate this so much. Like, you present this as an issue. The metal refuses to merge with other metals. It's like, oh, that sounds annoying. It's like, so how do we do it then? Oh. Like, well, uh, and he's like, we need more time to figure. He's like, we don't have time. And then Galadriel's like, perhaps we've been pushing ourselves too hard. Which I don't know how that helps like anything right now. But that clues Holbrad did to a particular piece of wisdom. Perhaps we're pushing the metal too hard, and instead of trying to crush it together with giant whatever the fuck we're doing, it should be drawn or coaxed you know, together. The metal is likely, you know, unionized, and so I, uh, you gotta, <laughs> you know, how it, how it goes. You it's gotta... actually baffling, because they keep trying to make it so that it's Sauron's little decisions that allow these rings to be made. But right now, we, we've already had the absolute dumbassery before, but this time, it's how do you merge metals? And it's like, Caleb Brimble was literally smashing them together like a Bobby and Ken doll. Just like, come on, do the thing. <laughs> and then Sauron's like, maybe we should melt them together. Mm. And like, uh, isn't that what you normally do? I mean, I assume yes. they were melting them, but also doing it under pressure. But I, I, I thought they were trying to imply that the mithril is almost semi-sentient. Like the one ring is meant to have kind of a kind you get that impression like... because you said coax the metals and like what yeah and it's proud but like, why wouldn't you try melting yeah. them together isn't that something a normal smith would do yes but we've already established that the master smith Calabrimbor is is a moron um and is is this, is this tied to episode one stuff about the the experiments in in the northern the very far northern fortress when he's they, they find yes. out because I think they use the line don't they about the, yeah. the forces beyond this one, and so this is sort of Sauron's moment of realization as well I guess so it, you could kind of excuse it on the grounds that he's put a lot of work and research into this and so he's jumped to this conclusion because of that past work and experience where other people might not have done because they haven't I... done that work. But my whole issue that is would... that this is something that Calibrimbo would try. It's like, how do we yeah. fucking hit a hole in this wall and we have three tools, a hammer, a chisel, and a, I don't know, a blanket. And you're like, well, let's try all three, see what happens. It's like a video game at this point. Like, it's, this is not complicated. I don't know why he keeps solving these Buy problems this way. ingredients to discover new recipes. Um, also, I, I, like, I'm not a metallurgist or anything like that. I would assume, though, that if you're experimenting with trying to get different metals to bond for an alloy... You would probably start at lower pressure and lower temperature and then work your way up rather than just start at maximum pressure. And if it doesn't work, just carry on. To the point where it explodes. Yeah, and it <laughs> kills a whole bunch of people. So anyway, he comes down to tell Gladriel the good news. But the thing is, they're going to have to make something smaller than a crown. You know, something smaller, but kind of like a circle. A bracelet. Like, like, a, like a, hmm. Maybe, maybe a break a bracelet. Maybe something else. I don't know. But hey, whatever. And then she's like, hey. Tell me who you are. And he's like, whoa, what do you mean? You know exactly who I am. She's like, nuh uh, who you really are. And he's like, oh, Galadriel, I don't I'm know what Kevin. you're talking about. And then she like tosses the. That's hilarious, by the way. Like, she, she tosses the thing and it's like slightly in front of her as if to imply, come and pick it up. And then she explains what it is after he's looked at it. Like, like just an awkward, like, are you going to tell me what that is? Or are you going to. Then he goes over and picks it up anyway, right? To have a look. Just funny, because just just be Look clear. at all these people who aren't related to you. Like, oh, all right. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so yeah. she's exposed him live in 4K that he's not in the You're line right. of men. And he says, well, I did tell you I wasn't. 
And then she was Which like, is a fair response. <laughs> point, yes. It is entirely a fair <laughs> response. He could have just said, like, is it is it so bad for, you know, a, you know, a humble smith to want to be something greater, to be a king or something like that? Ooh, yeah, but he's retarded, though. That's true. If you do factor in that he is retarded, then it does make sense that he goes, actually, I am spooky. Ha 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 ha. But it's, it's not just him, because apparently... Okay, so she's found this out now, and, okay, big reveal. But he was in the Southlands a little while ago. Yeah. And Fighting orcs? They were told that their king had returned. They're the people who know whether they have a king or not because of broken lineage. And no, yet, no, when they were told the king was stupid. there, they're, yeah, they're so they? <laughs> they'll just be like, "Oh, all right, he's our king." Yeah, That's it. yeah. It's like no one if thinks to mention it's your king. If, but surely someone would have mentioned. Hang on a minute. The king died like a thousand years ago. He had no. He had no children, so that can't be. These people they must know. To bathe. They don't know anything. Why did they never replace him? Yeah, well, what was the arrangement in that region at the in the preceding uh, subsequent thousand years? But then you had angry white teenage kid in episode one shouting angrily My about fears. the return of their true king. So, oh, yeah, I'm not even sure the writers remembered or knew ever what was was going on here. But the people of the Southlands should have been in a position to say when he was presented to them as their well, as their uh, true king, the descendant. Maybe, maybe actually, this guy can't be our king. Sorry. Couldn't he say he's a bastard? And that no one knew about him. Uh, me? I missed that if he did. It's possible. No, couldn't he say it? I mean, like, oh, couldn't he? He couldn't. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just saying. Like, so think about the motivations of him right now. Does he just want to tell Harry Sauron in this scene, or is he seeing this as I I'm cornered? Only... I'm going to have to tell you. I can. I, um. I guess he wants to because he isn't cornered. Whether or not he thinks he's cornered, I guess is. I'm just I trying to tell if he's this is his opportunity to lure her to his side. Well, yeah, I would else. argue he's a little too early it, on that one. But he did it in a stupid. He did it in a super creepy way. He yep. did the. He they did always the do it that way, Rex. Steel. Every time, every time a villainous character tries to tempt a hero over in something shit, he shows them a pillar of skulls and says, "Look, this could be yours." <laughs> like, Wah -ha -ha. <laughs> it, he never it, tried. Yeah. Uh, so annoyed. Yeah, there's this moment I thought that was just kind of funny, where she's like, but you save me on the raft. He's like, you save me on the raft. It's like, well, you both... Whatever. No, she didn't save him mm -hmm. at all. I, the I only thing say, she did on that, that raft is, like, give him a hand up but to get back on, which I'm sure he could have done on his own. And then she says, you convinced Muriel to save the men of Middle-earth, and he's like, well, you convinced her. Then I was just like, yeah, that's true. And I think Gladriel knows that. She was pushy as fuck. Like, unless is, you're talking about that final speech that he gave that we never saw. Is the fact that uh, he actually really did save her life when she went overboard on the raft, is that ever going to get brought up? Like, she kind of owes him a little bit, or does that mean anything? That was a manipulation. Was that never... it wasn't anything oh. reasonable. Oh, okay. And she's like, All you right. fought beside me. And he's like, against your enemy and mine, which I don't even understand as a clarification. It's like, isn't that the implied thing that you fought with me? Yeah, orcs are our, both of our enemies. That sounds weird for Sauron to do. Sauron to do to kill orcs. Well, no, he's, he's fighting. Guess are Adar's Adar. orcs. Yeah, which is... Adar uh, killed him essentially, or stabbed him. Mm. And yeah, she's like, "Tell me your name." He's. I think he says, "I've been. I've been awake before the break of the first silence." And uh, I, I'm just, I guess that was a long time ago. It's probably a long time ago. Yeah. And then he says, <laughs> yeah, "I have sure. had many names." And I'm just like, "Why would you? Could you just said your name is George?" <laughs> Some have called me. I just sort of sad why why like reveal the big the big potatoes. Goes evil. Yeah, he even plays some evil music in the background. Why would you do he that? Does. He tells the creators of the show to play the evil music just in case you were confused as to his true nature. What a like I just wanted to point out by the way, we've we've always been breaking down these episodes with this knowledge already. But like how absurd. Like, Adar is Sauron. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, oh, okay, well, Gandalf is. No, 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 he's not. It's Holbrand? Oh, my God. It was that guy. Oh, my God, oh, my His God. story was going nowhere. I just don't understand. Like, for anybody who had no idea that was coming, how does that come across? You'd just be like, what? Hmm. That's Sauron? Like, yep. Okay. And so, to clarify next, Sauron has the ability to make you hallucinate very vivid dreams to the point of, like, you being immobilized, presumably, right? 
I guess uh, that's what's yes, happening sorry. here. I guess, yeah. He, he has loads he of powers can... in the law. He can shapeshift. He can turn into werewolves and vampires. I don't think he's got sort of mind. Uh, How many no werewolves? Uh, he has quite a lot, but he could turn into one. Yeah. All right. Over a dozen. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know. Probably yes. He had a whole oh, fortress of them on an island. All right. That's fair enough. All right. All right. I'm just checking. I'm just curious. So, uh, puts her in Dreamland back with her brother. And he's just like, you can you can calm down now. Great. It's all over. Uh, I think she's like aware that this is bullshit, but she doesn't do much about it for a while. Let's him speak for, for a little bit. Um, I think he's just like Sauron trying to convince her that he's actually a good guy. Which is uh, difficult, I suppose. Um, I guess he's trying to convince her that he isn't evil anymore. Yeah. Um... Which I'm seeking like, seeking a power to not be? to destroy Middle Earth, but to heal it. Then why? How come you guys are all super dark and evil? What's that about? The the music and the stomping, burning. I guess he isn't yet, or he isn't necessarily. Um, I thought he already had the really outfit earlier, right? Remember we in like episode did. One? That's true. <laughs> yes. Um, but I guess they've kind of forgotten about that. Or whether whether the argument is actually that okay, well that's that was his. And if you, you know, if you go back to like the Silmarillion, for example, the, he sided with Morgoth not because he actually agreed with what Morgoth was doing in the sense that he liked evil, dark, fiery stuff. He did it because his first and abiding love is this sense of like cosmic order, and he just thought, well, Morgoth wants this, and he can get it more quickly than I can. I'm not actually evil. I just think that this is the most efficient way to do what I want to do in terms of establishing order in the world. And it happens to be that Morgoth then turns him evil after that sort of that invitation. Obviously, we've got none of that in this show. It depends how much they want to backfill in subsequent seasons as to whether they do that. And I, I get that's the only way I've been able to sort of read his subsequent. I, I'm not evil. I, I just want you know to heal the world. Yeah. I'm not a dark force. I'm just I'm value neutral essentially. I just want order. He's the ultimate technocrat. And um, I, I don't. It's it's just really weird trying to read in. And I think going back to the thing you said earlier, like people who didn't know what was coming, how would they have taken this? It is weird because I think they've deliberately not, they've not given him any motive. It's not that they've given him motive to be good. He's not, this isn't a choice between good or evil. It's just a case that, well, if we keep him completely blank, then we can do whatever we want with him. It will jar up when the audience sees it, but at least then it allows us to get to this point without doing too much work as writers. It, but it, it makes very little sense, if any at all. And it goes against everything we know at this point, because he's like, I want to heal the earth. But his last plan was to blow up the volcano and make all the land dark <laughs> you don't and a land for evil to not what was, was it not Adar's just live plan. in but prosper or something like that. So well, well, it was Ador's plan. It is Ador's plan. But no, I'm that's sure Sauron is the one that constructed Sauron's all of it too. Didn't he set it all up, Sauron? Yeah, I, it was Sauron's plan that Adar completed. As yeah, from what I thought, and Adar did it because he wants to have a place where the orcs can be chill. He Should have just stayed where they were before, I guess. Now, I have a theory. Oh, okay. God. He says, uh, you killed my brother. And then he says, Galadriel, why would you say that? And it cuts back yeah, to it. <laughs> and they were like, when you say you killed my brother, you're going to want to be feeling a lot here. You're feeling a lot. There's a lot of feels. So we're going to need you to cry. And then they filmed it, and she wasn't crying. And she was having trouble with this. She was like, ah, oh, fuck, I can't get the tears out. And they're like... We can do the thing. We'll cut away from you, and we'll cut back. We'll have the little squiddy bottle, and we'll get a couple of tears going. It'll be fine. They didn't put in her right eye, though. Instead, they squeezed three tears into her left eye and nothing in her right eye. Um, <laughs> and so it just looks super awkward to me. I don't believe this is a genuine set of tears right now. I think this is an awkwardly put. No, her eyes aren't red. No, she, it, it, she it, just her eye, her eye, her lids aren't really. It's no, it's totally fine. Can you fake. see you got? One sliding down just a little bit, one really far down, then there's one in the middle at the top. I don't know if it comes through very well on this video, but this just it looks like someone squeezed in this area and three dropped out all at the same time. That's very rare for tears to do that, by the way, at least as far as I'm aware anyway. They don't just like three come out of different directions of your eye at the same time. And nothing in your other eye? That's just strange to me. Yeah, it doesn't light up. Someone said CGI? If you're gonna CGI tears, why would you do it this way? 
because it's Man, they're it bad. Could be. It actually could be, yeah. But like, wouldn't if you're gonna CGI it, wouldn't you want to try and make her eyes match? As Rags just said, you want that little bit of redness in there. I I mean, like, I just, I don't know. I if the director know, just it, said it just... add tears, maybe. I mean, I could believe it's the squeezy it ball. Just... Either way, it's not real, and this is a failure of acting. So I don't know how much I could blame you for not being emotionally attached to this scene, but... Because someone said, yeah, you just put yeah, eye drops in their eyes. Onto. The camera isn't rolling. And to me, it really seems like they put it in what I forgot the other word, that they just went with it. That's got to be awkward, though, like, if you have to use eye droppers, right? Like, that's kind um, of... I would presume that, that would be kind of awkward. Yeah, I have know? to use a lifeline. You want to be able to cry on cue as an actor, right? That's like a meme of, like, it'll, it'll get I, to like, point. Well, yourself. It's, you it's think the point. Right, like, when you can't act you do the like face and you like sort of but you no tears come out yeah meanwhile a lot of actors meme. like daisy ridley is an actress that can just like start crying as if everything is some people seem to be able to do it on command yeah like they can just do it instantly um i i guess it just i imagine it's a little bit awkward it's like oh damn like i need to use like an eyedropper you know like, our protagonist bit. can't cry for her essentially well, I mean, motivating I say, the motivating I mean, death behind her. I would find it difficult to fault anybody because it's like, what is there to latch onto with this character to like really fuel that like do you even fully is it even can you even fully understand like what the point is or what they're going for with this with this character, you know? I don't know. Jesus Christ. Rings of Power Season 2 will tell a more canonical story, according to the Lord of the Rings showrunners. There may well be <laughs> viewers who are like, this is the story we were hoping to get in Season 1. In Season 2, we're giving it to them. But how, how oh, can they do that, past. given that they fucked up the you, entire yeah, premise you fucked in Season the foundation. 1? So now, how do you build now on a foundation in a canonical way? Yeah, that doesn't make it's, sense. It's, yeah, it's like, um... It's 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 screwed. Like, well, yeah, like, if, if, listen, guys, if, the the first floor was really unstable, but the second floor is going to be really well done. It would be like if they made a Halo a, season two, which I assume they are. Yeah, right? um, and then yeah, I was filming. I was actually going to say if it was with Halo season two, and they're like, we're going to be more faithful. It's like it's too late. It's too late. It's like, too late. Yeah, fucked all the foundation. You've already you already it. Yeah. You have to restart. You have to. I mean, yeah, you have to restart, or you have well. to commit to your version of Halo, which is Halo crap 5 that no would one be likes. An example of that, because Halo Five destroys everything, and then Halo Infinite, they try to ignore as much of it as possible. But it's like you can't, though. It is your, it is your canon. You've and established could, it. You have to follow through. They could only do that if they actually like meant it. They already proved when they did things like five responses to fan criticism. And they were arseholes about it all the way through. They were just sarky. They were having a go at people. That was one of them who said, oh, well, you know, Tolkien didn't actually write this. Or if you can show me where the hairstyles are written. And so they clearly don't care. And I think they're willing to just say whatever they think they need to say yeah, it's kind to of, try and um, calm people down. It's kind of like when, you know, we're going back to our roots, like, with this, with this new game or film. It's like, are you, though? <laughs> or are you just saying that because that's what you think people want to hear? similarly here like we're going back to canon it's like well depends on our definition like it's just worthless you've screwed it up like that you can't it's it's really tarnished like to get your story straight the foundation you, is you, is uh you know. crap like you know when you go from here you've just got nothing to work with and it's not even as though that they can they can repurpose the material they have used because Part part of the problem is part of the you know, the many 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 law breaks that there are is the the creation of of established characters in this show who they will have to run with who cannot exist in this period of time. Like Elendil and Isildur shouldn't be a thing. I'm not even sure Elrond is is really born by the time the, this series starts. He actually mar I think he marries Galadriel's uh, daughter. Is it her daughter? I think. Um, there, there are characters that you've got in places and in, in regions and territories like Numenor, it should not be where it is doing what it's doing at this period of time. But you've established these things. You can't go more law relevant in season two, given that it's, it's not just that you've discarded things in season one. It's that you've created things where they cannot yet exist and you yeah, will have to follow through with those things. So, uh, hmm, yeah, no. That just sounds like, yeah, it just buzzwords. You're, you're sort of saying what you think people want to hear, but it's impossible. Mm. At least, like, it's yeah, impossible to reconcile. 
going back and to our roots. It'll create them little defenders as well, so that if anyone starts criticizing it from the previous season, you'll get people, well, they, no, they said they'll follow the canon more next time. And so it tries to head no, off. No, no, no. What they'll do is next season will be shit. And then people will criticize it for being shit. And then they'll say, what do you mean? This is what you wanted. It's more canonical. Uh, like, yeah, like, this is what you wanted, right? Like, when people said the rise of Skywalker. The rise of Skywalker, like, yeah. It's Jedi, so this is, this is what you wanted. It's like, man, this false dilemma or false dichotomy that you're presenting here is, is uh, pretty funny. You're only to accept shit or another version of shit. There's no world where it can be good and what you wanted. There's the other bit of it as well, which is that you know, I've had people tell me, well, you only hate it because you're a Tolkien nerd and you're obsessed with the lore. It's like, no. Like, you, could, you could make it lore relevant if you wanted to. The major problem with this show isn't just that it breaks with the lore, it's that it's so awfully written. And, like, you could make it more lore accurate if you wanted to. You could introduce new characters or new devices or new places. But if the writing quality remains as it is in season one, it's not going to be any better and probably will be worse because of the uses or the misuses to which you're putting the law relevant material. So if you want to fix anything, get basically competent writers first and then maybe look at expanding the law accuracy. But, I, but we don't yeah, value if, if there wasn't enough, anything like the like, lore, but it was written really well, I doubt many people would actually complain at all. I think people are ultimately receptive to good stories. And I think... Yeah. Um, Maybe like inspired I, it, it, by... Lore. Lord of the Rings or inspired by da 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 and it was a really good story, people we'd be totally fine with that. If yeah, it was you, good. you may well have uh conversations where people would have preferred for it to be more I mean it's the same with fucking Halo. Like the main problem with it is that it's just bad on its own terms. It's annoying that you then discarded better material. You know, it's like it adds insult to injury. Yeah. You made something worse, you had the material there that was stronger, and you discarded it because you thought you could do better. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, you've got the scene up, man. Yeah, they're doing a big old shout at each really... other. The main thing I want to highlight yeah. from this conversation that I find really funny is she's basically like, he's like, I thought we were friends. And she's like, you're a friend of Morgoth. And then <laughs> he's like, you're being mean. Wow, I want to be a, I want to be a goodman. She's like, nothing can redeem you. And he said, but you said I could. And then she goes, yeah, but you deceived me. And he goes, yeah, but you said anything could work. I just think it's, <laughs> this whole dynamic is hilarious. She's legit listening to Sauron say, I could be a good guy, that she's like, nah, -uh, you're super evil. Like, He's never going to be it? evil forever and you could never change. Why not entertain this, Galadriel? Just be like, okay, be a good guy then, prove it. Well, Instead of being like, honest with her the dramatic. entire time. What's that, sir? He was actually honest with her the entire time. He said he wasn't the king of the Southlands. She forced him there. He wanted to that's be true. in another island, she brought him here. And everything he actually that's still happened, fought with she her. was in control of. And he actually did everything she told him to do, and he managed to fix Celebrimbor's problems. Like, yeah, well, I know that she's holding level... against him that he's done a bunch of stuff, including killing her brother and everything, but he's basically just <laughs> saying, like, yeah, I regret all of the past stuff. You said that we have evil deeds in our past and that we can be redeemed for them, right? And she's like, no. Yeah, he only came back when he was like, well, I want to find peace over here. I want to leave my past life behind. And she said, no, you can't. You will, there will be nothing for you here. You have to go back. Yeah. So ev and like, this him. is all her fault. Yeah. You'd be dead without him. But surely that, that, that balances the scales somewhat with the whole brother thing, right? <laughs> also, there's this shot, uh, I think. that Everybody, like, This is one of the ones on Twitter, right, that people are praising. Cinema. It's um, it's a little too predictable at this point. Like the kind of things that just get praised in like film and television, Twitter. I'm just saying, man. Rings of Power viral praise involves a screenshot or maybe someone saying "yay" about like a concept that's barely in it. Meanwhile, As Rings of Power, any... sorry, House mm -hmm. of the Dragon goes like trending after the recent episode because of a particular actor's performance and across mm -hmm. all of the episodes yeah. and what that story means coming to a close and all Talk clips of him it. talking about it. Whereas in this case, I, what, what, it, what is one to say about this imagery, like, that is longer than a paragraph? What is one to say about this that isn't what it is? Right, that it's a shot of Sauron and Galatriel reflection on the, on the water, and you think it kind of looks cool. Like, that's Yeah, what else it. is there? Because what does this symbolize in terms of the relationship that they have and how it was developed over the course of the season? 
what does it have to say thematically in relation to, you know, the core themes of the show, which I couldn't tell you what they are. I have no idea what the point of the show is in terms of its, its core themes. Is it even that dissimilar to Dark Ray in... Say, yeah. oh, I don't know. I mean, it's not... <laughs> Um, yeah, and at one point during this, when she gets mad at him, she says, I should have left you on the sea, uh, which really doesn't make sense. It's like, did he, he save you? Didn't you didn't He saved you? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah in fact, yeah, it was the Numenorians that really made that choice. I'm getting some, uh, getting some Kenobi Vader vibes. <laughs> You've come here to yeah. destroy me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't believe they wrote that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they get really mad at each other, and they create several good thumbnails. Uh. Well, wow, you gotta show right? Yeah, I will. Got that bit where he, he's, he, his eyes are going evil now. <laughs> his face is going evil. Yeah, he's too. getting an evil face because he's getting all angry. By the way, this is caused <laughs> because he sells her on the idea that he's access to power, she's access to light. Together, they can save Middle Earth. And then she says, "Save it or rule it." And this is where he fumbles. He says, "I see no difference between those things." Instead, he should probably have said, "Save it." I plan yeah, to but save again, it. that save would be it. lying to her. I don't think he's ever lied to her. He's just like he's In just telling case... her his worldview at this point. <sighs> yeah, but like, for one, I I'm assuming that that's going to be something of a uh, like he's deceiving, right? Isn't that his whole thing? I thought that was the whole point. I Which... don't think he wants to. I think they're going for that whole, you know, I could rule anyone else, trick anyone else, but with you, I want to be honest. I want you to do it consensually, kind of thing. Because I, I was going to say, I'll grant that. that. On the other hand, is this so bad? That he's saying we can rule well. That's so bad. Yeah, we could be, yeah, every, how many people, how many peasants across the planet want to be king? And that, it's not, it's not, that's not an evil thing. That's not a bad thing. Why is it bad to want to, to rule? It's like all these kingdoms have a king. He's suggesting like, that she makes the decisions, to, by the way. He provides the power, she provides the light, implying that she's the one that will make sure that he stays good rather than bad. And he also this... offers to make a McQueen as well, which is um, yeah, he does often. Slightly... But it's it's oh, yeah, well, she she's already she's rejected she's already rejected the idea of going back to Valinor in order to return to Middle Earth, in order to exercise her will upon this place. Anyway, she might have done that in the name of saving it. She might not have done, and she suggests that she hasn't. So that's that's already exercising <laughs> agency without real moral purpose. And then she's going to go on to essentially be a queen in Lothlorien anyway. So all she's rejecting, it's unclear what precisely she is rejecting here and what the difference actually is that she the sees between ruling and... The elves have a high king, the elves have a couple of kings, and Everyone the men a have king. a king. There are lots of kings in this world. I don't understand what she thinks the difference is between ruling and saving Middle-earth. I mean, the, the point of a king, a good king, is to attempt to, you know, oh, save fuck, or to preserve your country. Oh, fuck, of course. Her whole goal was to install a king. Save Middle-earth. Yes. And install him yeah. as king. And, and oh no, he wants to be a king, the person I'm installing. Uh oh. And she left Brandon Eleanor said... specifically to rule, didn't she? So, uh, in in the law, she did. In the law, she left Valinor because she wanted a kingdom of her own, and she refused to go back because she wanted to continue exercising her free will. I don't think the show has established that. Um, but in the law, yeah, she wants she wants a kingdom or a queendom, I suppose, of her own. Ugh. So, uh, they shout at each other, as you can see. Very fun. It's amusing. I don't see how people aren't giggling when they see this. Oh god, look at the spit. Oh, I think that might be CG spit. <laughs> look at those eyes. Oh, he's gone so evil. <laughs> oh, his eyes are like snake <laughs> now. Look at him. Oh, it's she's so angry evil. too. Look at her go. I'll put on my evil oh. eyes. <laughs> uh. Oh no, the blade stopped. Now she's drowning, Rip. You may um. remember this time where I saved you? Yeah, this time that's not happening. I'm gonna get you this time, because you've been mean to me. Yeah, by the <laughs> way, I saved your life. I put myself at great risk to save your life. You're welcome, by the way. Oh god, there's so much stupid left in this episode, too. <laughs> there is, to actually, fair, unfortunately. The half foot is like 10 minutes of just literally nothing you can see. Yeah, it, that's actually true. <laughs> yeah. We'll get through that bit fast. It's more so the Wasting when time. she gets back into the real world. God, it's, it's like, I'll try and go through slowly-ish, because there's a lot in terms of how this breaks down chronologically. But, yeah, she wakes up in the special little river 
outside of Celebrimbor's little building of Orgy building. And Elrond's there, and he's like, what the hell is going on? She tries to kill him, of course, because she's Galadriel, and she's a very strange person. That's how she greets people, I think. And she's like, prove you're Elrond! Where did we first meet? I want to stop right there, okay? What you? What have we learned about Elrond? Uh, sorry, Sauron. Like, well, he can access your deepest and me most meaningful memories. He can even make you hallucinate anything he wants, seemingly. So... First and foremost, how do you know this is real? Anybody have yeah, that? how could you, you possibly know that? You shouldn't know this is real. He's supposed to be able to shapeshift, that's one thing, but now they've introduced, as you say, this, this memory-sharing dynamic. But the only... Uh, if I were working very hard on the writer's behalf, I'd say, well, if he killed her brother then at least he knows something of... Well, no, because he wouldn't have known that it was her brother. So, oh no, he would, because she told him. I, I get maybe, maybe because he had direct involvement with her brother's death, you could you could just kind of force your way to saying he has at least some knowledge of that, whereas he would have none of Elrond's backstory, but I think that's complete compensation. Well, someone said it, it's because it's not glowy. It's like, that, you know what? that could be it. When he drags you into a little simulation, it's all glowy, but... Uh, question number two, because I don't think we could solve that first one. Anyway, two. Why would you ask to grant, like, like some piece of information from the past when, number one, Elrond might not remember? Like, it, it could be a yeah, chance. Yeah, it would be really awkward. You'd be like, oh, fuck, it was like a birthday party. I don't party. remember uh, how I met it was, it was, it was that so kid. Like a thousand years ago, <laughs> goddamn. Yeah. Meanwhile, would Sauron know? It's like, more than likely, yes. He seems to have full access to your deepest and darkest memories. memories. Yeah. So why would you even what? bother? How does this help you? Like, it could, Sauron could be like, oh, we met at the, the summer glade, you were dancing, or whatever the fuck. And, and she's like, oh, thank God. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Elrond. Yeah. Definitely. Why'd you say that, Elrond? Why'd you love Elrond? He's like, what? what? I just what was thinking about? of a funny, I didn't say anything. something funny. I was just talking to myself. Yeah, you wouldn't get I it. like to do that. Yeah, I'm Elrond. So, um, and yeah. It's, it's also worth noting that Elrond doesn't seem to react that much to Galadriel nearly fucking Killing him. stabbing yeah. him. <laughs> like, she doesn't he seem to care and he doesn't bring it up later. That. Well, yeah, so it's, it's especially insane because um, he does clear, clear this up, I guess, but he doesn't ask her why she's freaking out or why she was in there yeah, exactly. in a sense that he gets an answer that's satisfying at all. I don't know if it's too early to say, but she doesn't Tell people what happened here. Which is, why Why in the world would you not tell anybody what happened here? I just, uh... Like what, what possible reason is there to not tell anybody what happened? What the show's reason, which isn't good, but it's what they use, is there's a line where he says, alright, something like, you can't tell anyone because how could you tell anyone that you created Sauron? Um, That's not even true. Uh... But well, it is, because she brought him back. He wanted to stay in Numenor and leave everything behind. No, but I mean, like, any reasonable person would just be like, that was Sauron? She's like, yeah, I know, crazy, right? He was lying the whole time. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, what yeah. world are they going to blame her for that? Like, how how could she possibly know known this? And you know what? It's too late. It's a responsibility. It's she needs late, to tell exactly. them, because he's been directly involved with the creation of these rings, which should give you pause for thought. Like, wait, why was he so invested in doing this if he's our greatest enemy? And, oh, could you imagine if, like, them not realizing that? Like, if that, like, the consequences of them not realizing, mostly, you know, everybody else not understanding, like, what they've set in motion. Yeah, and it causes the, literally the them. one ring to be able to take over. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, imagine, and it's because she didn't that would be really bad for her character. Yeah, what I'm well, so what I'm saying is, first of all, I think it would be in character for her to tell them, but secondly, that it's immoral not to tell them. It's incredibly important. Oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, but they might oh, think of me worse. Yeah. Like, don't be selfish, like, yeah, Galadriel. You, also, exactly, first off, they already do. First off, they accept already do what, sorry? the consequences. What, they, they already think, think, they already think the worst of her. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't, but we do. I mean, it, and plus, yeah, you... You gotta tell Elrond, surely. Like, if, even if you don't think people believe, won't will believe you, you you still tell them. Oh, I thought because was... they might. But so also, she's like, you have to tell Elrond. She's desperate to get to Celebrimbor because she needs to know if the rings have been forged or not. And I was just, I was amused by this, right? Because she sees Elrond immediately demands proof that this is Elrond. 
Then she walks around and she eventually gets to the tower, sees Celebrimbor, and talks to him as though he's definitely Celebrimbor. It's like, oh, we give it yeah. up on the whole Sauron could be anyone thing? Okay. <laughs> like, why pathetic. She did it for that. one person and then she gave up. Yeah, that, that just seems to be a thing where writers forget that characters don't know who is the shapeshifter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they act as if the writers have the, or the characters have the writer's knowledge on who is or isn't the shapeshifter, well, it, whether it's, it's imitating voices, whether it's, you know, changing your form, you know, physically. It wasn't shapeshifting, though, was it? It was dream world. So once she's out of the dream world, she assumes she stayed out of it kind of thing. And so for those wondering, how could she possibly get away with not explaining this? Well... Elrond, <laughs> the fucking spineless loser, says, Why is it that you're saying we can't speak to Hullbrand ever again? Where did he go and what happened in that river? And Celebrimbor is as well, like, what the fuck happened there? And she says, Elrond, you once said you'd never make the mistake of not trusting me. Uh, you'd never make that mistake again. He's like, Ugh, you're making it difficult to keep that, promise. So basically, don't ask me. And ironically, okay. in this moment, I, I half wondered whether Galadriel was actually Sauron oh, in disguise yeah. at this moment. Um, like, you have the thing dynamic at play. Like, maybe, because there's a hard yeah. cut between the last time we see her, maybe it's, it, this is actually him. And that's why they proceed with the Forging of the Rings and she's not, she's deliberately not telling them anything about him. Um, I thought that, that could have made a really interesting show. So, of course, that's not going to be what happened. Fuck, I just realized the one time Elrond keeps a promise is the one time he shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're playing into the whole Galadriel is evil idea because I think in season two they still want her to be going after Sauron and they still want the all oh, will she won't she kind of love thing between them. Oh god! Man. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to have wow. to watch that. I got a two year well, buffer they... period, I guess, but still. Yeah, because this Yay. is pure dark, and they even get Elrond on side, like right at the end. Oh. So. So, <laughs> they give up on asking her what happened. They just don't care anymore. They're like, oh, whatever. When it's just like, what incredibly important news. I have confirmed that Sauron is not only alive, he was with us for a while. Like, gather yeah. all the information we can. Try and get spies. Uh, tell people what Hullbrand looks like. That's one of the many potential ways you'll look. There's so much stuff to do. So much, it's so important. But no. <laughs> it's, I want to keep it a secret. I don't want people to know I'm, I'm fucking useless. Everyone's useless. I was like confused when I was first watching this. I was I was waiting for the scene where she would explain it, but just no. And uh, yeah, uh, then something really fucking strange happens. So Celebrimbor says, "Should we can uh, proceed?" And she says, "No." And he's like, "Oh no." And then she says, "We must make three rings. One will always corrupt. Two will divide. Three will give balance." Your that's logic just, is impeccable. So that's incredible. <laughs> Fucking stupid show. That's incredibly uh, stupid. I've never heard such a, like, a harshly dumb in interpretation of what those numbers can mean. You could have said, one will provide leadership, two will provide balance, three will provide chaos. Yeah. I mean, she's ne she's never played Planetside 2, obviously. That was I the idea that it. three different factions will balance each other. Yeah. She, so she's under the impression that you need three because when two people disagree, you'll have a third person to sort it out as if nothing else could ever happen. What if three people get corrupted? Except, what? what if three what people if one? disagree? It's already bad if one gets corrupted. <laughs> exactly. I don't by definition, if, if two people side against one person, by definition, <laughs> you've got imbalance. I do love that, though. One is corruption, two isn't. It's like, why? Why can't the two... Why can't you why have can't two of two the people ones? Be corrupt? <laughs> so fucking dumb. <laughs> And you were planning on crowding uh, Gilgalad. It's not going to be one. Fucking hell. And yeah, she says, The powers we forge today must be for the elves alone, untouched by other hands. I'm not even... Wasn't that the plan? Um, well, yes and no. So... None of this, none of this should be happening. Um, obviously, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> there are mass. There are so many. I, I do. Where do you even begin with the issues? Like, there are supposed to. I think there, there is it. Nineteen rings in total. Sauron is present for all of this because by having a hand in creating the rings of power, multiple of them, nineteen of them, 
um, Sauron is then able to make the One Ring and use the the subordinate rings, the 19, to control all the races of Middle-earth. So that includes the men, and he tries with the dwarves as well. All of these are made at roughly speaking the same time. There's this sort of, it's over a, a period, obviously, but it's, it's not like you make three, and then at some point in season two or three, maybe we get around to making another nine for the men and seven for the dwarves. But because Sauron isn't there anymore, either... Yeah. How how do they even introduce these for the purposes to which they're oh, put? You you want to um, know? End of season two, the dwarves will get them. End of season three, the men will get them. End of season four, the one ring will be forged, and then end of season five, will it'll end with someone going. And here is born Bilbo Baggins. Um, <laughs> Look at this oh. cute little baby Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually do that. I, I would be surprised. <laughs> I would be surprised actually... either. Honestly, like th this moment, it breaks the entire setup for the Lord of the Rings. Like the whole point of Sauron and his bid to corrupt all people, the creation of the Ring Wraiths. Um, the the reason the Rings exist in the first place is here, just completely discarded, and everything else they've discarded. What they've made in its place has been abysmal. So I'm really looking forward to seeing or not how they will actually, you know even try and create the rest of these rings and still manage to tie it in with the, the Jackson films, which were at least sort of faithful. Like it, it's, uh, yeah, there, there are so many like, connotations as well to the, the way in which they've screwed this up. There's too many to mention. The entire setup for The Lord of the Rings is at least threatened by this scene, if not completely demolished. Yep. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that sentiment from a lot of Lord of the Rings fans. It's like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Anyway, to make this character-based in some way, Celebrimbor's like, hey, Galadriel, in order to make the Three Rings, we're going to need some gold and silver of exquisite quality. And obviously, being one of the highest-ranking elves, the literal boss of the smiths, and I've been sent here specifically to make the most important materials ever, I have none of that. We're going to need your dagger. How did you know what? You or else we wouldn't have the Rings of Power. You have none of that. Unfucking yeah, believable, but okay. <laughs> like, whatever yeah, you say. A single like, person brought you, another yeah. dagger. No, nope. all of they history. Worried you're gonna, they were just worried she'd stab somebody thinking they were sour. Well, they just would have been so fucked. They needed to get if that dagger she, away from her. Had she actually gone to Valinor, they'd just be fucked. They'd be like, oh, damn, she took I the only dagger. Like... No rings of power. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Except that, of course, like all the swords and daggers and armor of all the elves who came over from Valinor in the first place would have been made of pretty much the same material. So there's no reason for him not to have more of this. Just find a Does sword from some other guy. Does it have to be gold and silver? Well, no, because apparently they just chucked the whole thing in, so it can be steel <laughs> as well. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, what I was the know. rest of the stuff in there? That Ooh. wasn't one dagger's worth. <laughs> that was like a whole molten thing. They, they, they chucked it in. Or, sorry, coaxed it in. Um, so anyway, we're back over to the Harfords. Right. Yeah. At least this will be over quick and won't drag out. Yeah, I fucking hope Basically so. Basically, just bite. So, they're like, uh, Gandalf's like, I gotta go to the Rune place to remember more stuff. And she's like, oh, oh, is, is that, is the East Star your kind? He's like, when that name was said, I felt like it was right or some shit. Um, and then he says, in your tug, oh, fuck, I hated this. In your tug, it means wise one. Or dot 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 wizard. It's like fuck. <laughs> just yeah, shut the fuck up. Wizard, Mrs. B. It's so cringy. They they like proud of themselves. That's their I am Iron Man moment. <laughs> I am I am wizard. I am wizard man. <laughs> I am wizard. It's also it's not. It's history is the <laughs> elvish word for wizard, and the Harfords don't speak elvish. Yeah, they do. So, Shut up. It <laughs> totally <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> what would you know? Oh, fuck. And that's the thing. It's like the episode insists to continue. It's like, couldn't you just stop? And it's like, going. And she's like, oh, sounds like a little bit of an adventure. And then he's like, well, oh. alone, it's a journey. Because adventures have to be shared. Um. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just no. So if you go anywhere on your own, it's a journey. If you go anywhere with a person, it's an adventure. What, <laughs> is, what is that? Like, this is just... 
You just made that up. You just made that up. <laughs> and as as we were watching the episode, I couldn't help but remember uh, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Well, yeah, but that's just Bilbo. There's no other characters. That's true. There, there's only Bilbo. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been called an unexpected adventure. unexpected adventure. Yeah, adventure, yeah. <laughs> Hero's journey is always done alone. There's never anybody else tagging just... along. <laughs> I can't believe they wrote that. It's so, it is, why would they write that? It's unbelievably consistent. Whoever wrote all these lines, fucking same guy or same three people. Like he, what? He sat down for one. He was just in this <laughs> one room, just coming up with all like, of these brilliant oh, analogies. Fuck. You know, have you ever noticed like journeys are always one guy and adventures are always more people? And then someone else is like, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. And then he looked around and there was no one there, but he was hallucinating people agreeing with him. And so he wrote it down. Like, what, about, what about all of those adventure games where the single player like just goes through and goes on an adventure? It's like, well, no, those should be called journey games. No, whenever you're like, having fun, yeah. you're never alone. A journey game is when you play as one person, and an adventure game is when you have a party <laughs> going with you. Do you love journey games? I love journey games. <laughs> journey games are so journey great. Games they're, are great. They're really, yeah. they're lonely. Sometimes you want to go on an adventure <laughs> as opposed to a journey. Oh, the, there's so many lines. It's just the same shit all the time. They say something. They yeah. think it's profound, and we're all sitting here like, what do you mean? That doesn't make sense. It was. It, do you guys remember how much trouble everyone had with that opening of episode one? The stupid boat shit with the stone. And it's kept true for every single episode since. There's been at least one in hyper cringe sentence that just doesn't make any fucking sense at all. And, and, and you can tell when they made it, they thought it was so clever. I thought it was incredible, <laughs> brilliant, profound. Oh, it's so funny. She's like, "We're gonna be heading downhill," and then and then Chunga says, "You're holding the map upside down." Cool. This, by the way, is very important that we see this. Not anything else. We need to wrap up this episode. It's hilarious. This is the, hilarious. This is the comedy. Now, this is the end of the season. We got to end things on a really high, fun note. And you know, the Harfoots are just—they're just so fun. They're just so fun. And so we got to have that map oh, thing. And there you go, right? So um, um, they said nobody goes off trail, nobody walks alone. Oh, it's better when Sadok said it. There's, there it is. They recognize that he's dead now. Well, the There's, whole map thing. It is to the make acknowledgement it... that he's dead. Or it's the acknowledgement that he said a thing better than someone else. Yes. He, he's no um, funeral, no burial, no putting flowers on a grave, no grinding up to make sausage or whatever the fuck they do. Just done. He's he's gone. That was the map thing. He was the map reader and the, the pathfinder. So they've already turned his death into a joke because someone was the woman incidentally who sent him off in the first place has managed <laughs> to make a joke about the fact that he's dead and now she has to read the map essentially. That's what's just happened. So that's classic half it. And she's always right, really? but in this time she was wrong. It's like they're only in joke. Pretty good stuff, really. Pretty good. I don't think. Are we ever going to see the Harfoot people again beyond the um the main lot? Obviously, I hopefully could, not. I hope not, but I could see I could see that happening again. Yeah, I think I could actually. That eventually they'll come back, and and it will be like this big triumphant season two finale of Nori reuniting with. With the half foots. There's, there's like a big battle, and suddenly just the half foots come over the hill as the reinforcements and save the day. <laughs> <laughs> the battle of five armies. Make and it they're all six. screaming, nobody walks alone, or nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody wanders alone. <laughs> they throw apples. <laughs> yeah. As you do. And you I can't believe how much time the they shin wasted. bones of their friends. I cannot believe how much time they wasted on the half well, yeah, foot storyline. If you take all of all that was accomplished with the Harfoot story, all that we got was a Harfoot, a young Harfoot lady finds a weird guy from a meteor, and then they go off. And yeah, that's kind it. Of. That's it. Like that's that's all that happens with all of the Harfoot stuff. That's yeah. it. And you think their about little the combined journey, screen time, you know, of all those scenes, like how much scene, how much screen time did they get? Like a feature film, possibly. Yeah. Probably, yeah. 
the whole sure migration thing, the Sardok, the fat one, the family well, stuff the... getting left behind. It's all nobody none of goes that... off trail, and then she goes off trail, and then she regrets going off trail, but then she ultimately chooses to deliberately go off trail again. That's right, vindicated for going off trail, and that's that's it. And, and that she will inspire hours. Gandalf's love for the hobbits because Nori yeah. is fucking awesome. She is a great. Great girl who's just out there for fun, adventure, and goodness. Remember, she convinced yep. him he's good. Not female Bilbo, <laughs> not female Frodo. That was actually the one thing that did surprise me. I, I was convinced that uh, female Sam was going to go with female Frodo, but that didn't happen. I was surprised. I thought they would keep her around because I, I thought that they would bank on her being comedic relief. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe she will come back. Maybe she's the one who'll come back in season two. Like she'll maybe, run yeah. and or waddle rather and catch up with them. Be like, I couldn't leave she'll you behind. I couldn't. Oh. Kill us. <laughs> You're so wonderful, Nori. I went off Heather trail. Harfoots. You're going off trail. Jump I'm going off trail. The wizard's going off trail. We're all going off trail. And they'll nick the line where she says, if I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Don't I'm addicted you to dare. consuming flesh. Don't you dare. Stay away. <laughs> Start with sticky fingers all over things that don't belong to you. <laughs> She'll proclaim her love of potatoes, much like myself, but... Uh, they are good. So I've been letting it play in the background and keeping an eye on it. I have nothing to say about any of this. She's just saying goodbye to everyone. It takes 10 years. Yes. It's like they think that they've earned this. We care. They think we <laughs> care about their we shit care. characters. Yeah, that we even care about this. Farewell. I couldn't care less. Nope. You're, uh, you're all, you're terrible people and I hate you. Mm-hmm. If it, the, the only emo to the extent I feel an emotion, it's relief for her that she's getting away from it. <laughs> yeah. She I did like that. Or whatever, yeah. It's like she's just decided that, no, I should stay on trail, I should stay with everyone and stop running off. And her family just turn around and go, can you please piss off? We don't want you here anymore. <laughs> I <laughs> would find that it guy. a little suspicious that she's like, I'm going to go on a solo adventure with the crazy, creepy hobo from space. Is that okay, mum and dad? Yes, go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a fo I mean, follow your heart. Yeah, follow your heart, and you will. Yeah, definitely, you should do that. It'll make you happy. We wouldn't want to, you know, stop you from being happy. <laughs> the dad's like, "Oh, you no, don't. Oh, oh you're going already. Oh, no. oh you go. wow. Can you leave? <laughs> I mean, you could leave as soon as you want. We wouldn't want to keep you. Oh, you might want to leave soon because the sun's going down. You want to yeah, find a yeah, camp, just... you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to go at night, you know, on account of the it being dark. It'll be rainy. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, rain's bad. Rain's how you get the, uh, the sick. The the bats. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the bats. You know, you know, old. Old uh, Bulger Biggletoe, he got sucked dry by bats <laughs> one year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they got left behind. Yeah, left it was behind. weird because Ooh, yeah. there was clearly yeah. half foot teeth marks all over him. It's like, no, no, bats, <laughs> bats. No, it really was bats. Yeah, it's coincidentally, uh, coincidentally that, yes. So then we get the biggest payoff of the season, the moment we were all waiting for. Me, Rags, and Fringy cheered when it happened. So <laughs> I clapped. I clapped. Just before side. Nori gets out of there, oh my god, we get a slow motion hug from uh, Yes, Ungus right here. I like how they said goodbye, and then they said goodbye again in slow motion. I, as someone in chat, I said. <laughs> I cried. I, I did. I couldn't hold it back. This was incredible. I cried. They've been through everything together. Um, oh, just wow, you know? And they, they, as, as was just mentioned, she did say goodbye earlier, but that wasn't quite the same. This, this is different. This is slow motion, which makes you feel more, if you know what I mean. It's a filmmaking technique you probably don't know, where you can, like, you can see something slower, and it, it'll make you feel things that are different than regular motion. Uh... Because we saw them hug in regular motion, which isn't as, not really as cinematically, fluidly um, eccentrified in their elocution, if you if you understand what I'm saying. It's a little bit complicated. In, yeah, in slow motion, it, do, it doesn't, well, you have the opportunity to, to remember and to relive all of the, the many deep and meaningful conversations that took place between these two characters. Well, like, why yeah. do you keep going off the trail? And 
why are you so unlike all the other Harfords, and why do you insist on going on adventures? And along those lines, just very, very meaningful and, and profound conversations that added so much to both their characters. Well, do you remember when Nori woke up and, um, and she was just eating stuff, and then she said, go look at how much food you have? That probably one of my favorites. And that, that will stay with me for, for at least a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why she's so grateful. She's like, yes, one less person means more food for me. Thank you. She's very thankful. Great stuff. I like the idea that they go back to them in, in season two and it's just Podge sitting there picking her teeth <laughs> with the bones of <laughs> Apparently they were I fattening survived. me up to eat me, but I ate them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, half what life is like a BR. It's just the last person alive winning. <laughs> <laughs> they all like split into big old groups until it just gets down to the last two. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they have a very emotional goodbye, and it's so emotional. Uh, they're crying. They're both crying. She says, you'll come back, right? You'll, you promise? And she's like, I will. So I, I think uh, it'll be incredible at the end of season five where she finally comes back and these two can share a bigger hug that's even in slow emotion with many tears. She rides in on an eagle. Oh, definitely, yeah. An eagle that with it has a sword in its mouth. <laughs> it'll be Sauron's. It'll be like, I defeated him. Definitely dead. So, um... Scene is still going. <laughs> so it is like a ten minute scene. It just, just keeps on going. It was, it was, it, it was, it, everyone remembers this being so long that it, it caps out and beats the construction of the rings of power, the, their total construction time in the form of your know, real time. I just can't believe that's true. Including Sauron's manipulation into and the, the, the entire thing. Like the fail attempts, it would still cap it out. It's like, how is this possible? This is called the Rings of Power. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> ah. But you know, they just they just knew that we were all highly highly invested in this. Been still going, by the way. I've just let it play. I was curious how long this would last. It, well, wasn't there that line of dialogue that I just saw there when he says, are you sure? And she says, I've never been more certain than ever. And the next line of dialogue is, if I look back, I couldn't leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe that's supposed to be quirky. Well, they have some kind of mind control powers over their victims. <laughs> so I will say, they highlight the fact. A little bit of confusing as to exactly where they're supposed to go, you know? It's like, what direction? He's like, are you sure it's that way? He says, uh, well, there's a sweet smell on the air this way. It's like, well, that doesn't tell you anything, does it? And then he's like, when in doubt, Eleanor Brandyfoot, <laughs> always follow your nose. Uh, this pisses off a lot of people because <laughs> this is them being like, this is Gandalf. And it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> this is a crazy hobo. <laughs> Stop. Put it away. Sit down. You, you, you're going crazy with power, okay? You need to, you need to stop. Jeez. There's a sweet smell this way. You're standing next to an apple tree. Yeah. So that, that probably has something to do with it. And you know, Gandalf, actual Gandalf, says that in Moria, yeah, where he's... they're not in an open random field, you know, there are quite It makes sense in Moria. Yeah. The, um, but... There's three directions and he smells fresher air in one of them, right? Meaning it's closer to an exit. Maybe he's like a shark and he can smell blood from like 300 miles away. <laughs> I don't know why smelling sweetness would mean that that's where he needs to go. Is the place you're going sweet? Is that... <laughs> no, it Maybe it just means they... fresh air. Like the Harfoots are in one direction. And he's like, if we go over here, <laughs> there is an odorous the stench. fungus over here. I don't know what it is. It could be your friends. <laughs> like, oh. like, they're going to Nern, which is next door to Mordor. It's not a sweet smell you're looking for. <laughs> well, then they'll find out halfway oh, through season fucking four. They're like, oh, we need to go to Bordeaux. Like a massive erupting volcano on your eye line might have been a, a good clue, but I think we're too far away, apparently, even though we're not. So, well, hey, maybe the uh, volcano smells sweet. <laughs> well, it's cold, so it could also smell sweet, yes. Yeah. So they melt her dagger, very sad. It represents a vengeance pact with. Avenging your brother, right? It's just very, very sad. Very sad. Mm. Then, what uh, will she be without it? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing. Uh, and so they pour the mithril in it. That melts. 
pull that out and make the rings. Uh, you know, it's 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 sort of like this realization of like, yeah, we're seeing it, and we're gonna see them all. They're gonna make all the fucking rings eventually. And this this mithril was so fussy that it wanted only like gold and silver from Valinor. But as long as you include a bit of steel, it doesn't really care about that. It's fine. Yeah, this is not even separating it out. Just lob the whole thing in there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Impurities. They're coaxing it in. They're coaxing oh, they're co it. Okay, yeah. coaxing. coaxing. They are coaxing in. the whole thing in. I don't yes. like how mind, he um... drops it into and it splashes. Like, bro, place it in. <laughs> coax it in. You gotta coax it. It'd be funny yeah, if they like put it on the table near it, and then they hope that it crawls over. Because it's like, do you want it? Yeah, yeah. Just it. Go grab and it. as someone said yesterday, when it's spinning, it kind of does look like the Eye of Sauron because they drop it bang in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's great. They like their eye imagery. As do Except we all. They've done it so often that it it loses all of its force. So they yeah. did it with. Gandalf when he lands in an asteroid. So what are we to make of the eye imagery in universe now? No way that, that he's apparently Gandalf, just, yeah. Yeah, it's like that, that doesn't make any sense anymore. At least and and now, yeah, it's just it's supposed to be thematically linked, I suppose, but if you've used it and overused it so often, I, in universe, just everything just naturally form an eye if if it needs to look impressive. Is that how this works? Um Yeah, so they create three that are very distinct in the sense of it comes across as like the gold, silver, and feel like they went separate directions, but all have mithril in them or something. Um, I he chucked all the mithril into one pot. That's what I mean. So now, Grant, I I'm no blacksmith or metallurgist or anything like that, but wouldn't they all be the same color when they came That's out? That's what I thought. But I don't know. Maybe put food coloring in the three splits. I legit there, don't know if there's something you could do. I, I just don't know, but I would assume if it's all poured from the same source, it would be the same color. Yeah. Um, also, as the rings are being forged, something very dramatic is happening, and it's kind of hilarious. It feels like a music video. Um, Elrond's, like, walking around, and then he walks toward where he found Galadriel in the in the river, and he's, like, doing a big think around the area, and it's like, oh, what are you going to find? He looks down, and he sees that... That thing that, that described that uh, the line of men was ended for Halbrand's, like, the, the kings of the Southlands or whatever, it's just yeah. in the water and it's, been, it's caught on some, like, reeds, implying basically that it would have been lost to everyone if only it hadn't hit those little little reeds and so Elrond could pick it up. And now, it's a good if thing you... it's uh, still readable. Oh, excellent. Know? Yeah, it's not like the water would have destroyed it by now for sure. It's Totally fine. Yeah, the ink and everything on the page. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's right there. How unfortunate. Um, yeah, and so he reads it. And legit, I immediately was just like, okay, this won't change much, right? It'll just mean huh. he knows that Hullbrand would have not been the King of the Southlands. Which you could probably have not inferred blood, already yeah. with the fact that Galadriel has said he is banned from this place. Like you, 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 it's doubtful she would have had that perspective if he was still. Legit. He lied about being king, which is weird. You seem to be quite the advocate for him earlier, but that, that's fine. That's fine. That's but um, fine. maybe he didn't tell me that either. The way they film this, it's as though he's racing against the creation of the rings. Like he's trying to get to the top of the tower before the rings are complete, or something. I found it very strange. I wasn't sure exactly what they were going for. But no, I um, think that's accurate. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't have to have these confusing little montages if they didn't spend 36 minutes with Nori saying yep. goodbye to the Fat Hobbit. And so, yeah, Celebrimble's like, woohoo, we did it. She's like, woohoo, we did it. And Elrond's like, ooh, and he's holding the scroll. And I legit don't understand what they're trying to tell me. Like, what does he now know? What is so, like, he's like, I know that Halbrand isn't actually the king of the Southland. Of royal blood. It's Southland not like he knows blood, he's Sauron, yeah. though, right? He wouldn't have inferred that too. I don't think so. Please tell he me he didn't. Have... <laughs> Truly, he I... couldn't know, which means yeah, it's but... a possibility in this show. But I mean, he, he knows right? that Galadriel has been acting weird. He knows yeah. that Halbrand basically gave them the ability to make the rings in the first place. Yeah, and so he probably knows they've been made for a, uh, an alternative reason in some way. And he'd be suspicious of Galadriel because she hasn't told anyone, but she must know. Well, but that's kind of my whole issue with this anyway, is when she's like, just trust me, bro. It's like, no. Tell us what's going on. 
What's Halbrand doing? What's he up to? Be honest, you annoying person. And then it's like, well, I found the scroll, so you're gonna have to tell me now. Couldn't she still be like, well, he's just not the king of the Southlands, yeah. So he's just a normal guy. Don't worry about it. He's just a normal guy, but he wants to be king, and he seems to be all right. And the other, I mean, they're clearly okay with it. Um, you could, you could, surely you could get away with that. You could be like, he lied to me that he was the king of the Southlands. Um, he was just some normal guy who wanted some power. He was also a smith. I told him to get the fuck out. Okay. Hmm. Like, what yeah, because what... she's kind of kicked off against them. Because she, didn't she say something like, "Even if if he ever does appear, then we shouldn't even talk to him." Yeah, she's yeah. She said, "Don't treat with him at all." Um, which you could still argue is what her perspective would be if he had lied to her about his lineage to try and gain power. It wouldn't necessarily mean like I can't see why Elrond would be like, "Is he Sauron? Don't lie to me." It just seemed like a jump to me, but I don't. know. We'll have to see. That'll be for season two to show us. Um, but they're the rings, everybody. Yep, there they are. Just, uh... Do you have any favorites? What's your favorite? I can't believe... Like, is the implication that if they had a decent amount of mithril that the rings would be better? Because they'd be pure? I assume so. The more mithril, the better, right? So, like, if you were to... You could turn that mithril vest into, like, a load of rings, right? Mm-hmm. Man. Like Frodo's, uh, Frodo's vest, Mithril yeah. vest, and then uh, fuck oh, yeah, that, it's actually. far more it's powerful like, than all the rings. You don't even need a ring. Absolutely. You're wearing it all, which is the equivalent of the rings, right? So, can't you just, does Frodo have little laser beams he can fire or something? Probably he, he just never. Himself, probably yeah. he, just he didn't never get enough things to to like level up to get that ability. But right. th th to... that is that's the problem with with turning Mithril into this kind of magic device, which it isn't. Is that it? Just <laughs> there are so many questions about all. Like you know, um, in uh, Return of the King, the Tower Guards at the Tower of Ictherion, their helmets are made of Mithril. So can they like shoot lasers from their helmets, for example? Yeah. Um, yeah. As long as they say the magic word, they have to go Melon, and then it no. just, <laughs> just laser. Ah, speak friend and laser. Speak friend and laser eye. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the rings of power have been created for the elves now. Um, that was a great journey, wasn't it? It literally happened in the space of like half an hour of episode. It went from being like an impossibility to happening complete. And even that's a really dodgy decision. Sauron wants you to make a thing with the Mithril. And when he first started, it wasn't going to be multiple rings. It was just the one. But, you know, he wants you to make rings with Mithril. Yes. So she thinks she's scuppered what she doesn't really know is his plan, but suspects is a plan by having three instead of one. Wouldn't you think that... I mean, what's her reasoning there? Has she no not idea. Just, as far as she knows, tripled his chances of success, given that the forging of any ring is going to be something he wanted to see happen. Would it not have been more sensible for the elves just to say, you know what? Well, maybe, maybe the risk is too great and we should all just go back to Valinor instead. Would that not be the safer option? She'd have to convince them that, yeah, she'd have to convince I them still think it's Sauron retarded. She didn't just it's... tell them Sauron's behind all of this. Is she that worried that they'll be like, wow, you suck, you didn't spot him earlier? What anyway. if, what if, if she had told them it was Sauron, then they wouldn't have made the rings because they thought it was too risky. And so they would have gone back to Valinor, but now she's so, like, revenge-driven even more that she wants to stay, so she's willing to have these rings created so they don't leave. So she can get revenge. Which makes her worse than Sauron. I was about to say, yeah, I, th yeah, I, I'm not, I think she's evil. Her character. I mean, they've been pretty thorough so far, so... Yeah, I mean, the, the show opened with her literally just wanting to leave someone behind in the snow who's five foot behind her, so... <laughs> she's not against sacrificing people to get revenge. But she'll learn by the end of season five to be a better person or something. And she'll go back to being normal. <laughs> Probably in the last ten minutes. Yeah. So uh, then we get this yeah, shot. We have... An eye of Sauron. Oh, <laughs> how clever. How quaint. And... Look, there's yeah. more wow. door in it. And lightning. God, this show's so cool. Mordor's the thing from, yep. from Lord of the Rings, if you guys didn't know. It's a big volcano. What? Why is there lightning? Oh, that sounds like a dreadful what? place. Is it volcanoes make lightning? Yeah. They can do. Doesn't I think the like writers... I, um... I mean, that could have come from a, the thunderstorm above it, I guess. I don't even know what's going on in this place. It all seems very d d evil. <laughs> I guess lightning's evil. It's an evil place. <laughs> you know how it goes. 
Wow. I think the wow. writers the writers um think they're being very clever here because like so Sauron is kind of a satanic figure. And um the the modern conception of Satan comes from Milton's Paradise Lost. And in Paradise Lost, uh, it, there's a section on, on describing Lucifer setting out from heaven, um, which closes uh, into this wild abyss, the way he stood on the brink of hell and looked a while pondering his voyage for the narrow frith he had to cross. And I, I wonder if in this scene they haven't thought, we're going to be really clever and be Mil Miltonian about this, and we're going to have Satan standing on the brink of hell pondering his voyage as Sauron looks out over Mordor. Really cool. See, now this is a shot that they should teach film school in yeah. film land. Someone That's... just said, how did he get there? He flew, obviously, with his wings. <laughs> Someone said, how dare you stand where they stood? <laughs> <laughs> I love that meme. It's cool. <laughs> oh, uh... shit. Can Mordor was created that? by a sweaty hobo. It's unreal. <laughs> it's legitimately incredible. I would have never guessed. You know, the next... We'll be doing this... Mahler. Yeah. Fringy. We yeah. will be talking about this show for 10 yes. years. <laughs> I know. In 2032, it'll be like, In, finally, it's over. 2032. In 2032. We'll never... Oh. We will never Still. escape this hell world. Buckle Life but feels pretty good fun. to be done with season one, yeah, though. I know, I know, it really does. It's, it's dead. Over, and we're not looking back. Fucking yes. worthless it'll be, piece it'll of be shit EFAP show. EFAP 1000, and we'll be talking about Rings of Power for EFAP 1000. Fuck but yeah. yeah that, that show, is, it sucks. Bad. Really bad. Terror bad. The worst of bads. Bad.com. It's so bad. Yeah, I think I'd be happy to say it's terrible at this point. Like, yeah, I think it is terrible bad. because it, it lacks any redeeming qualities apart from like the occasional visual, I guess. But yeah, like, what does that mean? It doesn't mean track. anything. Well, in oh, I can't even remember script. the soundtrack. Um, there are a couple that I remember, but uh, for eight hours, you know, like it's uh, it's not a great ratio. So really, mm. anything that would be worth praising is aesthetic. Because from a script, like, I don't know what I would praise in the script at all. Dialogue is pretty consistently poor. The characters are non-existent, or they are contradictory. And even for as thin as they are, they're contradictory. I don't know what themes any of this is meant to be in service of. And the world building is piss. I would even say the performances are pretty lackluster, except for a couple of, like, I think, handful yeah. of highlights. And those highlights are only highlights in the context of this show. But yeah, like, I was never speaking, you know. Yeah, I was never really impressed with anything. Um there might be a few things, but I just they don't come to mind right now. Yeah. The dwarves is the only sort of yeah, subplot. The... Yeah, Durin, yeah. the actor for Durin, even his dad. Durin. Um the performances yeah. are quite good. The characterization by the standards of this show is is all right. There's at least some kind of character relationship at play there. Still he's super contradictory, but he has a set of traits that are endearing, <laughs> dare I say. It's the closest thing that they get to making something. Uh, in terms of writing out. Um, the Harfoots were fucking abysmal, man. <laughs> what was that? And then, yeah, uh, the, the Elfman plotline with Bronwyn is so funny. It's just God in those last two episodes. Like, where did they go? It's like, they went to Happy Lad. Shut up. You're like, okay. Bye. Do you think we'll see him again? Yeah, I think I so. They, will, they ran out of story for him. They legit didn't know what to do with him in the last two episodes. They were just like, I don't know, we'll see him next season. We'll figure something out. Because obviously yeah, his episode was episode eight, right? No, six? Which was the war one? Was it seven? That was six. <laughs> do you not count the uh, the one where he's in the dig in the trench? The prisoner one? Oh, I meant, like, didn't we spend, like, almost all the episode with the fight episode, you know? Like, he was in loads of it. That's how they balanced it out. They tried to make it. Maybe. Green time. Well, maybe, maybe. They probably the filmed it at the same time. I don't know. Did. The conventional thing to do, though, with a, like a final episode, is that you want to try and round off, or at least cliffhanger, pretty much all of your major plot threads, yeah, right? So you you don't just ditch 
half of them in your last episode and assume people are going to remember them in two and a half years' time when mean? we go back. They said that he went to Happy Place. Oh, well, well that's fine then, yeah. So did Bronwyn, so did Theo, they're all in Happy Place. Done. Not Galadriel, though, she jumped off the boat. No, she's, she's in Unhappy Place. She's always in Unhappy Place. So, who's your favorite character, everybody? Durin. <laughs> uh, Durin, probably. Probably Durin. Yeah, I get Deezus up there. I kind of yeah. like her. I would have said Deezus up until they turned her into a potential. Yeah, that was weird. Greedy. Yeah, if she incites <laughs> a war within the Dwarven Empire, like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you were capable of that. Jesus Christ, Civil War. Jesus, Jesus, out for blood. A lot of people are mentioning Homer as a favorite. Yeah, that's fair. Homer, Homer was well, well, that that goes without saying. He's he's just almost disqualified because of he's, of course, the winner. Right? We don't want to include Not the people Homer. that are just going to, you know, trounce the list. I liked um the horse. The horse showed some loyalty. I did like the horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the I only the, good person in the show. I like both the law like horse the and the fire horse. Sank. Fire yeah, horse. Stone was good. Sank. I like um, the crane horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horse yeah. With the crane horse. You're right. Legit yeah, though, what horse. would your answer be for worst character? Oh, fuck. Oh. Mm, it's got Damn. The... Elrond. <laughs> no, mm. not Elrond. I probably, I'm probably Galadriel's up there for me. I'm, it's almost cheating to include Galadriel, just because she's in it all the time and she's so just unqualifiedly she's bad. So awful. A lot of people um, choosing Galadriel in chat. Yeah, I think if Galadriel's in it, she'd she'd annihilate everyone. Yeah. If we discount Galadriel, chat, <laughs> who is the worst? And you can't pick Harfoots. You have to pick a character. Oh, no, that was going to be my next one. Level. I was going to be chose the one that's always right. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you could go for her. Uh, I said it's Sealdor, Nori, Old Lady Harford, the Queen. She's pretty bad. See, Nori's one of my favorites, but that's just because she's like not evil. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> that's what it comes yeah, down I to. Yeah, I think I agree. I think like she actually, am amidst this like gaggle of characters, she's probably pretty high up. Nori, do you say? Yeah. yeah, because she she's, like, nice. She's kind of an idiot sometimes, but her idiocy is nowhere yeah. near as bad as a lot of characters. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, actually, I think she could be entertaining if she was, if there was like, better well, like, left alone. I can believe the actress is capable, too. She seems to be able to make some expressions. She's stuck in a terrible script. <laughs> oh, <laughs> worst character. Uh, the one at the Palantir at the end, because all she did the entire show was walk around and stare at things. Oh, that, that puts her up at the top, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you can take that angle with it as well. Yeah. She didn't infuriate us. Uh, what the, about... the less you say, the better you are. Keller Brimble's pretty bad, I think. He's, like, often the complete opposite of his standing, you know? I think, yeah. Did some serious damage to him. That applies to Gil Galad as well, though. I mean, so much of yeah. what's happened is because Gil Galad is just an, an absolute idiot. Um... And I think Elrond is a uh, fair mention in terms of just he's, think he's a, a lying piece of shit throughout the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. I think for sheer like contrived pointlessness, I, I would be tempted to nominate Isildur's sister, just because she is just there as wallpaper. Except because there's no other way they can depict what's happening in the scene she's in, like with the, the dying king and the Palantir. I just don't even remember and... what she did enough in this season. Like, yeah, she, it was she, she literally she stared doing... at things. Yeah, and then she suggested that they don't go to war, and that's it. <laughs> she was she was so fucking right. <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Wow, guys, I told you." Oh, what the. They could actually make it interesting when they come back, you know, the power struggle and all kinds of criticism for having made the crazy decision to go out there and all the men they've lost, you know. Like, if an actual showrunner took over, they could still make a show out of this garbage. They could try, but they won't. The character I'm, character I'm most envious of has got to be uh, Demented Vegetable King, just because he's Dead? asleep for most of it and he can't remember the rest of it, and then he dies. Now he's escaped. <laughs> he's out, yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Well, that's that is Rings of Power season one. Yeah, it is complete. Wow. 
he did it. Um, Pretty incredible. Uh, I was gonna say, so we got got some plans. We're gonna have to figure some things and move some things around. I'm not gonna be able to be on stream for much longer. I've got to do another render and upload of Final Destination Three. I'm running oh. out of days to be able to get that sorted. So ah, what exciting. we've got uh, as a potential is myself, Rags, and Metal would like to talk about Scorn. So that's gonna get possibly recorded on Wednesday, I think. I think that'll be the idea. We'll release it. Maybe a day or two later, and then we will be doing the She-Hulk stuff on the Saturday, which is a day or two after that, which is essentially the same thing again. And uh, but it'll be an hour and a half, right, in total, not two hours, as in the f the footage we're of covering. Material to go <laughs> yes. through. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing episodes seven, eight, and nine. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we're hoping to have Rakita Law, uh, Jay Longbone, and Nutsa on. We're gonna. Let's talk some She-Hulk. I think you guys have wanted us to for a while now. Um, but, uh, the Super Chat catch-ups are still releasing. I'm trying to get one per week out and we're still recording more. Um, but we are like well ahead of schedule for EFAPs and we're about to record a bonus one now for Scorn as well. So we're going to try and possibly uh, interchange a little bit and have maybe some longer gaming ones or... <gasps> You know, this, that, and the other. We're going to have to figure out some plans to balance it out. As you guys have probably been able to tell, this past month, and another month to go, probably, EFAB has been uh, it's been pumping, all right? Lots of stuff has been coming out. I see you guys have been enjoying the Final Destination and Karen EFAB movies. I'm glad you are. They've been, they were rather yeah. fun. Very glad how they turned out. You've got three, four, five still to come. As well as, I'm going to try and stream Soma more than likely on Halloween night. And I'm going to stream with Metal, the uh, uh, the quarry, question mark, horror game from the people who made Little Hope because we apparently hate ourselves. Um, and I want to do God of War 4 before God of War 5 comes out. They are all my plans alongside just getting on with regular work. Um, you, uh, well, it was the, I, think, I think that about covers all the, the things that you should be expecting as they progress. I was going to say... Uh, Rags of Free, was there any you want, wanted to add to that? We will then talk a little bit about the guests here, and then probably about uh, make sure people realize about the plushie, right? To, to grab a Rooney it, and then we'll probably uh, we'll probably end this. So, yes, was there anything that Fringy Rags you wanted to mention about videos or upcoming things that are happening? Well, um, I suppose yeah, just the plushie is the big one i suppose the big thing i've got some stuff in the works that i'm kind of waiting on to finish which should be done in a couple days so i should have videos up uh uh again to put uh to put to work some uh new stuff i have but other than that no specifics on things mm -hmm. just um would really appreciate it if you gave the plushie a look maybe it's something you will really enjoy I'll, well, yeah, we'll be talking about it for as long as it's available. We'll let you guys know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lots of people uh, sometimes have to, you know, grab an opportunity for a bit of money to be able to um, grab it up. So you do have a bit of time before you run out. But of course, this will be your only chance for this instance Indeed. of the rags. That's right. Oh, no. If you don't get it now, uh, it will be uh, it will be gone forever. Uh, was there anything you wanted to talk about, Fringy? You released a new video relatively recently. Yeah, yeah, I released a new video this week about difficulty settings in video games because, hey, you know what? Very, very, very late to the party on that subject. But hey, um, yeah, if you haven't seen it uh, and it sounds interesting to you, head on over to my YouTube channel. Uh, as for anything else, uh, yeah, like it's back to work on on the uh the the next one will be the next big critique which uh yeah <laughs> well, a lot of work to do yeah yeah i want to thank the fuck out of gary disparu and little platoon for joining us tonight you guys uh i think this has been quite an adventure you were with us for uh, most of the rings of power episodes at this point it was only like the first two i think that we covered with metal rather than uh and you guys, I'm trying to remember how that all went, but you know, um, we'll likely have you guys on for coverage of some stuff here and there in the future, but 
I would happily lock you in for the rest of Rings of Power as <laughs> when when that comes <laughs> out, whatever fucking century it does. I'm not exactly looking forward to it. If I'm still alive for it, I'll be in. Excellent. Um, well, yeah. luckily it's two years away. While you're here, why don't you let people know what it is you get up to, why they should subscribe, and then they get there. Either one of you can go first. I leave it up to you. Off to you. Wait. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, yeah, Disbrew on YouTube and Twitch. Bit of an end for an era, end of an era for me at this point, as I've covered Rings of Power for so long. Uh, you don't know what then... life is like <laughs> without it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, exactly, yeah. I think I started the whole Rings of Power stuff at 2.8k subs, so it's been a hell of a journey. And She-Hulk and Rings of Power have basically been my channel for the last couple of months, so it's going to be interesting to have you got, see where we go from here. Uh, is there another shitty show that's coming out you're going to cover? <laughs> oh, well, the, the next sort of the bigger thing that I want to cover is going to be the finale of the Doctor Who. Oh, this one, yeah. Uh, yeah, she, she finally leaves. And uh, unfortunately, it may get a lot worse after that. So that's going to be an interesting uh, situation to keep an eye on as more details come out for that as well. But yeah, first, we've got a 90-minute finale with her. Uh, finally uh, taking her last breath of the show. So that's going to be... Uh, I'm sure it's going to live up to the same quality standards that we've expected from her so far. Uh, but yeah... Uh, on Twitch and YouTube, apart from that, I don't know, I'll go to more culture stuff. At the moment, it is going to be sort of the fallout from She-Hulk and Rings of Power, as for some reason, neither of the showrunners seem to be able to keep Shut their the mouths shut, yeah. <laughs> which is what would be the same thing to do in this scenario. So there's still a, still a bit more fun to be had with these shows before uh, moving on to more sort of culture and new stuff, like gonna, I uh, do in between the reviews. Going to cover um, Under Forever. Oh yeah, yeah. A anything big that comes out, I'll cover. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's it's TV series that I like doing the most because the weekly reviews are something I, I really enjoy. Once they're finished, it's a it's something that it's a, it's an incredible pain to sit there for twelve hours or whatever it is to go through them each day. But once they're finished, it's easily my favorite videos that I do. Yeah, man, you've had uh, what what sub count you up to now? Uh, ninety five point eight. Oh shit, you're gonna do something special for 100 Hooray! Uh, yes, uh, hopefully. I'll well, to, hey, I'll you've. Do some kind of stream for that, surely. You've come over uh, over here, a bunch helped us out, all kinds with the uh, keeping company and breaking this down. So if ever you want, uh, well, I presume any three of us, but especially, uh, want me over for it. Jump on. Keep your company, especially for a celebration stream. You should totally do it. Grab up some folks, talk about. How fun it is to be a full-time YouTuber. I assume you're a full-time YouTuber at this point. Uh, yes, start of Rings of Power is when I officially sort of went over there. Good for you, man. Um, I heard the same thing has happened for you as well, Little Platoon. Uh, gone full-time, right? As experimental? Um, not yet. Uh, almost, imminently. It's kind of been a little bit crazy, because my channel isn't a year old until uh, the end of this month, I think it is. Um, and so we're sitting there, I think we had 100 subscribers in January. And now I'm sort of, yeah, in this position where I can actually do this full time, or at least for, for a little bit. So I handed in my notice a couple of weeks ago, and I'm officially leaving the day job on November the 18th, um, at which point I will be, yeah, a full time internet person, which is slightly terrifying, but... Um, <laughs> But kind of enjoyable because I'm going to be. St I'm I'm not done with Rings of Power yet. I've still got episodes three through to the finale to review properly. Yeah, um, <laughs> you'll be uh, making them so, when the second series comes out. Yeah, I might. I'm probably still going to actually. It will be nice. I actually the reason I decided to junk the day job was part. Well, it was. It's been financially sustainable sort of since it hit like sixty, seventy thousand um, subs. But it was just a case of looking at all of this massive workload and think I'm never ever going to get this finished unless I take the risk and go full-time. So from November 18th, I'm full-time. We'll hopefully have all of Rings of Power done by the end of the year, and one more She-Hulk video, and Black Panther 2, Wakandan Boogaloo, or whatever that's called. Um, and then whatever else is coming up, I might try and do a couple of like super cuts in December, I think, and then take a couple of weeks off, just because I've been working two full-time jobs and working like 9.30 a.m. till 4 a.m. for the last year, so I'm basically dead. Um, and then in the new year, the plan is to sort of expand. Uh, I've got a friend who wants to sort of join up 
and we're going to do like two personal channels. I've got one already, which is sort of links are in my community page. And we might try and expand into a politics one as well, because we started doing that way back when. Um, and then otherwise just carrying on with, with the current stuff. So all of the uh, delightful, delightful cultural media, film, entertainment brilliance that we are, we are pleased to enjoy every month. Um, and we'll see how it goes. And I might end up back in part-time, I don't know, but at the moment it's been a scary, weird, surreal level of growth that's sustainable, so fingers crossed it, it carries on. But um, I know I, I did the, the, the sort of the, the fawning stuff, uh, I think the first time I was on here, but I just want to say again, thank you for, for having me on, because I've been watching you guys for ages, and it's just really weird to actually have been here for this this joyous Rings of Power experience. But uh, without you guys, I wouldn't be in this position, so... Um, yeah, you take some sort of like moral credit for me <laughs> imminently becoming an online person. Oh, we appreciate knowing that. Seriously, it's great to know we could inspire. Because like you guys uh, both, yeah. uh, fantastic content creators. I, I'm very happy and, uh, for you both to be able to take it full time. You've earned the, the fuck out of it. So obviously good luck to your future and obviously for Little Platoon. Uh, Absolutely. It's very, very good to, for us to know that we could have uh, been helpful in any way to the startup of a channel that's... Um, as enjoyable as yours, and we will be excitedly seeing what else you do next. And of course, like I said, we'll happily bring you back on subjects that seem suitable, and um, yeah. I'd say you have a guaranteed slot for Rings of Power in the future, because I imagine we will keep covering it. We'll have our, we get a two-year <laughs> cooldown or whatever, okay? So we can calm back down. Let those brain cells grow back. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like your, br your brain naturally... Your brain naturally kind of suppresses pain, so <laughs> by the time it comes around, we'll be like, oh, well, it wasn't that bad, I'm sure it'd be better. Yeah, season two will be better, yeah. 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 I, no, I said before we hit the record button, I thought that the Rings of Power was making me sick. I am now riddled with <laughs> flu, having just gone back through all of that, so I am. it's confirmed, Rings of Power is sickly, but I will be enjoying <laughs> coming back for it. Well... Um, I'm trying to think if, if there was anything else. There's the, the, the plushie, those channels, links are all in the description. All of what I said is the stuff that's on the way, but for now we're going to have to jump out, unless there's anything else anybody wanted to say. I'm good. All good. Pretty, yeah, pretty quiet. All right, then. Thank you all so much uh, for the kind donations, the company, the back and forth. I saw the Wongers took over for a decent chunk there, but they, they were eventually defeated by Rings of Power fringe. <laughs> Not even the Wongers could hold it back. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, hope you all have a very good night, and we shall see you for the next Spooky Ween EFAP, whatever it may Probably scorn. But all right. Doodle pip, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, bye, so, bye, yeah. bye, bye, bye. See you later, everyone. Toodaloo. <laughs>